How are we doing, chat? Yes, the stream is real. Oh, if only it were so easy. <clears throat> if only we were just sorting the games. I've already sorted the games before. That's an easy test. Spartan Caius. I tried to work something out, but um, the models are above my pay grade. Really, it was a Unity problem, unsurprisingly. It so often tends to be a Unity problem these days. No, I can't say that. I don't hate those creatures. I just think that um, they're like the least creative magic creatures that are in Hogwarts Legacy. Mike is peeking a bit. You know, we can never be happy, can we? Why is that? I think it's just loud in OBS. Here, let's set it here. Let's see. People like it. There is no in-between. Either we, uh, we peak max or nobody can hear me. Are we still peeking, or is chat just behind? Are we still peeking, or... I don't hear it. Oh, when I get louder? This is why I keep the mic low! Yeah, it's a fixable problem. I got your solution right here. This stream is not a natural occurrence. Someone planned this. I've never played Halo CE with somebody and had them not point out how stupid that line is. I'll tell you what it is. This interface has like 25 options for turning up the volume. Here, I'll turn off the, t the 10 dB thing because I think it's a lie. But then I max it out and people are going to be like, I can't hear you even though on the volumes meter it's exactly the same. This happens every time. Are you going to do Fallout? No, Fallout fans suck. I'd hate to break it to you guys, but I'm sure you already know. Have I tried playing Chaos Dwarves yet? Isn't it like $30? Neat faction in there. No thanks. Maybe later. Like, I still don't own, um, Wood Elves. Oh, hang on. We listened to that one. Now we turn it down. Yes, indeed. There is an art to uh, mixing streams, and I don't understand it. Mostly because OBS seems to lie. 
and nothing seems to work at all or as intended anyways like look i can i can barely hit yellow i have to really speak up to hit yellow i'm i'm gonna start yelling people will be like i can't hear you CK3, A Game of Thrones. The, um, why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it changed songs right as, uh, as messing with the volume. People act like they can't just turn up the volume on their device. I do, and then everybody starts complaining. You act like there's an in-between here. I tried to find the in-between. We'll say it doesn't work. Add upwards compression. True. True. There's a whole suite of effects that I could be using with OBS that I don't. Because it seems stupid. But. That's what a professional streamer would do. Hi. This is also what a professional streamer would do. Just have the VTube model turned up. That's what I've always said, but for some reason, that's not an acceptable answer. If I'm quiet, you can turn me up. If I'm peaking, though, then that just sucks for everybody. The ODST video. You know that that's been um that's been promised since before I had a hundred subscribers, so it'll never happen. I'll be joined soon. Soon. Can't we just hang out for a minute for the sake of hanging out? Must there always must we always uh be doing business? be hustling my volume is maxed out I can hardly hear see stuff like this stuff like this where people lie or presumably lie That's because your volume is always too low. Bro, it's literally maxed. Meanwhile, meanwhile, with the volume mixer, I can't find a happy medium. It's all gonna be a bunch of different songs that are all gonna be like mastered differently, and so that's gonna be fun. Do I play D&D? No, apparently I'm not missing much now. Since they got rid of race mixing. That's an interesting decision. Did you play Halo 3 on the last day as the servers were up? On the Xbox? No, not one of those people.
You should play Pathfinder, because there's more race mixing. I should play Pathfinder for a variety of other reasons besides that. Or you just play old versions of D&D. That's the weird thing. They didn't get rid of it, they just standardized it so you can play any half race now. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, it seems like out of the D&D &D corner, there's always just something going on. It's kind of like the Twitch of Tabletop, where it's like, I think about going on Twitch, and then uh, something will happen over there that's like, you know, maybe, maybe not. They also revised the spawn of half-orcs in the 5th edition, alluding they were secret marriages rather than results of sex crimes. Well, that's kind of the awkward thing, is, um, that's one of those off- those, one, that's one of those no-no things at, on tabletop, so... Can't happen- it can't slash shouldn't happen in the games. Um, no reason it should happen in the backstories. But, at the same time, you have to kind of explain why, why it happened. Which, I mean, like, your options are you can go the Warhammer route and say that they don't have sex, or you can go the Elder Scrolls route and say, well, they're not that barbaric. Why do people refuse to consider RPGs other than D&D or Pathfinder? Yeah, just usual... I, I mean, it's a huge time investment, so you're going to go for kind of what the herd is going for. When it comes to doing stuff like that. Why did you decide to do a video on Halo? I'm not. This is the, this is the much, much lower effort version of a video. Are you bald in real life? Yes. Very bald. By choice. There's nothing wrong with being bald by choice. Or there's nothing worse than being bald by choice when you still have a hairline. Because it means that you're going for a certain, you're chasing a certain aesthetic that people find easy, but you have to uh, work very hard on. Well, you know, I'm all for bald representation in media. It doesn't have to just be, you know, the result of bad genetics or something that you look down on. Can I play a mix between human and variant human? Uh, can I play a mix between those weird angel people and those weird devil people? And then I'll have a spirit guardian that teaches me psionics. <laughs> how much skooma do you ingest on a daily basis? Uh, how much you ingest depends on the delivery method, I'm afraid. But I keep breaking my pipes because they have like 10 uses. Load up MCC and play with your boyfriend. I ain't playing MCC on stream. I can't think of a riskier thing to do than... <laughs> to try and leave your fate up to Master Chief Collection.
What I want to know is, what's the what's the biology of this world like, where you've got this many different humanoid races that are still able to intermix without any kind of issue? I mean, we're not talking about different different shades of human here. We're talking about like distinct physiologies. I think surely there's going to be some kind of genetic complications in your internal organs. I am in pain. I am in pain every day. That's why I'm a YouTuber. So I can work from home. What's your favorite number, 0 to 9? Uh, there's a correct answer to that question tonight, I'm afraid, so... Are the gods uh, looking for entertainment, or are they just enabling people's OCs? I don't know. Why do people play anything other than human? That's what I don't get. Or elf. Or dwarf. Well, I mean, you're making a typical nerds don't have sex joke, but the nerds who have sex are the ones who play D&D, &D, just because they get out of the house and actually talk to other human beings. Or they try their best, anyways. I'm just saying, there's like three married game reviewers, but I think every D&D &D channel has a wife. Even the women. Ask chat GPT Halo level tier list, but it would probably end up putting uh, the library in F tier, so I don't know about that, champ. D&D is huge right now. I know there's a whole cottage industry in making paid fan fiction that um, was just as Ghost wanted a part of. How many subs do you need to be a married game reviewer asking for a friend? It's not about sub count, it's about finding a woman who will tolerate unemployment. <laughs> like there's a D&D &D movie or something. There's been a D&D &D movie, what are you talking about? Just because there's a new one doesn't mean it's popular. Hell, I think it peaked like last year. Before the movie came out, so. They're building a D&D theme park in Lake Geneva. Ooh, that'll be a huge moneymaker. I'm already overpaid to do a ton of stuff like that at Six Flags, so I'm sure people will drop thousands of dollars to go LARP as D&D people. I don't know anything about Stranger Things, because I tend to see the Netflix logo as like a mark of shame at this point. 556 or 762? Uh, you're gonna have to be more specific about which 762. Yeah, but we're it's Lake Geneva, not Geneva. So, you know, not going to be any prostitutes. 
Oh yeah, Wisconsin, definitely not gonna be any prostitutes. Uh, Geneva, the place where they wrote all those rules saying that I can't have fun. FN or HK? Um, I think FN does good work, but HK is more reliable for like an everyday uh, application. Wisconsin sounds like trucker lot lizard central. Not really. You gotta go further south for that. You know, somewhere where trucks actually pass through that isn't sitting on a great lake. Lifts her tail dating sim. You know, I'm really grateful that we live in a timeline where Bethesda doesn't do that type of stuff. You know I mean? Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Not impossible. The other companies that if they were in control of Elder Scrolls would absolutely do that. How do I become a patrician male? Oh lord. Are you going to be one of those Andrew Tate people that starts yelling at their teacher in class about being the alpha male? How many subscribers would you consider it takes to be a big YouTuber? Depends on what niche you're in. It's kind of just like a percentage, like you take the biggest guy and then it's a percentage of whoever that is. Would you do, consider doing a Witcher series quick retrospective? Boy, am I glad you asked. Um, you know, one of the weirdest flexes that I've heard in a YouTube video, and this has stuck with me for a while now, um, was Joseph Anderson saying that he learned Polish so that he could read the Witcher series in the original beautiful Polish language. Um, I'll just say up front. I don't think the words beauty and Polish go together. Like, it's not a bad language. It's just not my go-to when it comes to, uh, is this a beautiful language? And there's so many, there's so many unanswered questions as to what exactly that means. It, um, it's like... Did you read a parallel text where it was like English on one side and then like, or did you actually learn Polish? Are you conversational in the Polish language? <laughs> because <laughs> that's a huge, that makes the Witcher 3 video and it's still not coming out even more tragic. I'd say funny, but really tragic. Joseph Anderson should have just read the English version. Ulrich of Amel Nibone. All the contrarian Mel Elric fans are going to come out of the woodworks. Uh, actually, it's Mel Melnabone. I know lots of people who learn Japanese for the singular purpose of playing obscure Japanese games that will never be translated. I mean, that's a good application. I don't think that's invalid in the slightest, considering how big their game industry is. No way he learned it Polish. I think he's brilliant, but please, not conversationally. Maybe not conversationally, but like... There's a difference between learning a language conversationally and learning a language enough to be able to read it. But The Witcher is kind of challenging on its own right because it uses a mixture of modern and medieval Polish. So it's like, it would be, it's less like reading Harry Potter. You know, um, well, no, Harry Potter's not a good example because it's full of like Angloisms. But it would be less like reading a modern novel and more like reading the Bible, in a sense.
Virgin Joseph Anderson, who learned Polish to read a book, versus Chad Ross Scott, married a Polish woman and moved to Poland. Joseph Anderson's Witcher 3 video will be in Polish. Actually, if that was the reason why it was delayed so long, it would kind of make sense, but... Don't you know Joseph Anderson has 18 kids? Yeah, and when you have lots of kids, you lose all your time to, to work. That's why you don't have that many kids. Is moving to Poland a Chad move, though? Um, it's a lot cheaper than America, and I think prostitution's legal. So... Ross Scott can't speak Polish almost a decade after he moved there. Yeah, because everybody in Poland speaks English. It's like the perfect haven for Americans. And Polish people uh, generally refuse to talk to you unless you are conversational, so. Which it's really hard to become without talking to people. So it's kind of like a um, impossible to learn. Otherwise, well, unless you wanted to spend money on it, you could do that. Didn't he say one thing on the list he made sure wasn't true? I can't remember for sure. I don't remember if that was part of his list. I think because there was three things where, like, he had uh, facial hair like Geralt. And I don't remember the other two, but that could have been, like, I still think it's a hilarious thing to say because I have to take it at face value. I have to assume it's true. Yeah, that's the thing is like if they if they can if they can sniff out that you're an English speaker and you're butchering their language, they're gonna they're gonna go butcher yours instead. Oh, no, 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 no Anglais. Um, Canadian. <laughs> the increasing popularity of long-form content flooded my algorithm with mediocre videos. That's because there's not a good tutorial on how to do it. So everybody's just kind of either trying to figure it out on their own or they're copying somebody who does it poorly or they don't care that's a that's a that's a common one guys i'm not actually canadian but you just pretend to be canadian and that you don't know how to speak english and there you go What are your tips for long form cre creation? Uh, start small. You've never made a video. Don't start huge. Um, actually try to do research and actually try to say something. Come sa von mon ami? Franglish. Yeah, I mean, like, most YouTubers are just trying to make money. And then people don't believe me when I'm, like, ringing the bell of Apocalypse here and saying, the chat GPT era has come. The the era of lazily rushed out videos is upon us. Because if it means that I can put out an eight-hour video every month, people are going to use that shit to write everything and do everything. You're going to need a uh, made by human seal, but of course there's not going to be any validation, so then it'll be made valueless by people who, uh, let's just say, don't have a particularly high ethical threshold.
The era is over. This song just gave up. Like this there's still three minutes of song here. And it's just quiet. You like Team Fortress 2 and do you like Japanese food? I see a lot of videos about TF2. I haven't played it as much. Thanks for not starting your videos with, hey everybody, it's your boy Patrician TV here. That's the weird thing is um, the first like 15 seconds of your videos, Algorithm Gold, the people waste it on like self-branding when what you should be saying is like, you should flat out say the name of the game you're reviewing at the start of your video so that the algorithm knows that's what you're doing. It's kind of, it's kind of stupid, but... Is that your song or your fan? Um, yes, there's a fan of mine in the background who's live playing this music. Everybody appreciate him, he does it for free. How long until you in private sessions announce your marriage to the public? Um, soon. Were you there? We had a pretty decent turnout to the reception. So. Shame what happened to the Halo franchise. I mean, eh, not the worst things could have, well, you know, worst things could have happened. When's private sessions getting on? When I feel um well it's been thirty minutes, yeah. I can I can give him a call. Welcome, oh. welcome. Can't wait for people to say um that I'm too loud now. I'll max out your volume and <laughs> that way they'll be forced to say it. <laughs> if I made an amateur MIDI album for you, would you just use the tracks you like? Eh, I'm not big on using stuff that isn't related to the uh, game. Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Halo tier list. The actual, unironic, no shitting, a low tier list. Ready for some hot takes? So, for a clarification, this is just the uh, Bungie games, right? Yes, because I've only of the three, four, three games. I've only played four, and I barely remember it. Um, and we're not counting. Yeah, no, we're not counting the uh, the special missions that are in four. The extra special missions. <laughs> so I will warn you, I don't watch many tier lists, so I don't know how this usually goes. So I was just gonna, I was just gonna wing it. But. Uh, oh no. Chat's covering up uh, all those beautiful thumbnails you made. Uh, yeah, that was kind of intentional. Because uh, oh, okay. it was gonna be like lost space in the stream. Uh, but this way I can use it for something. Are you going to rank them overall or by section, campaign, multiplayer, forge? Uh, we're ranking levels, as in like individual missions. Um, campaign levels. Yeah, so like there's a variety of things that you can look for, so... Um, I think the best thing to do would be to just jump in and start. We've got our first mission here. 
And I do apologize, this is like MCC level thumbnails, so if you played the classic games, you might not remember what these missions are. Hang on, Photoshop has to have a thing. But uh, the first mission, Halo Combat Evolved. Oh yeah, we're doing it in chronological order, or like release order. So we're not starting with Reach, and we're not doing ODST in the middle of two or anything like that. Yes, I am bald IRL. We just talked about this. Remastered I can confirm. You remastered CE. Is that a... I hear that opinion a lot. Why do people um, not like the remaster? Because they took some creative liberties with certain missions, especially uh, 343 Guilty Spark, where uh, they just made it way too bright and they completely just butchered the mood for most of the levels. I would agree that a lot the lighting is off on a lot of the levels. Um, I usually play on classic graphics though anyway. Yeah, that's usually what I end up doing. Halo 2's was better, in my opinion, as a mostly, as a rabid Halo 2 fanboy. Mostly what I'm looking for is like functional co-op. Yeah, well... I don't know if it's even functional yet. Uh, I remember trying to play it co-op with my friend a few years ago, and um, Halo 1 was basically unplayable. It was so laggy. I don't know if they fixed that since Halo 2 wasn't was wasn't a wasn't a great experience either. Halo 2 had crash issues for me. Uh, none it of still has crash did. issues. <laughs> What's the difficulty standard? Is this based on legendary or like just on normal? I mean, um. I played on I like, all kinds of difficulties. Yeah. Usually I, I heroic forgot. or legendary. I feel like a good Halo level is would be playable. It would be enjoyable regardless of what uh, difficulty you're playing on. What you have to remember is once you get to Halo 3 and beyond, um, the difficulty becomes kind of a joke on PC because they were made as console games. And so... Like, Legendary on Halo 2 can be pretty difficult. Then you get to Halo 3 and play Legendary, and it's like a cakewalk because of mouse control. Have you ever played Lasso? I played Reach Lasso. So, Pillar of Autumn. First level of Halo Combat Evolved. What do you think of this mission? Where would you class it? I would say it's a... B. Probably B. Um, does a decent job setting up what to expect with the game. Uh, did it have to be that way, though? Did, we, did it really have to be the whole mission, this tutorial level? My problem with Pillar of Autumn is um, like very limited weapon selection. There's no power weapons that are on the map, it's all the basic stuff. Um, and it kind of just, I think it keeps the training wheels on for far too long. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. Halo 2's opening level, you get the sword. Yeah, um, and the shotgun. And the shotgun, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Halo 2's opening level, like, opens up once you get to the yeah. other areas. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it starts pretty quickly after you get past Armory. Halo 1's, um... How long is, how long is Pillar of Autumn? Usually I get through in about 20 minutes. Yeah, like 15, 20 minutes. I think it's yeah. too long for the, the tutorial hand for, so yeah, for, for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overshield ruin this level? Yeah, that is like the one thing you get. Yeah. It's like <laughs> three, three units of Overshield. More if you're willing to backtrack. There aren't hunters in this level, right? No. Hunters don't show up until Silent Photographer. Wait. Yeah. No, they're on. They oh. are on Truth and Reconciliation. I think that's the first level. So you say B, you say C. I'm gonna average our ratings for the class stuff. So I'm gonna put this one in the middle. Down to eyes. Yeah, it's a decent level. Uh, I wouldn't really 
write home about it. But the Marines will kill you if you you can kill Captain Keys. It's yeah. <laughs> Non-essential NPCs. It started you with the best gun in the game too. Yeah. Um, the classic starting you with the pistol, where he says it's yeah. unloaded and then it's got like half a mag in it. Yeah, that's the problem with CE is um, weapon balancing is a little bit a little bit off, mostly because of that uh, that magnum. Now this is not the Halo Reach firefight mission. This is in fact uh, this is the second level of Halo. Uh, titularly. Literally. Well, I think tier list content's kind of low effort. I don't have a high opinion of this stream. <laughs> so, we're just having fun. S, S, S tier easy, easy S. Hey, don't, mm -hmm. don't jump ahead now. Mm -hmm. Alright, famous level, yes. famous, like, walk out, you see the skybox. Yeah. Uh, kind of meme going on with it. Um... See, so the, I might as well put this out early. I'm a fan of Halo when it plays as a quarter shooter. So, like, the bigger levels, well, in Halo 1 anyway, the bigger levels I tend to be less favorable towards. I admit that I'm in the minority when it comes to that, but... This is one of those levels where um, you hear that they were making it in RTS, and you go, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> like, it's kind of like a, a Halo Wars level where you play in a first-person shooter. And so, like, you have these, yeah. big, these big open spaces with not much going on. And it, it the only places where it really narrows in is, um, like, the bunkers. And even the bunk, some of the bunkers are still, like, huge. Like, you drive your warthog through it and everything. I don't know. It, I feel like this map has, this level has some pacing issues. It's a strong opening, but, like, the longer you play, it starts to drag on until near the end where it's just like I just want to get off this fucking thing and get to the next level already. Well, I I disagree. I think it picks up more at the end. You're given more of an option in like which order of objectives you want to do. Um you're given freedom to find like the sniper rifle and um really take advantage of it with like cuz this is where uh they the concept we were wrestling with this with the Halo 4 Spartan Ops, the concept of a ship comes in and drops Covenant off this is the first level where they do that. Um, and I think that the, it does it well. And I like the mix, like, so the one that's in the picture right now, this one has, like, the interior area that you fight, and then you have the one where, like, you fight in the rocks, and then you have the one where you fight, like, kind of in the open. And so I think it gives you, like, a lot of freedom to kind of approach the level how you want to. The sniper rifle is the only power weapon on this level, right? Mm -hmm. I don't really remember anything else. The end is worse than the beginning. I think that's so weird. I think that the... Um, I mean, you know, you got that proto-firefight kind of defense sequence where there's like four phantoms that come in, or spirits, sorry. Uh, four spirits that come in and drop off waves and they usually all die But if you're playing on legendary. <laughs> Do the speedrun route where you just kill all of them and then just drive off, kill all your uh, marines. I'm inclined toward to it, but I don't. I don't think it's a, a bungee tier level. I think it's yeah, like I don't. A. It's yeah. I would I would settle on A. It's good. It's definitely a, one of one of the better levels of Halo One for sure. It's just I always found it to be a little bit. It's a, a little bit it's too a strong opener. Which the risky part of it is that mm -hmm. it. it not the first level yeah that's basically it i feel like it would have been it might have even been a better tutorial level than uh than pillar of autumn but i understand why they'd want to start on um on poe speaking of horrible levels to start on uh i'm sorry if you can't tell what this is because whoever made the thumbnails for uh <laughs> master chief collection that... Choose, chooses the weirdest thing. You have the defining shot of the truth and reconciliation <laughs> over the Mesa that you could have used, and you decided to go with a more correct advertising-wise 
uh, picture for what this level actually is, <laughs> which is just <laughs> endless Covenant hallways. Covenant hallways that all look identical. I do like... Oh, man, but I, I like the opening of this level, though. Th this is the funny part, is... So, the last level, I feel like the, the ending kind of, like, wears off, but then this level starts off really strong. Yeah, that's where I would agree with that sentiment of, like, this is a really strong opener that endears a lot of people to this level, and then... It was so strong and iconic that they re recreated it in Halo uh, Reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a, a template And I feel like level. That, level, that level did it better, too. <laughs> yeah, because it just focused on the part that people like, which is the exterior yeah. sequence. Yeah, the and exterior I... um, semi pseudo-stealth segment, because the game, the, the franchise never really did stealth until ODST anyway. So it makes ODST so good. Yeah, so like it's very strong, and you get to the part with the grab lift, and like you're fighting the waves as they come out of the ship. I always thought that was a great, great sequence to kind of yeah. cap off a level, and I'm like, cool, this was a fun level. Uh, <laughs> then, then you go up and you realize that was only one third of it. Yeah, then you get it, on to not the only, reconciliation. Not only is this ship just painful, it's also extremely long. Even if you know where to go and you. Dude, I've played this level probably like 10 times. I still get fucking lost. Yeah. And so... It's kind of just mid until you get to the hangar. And that's where it really becomes painful. <laughs> is that, that hangar sequence <laughs> where like... Um, the best part of Cursed Edition is the myriad of ways that you can sequence break the hangar. So that you <laughs> don't have to play the full level. Oh, and Yeah. So like, there's interesting ideas to it, but I don't know. Like, okay, Pillar I don't Bottom think, has... Like, I don't think I've ever played this level without doing a sequence skip also. Because you can do an easy one at the end. Yeah. You just jump down. Yeah. And that's jumping ahead to the... That it gets worse at the end. But, um... <laughs> the Pillar of Autumn, four-door shooter, but... A little bit of asset reuse with the, like, connecting hallways. But generally speaking, each area of Pillar of Autumn is unique at least. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like Truth and Reconciliation is just a ship of hallways. Yeah. That has like three rooms. It's got the room with the wraith in it, the uh, the bridge, the hangar, and like the prison. And then everything else is just hallways. And also fighting the Covenant in this, in this environment, especially the wide open uh hangers just not very fun i feel like the level is more fun when you go back to it during the flood level because fighting flood in the corridors is actually kind of fun yeah that was an idea that they struggled with was balancing the fun of the covenant area <clears throat> versus flood taking over the covenant area. yeah taking the bridge is cool uh escorting keys through the repopulated <laughs> hallways <laughs> not so cool <laughs> i feel like i don't have to explain why an escort sequence isn't that great especially with uh character ai from the year 2001 they call it halo yeah you also get the uh the iconic lore dumping sequence too yeah where the, apparently the aliens spoke english <laughs> the entire time how did the covenant even find their way around this um like, I'm sure if, if, if it's a lived-in environment, you can get used to it. Yeah, you could just use more signposting. It's a very... Listen, guys, you're not appreciating what it says about the world building. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest, this is like a, like, B-tier level. Um... See, the intro is just so good, though, that it almost makes me want to put it C tier. Uh, yeah, I guess D. We can, we can give it the D. It doesn't stoop to 343, three, but <laughs> it's definitely not up there. Halo 1 had a pretty rough beginning. What's interesting is the diverse opinions have about which part of um, Halo is the good part. Because it's like, I've always been a Halo's great in the middle 
fan, and then I get told that like, oh no, that's that's not true at all. We do um, not even have to debate this one. This is, I mean, yeah, this come is the, on. <laughs> this is a, a famous Halo level. Um, I think every game has tried to like recapture the essence yeah. of what goes on in this level because it does yeah. the multimodal uh, gameplay very well compared to the compared to the second level Halo. Um, I've had it yeah. scripting break so many times, but that's because I've played it so often. <laughs> but it is very easy to break the triggers on this level. And yeah, especially in the Warthog, when if you get the war Warthog into the bunker and you like drive through the doors and shit, you can just break everything. But I mean, just but I remember. So much fun. There's so much fun you can have with, um, especially with co-op. Um, like jumping down the ledges, trying to jump down the ledges. Yeah, yeah. Skip all the combat and then working your way back up versus like a run where you do fight everything. I spent. Uh, this was the level where I discovered grenades can, um, like dropped grenades can chain, uh, chain explode. So I would just reload the uh, the opening sequence and just kill everything and then just just screw with the grenades that dropped. Is. <laughs> I, I did that for like probably like two hours when I first got the game. And yeah, it's got it, yeah. a very strong opening. I'm trying to think of yeah. other levels in the series where you came out of the gate shooting. Um, it was um, uh, what is it? Ark? No, Covenant. Covenant in Halo Three, which was literally aping this <laughs> this yeah. level, like the opening, where you get like shot down and everything. Um, the Delta Halo and Halo Two. They're, they're, Every Halo game has had like one of these storming the beach moments because of this fucking mission. I'm trying to remember the one from Halo Reach. Oh, right. Um the one where you're going into uh into the base to get um to get the ship to go into orbit. I right. forget what that level called. Yeah, that, that was that was its silent cartographer moment. I mean, uh, obviously this is bungee tier. This this is probably the best level they've ever produced, in my opinion. Yeah, very strong midpoint level. <clears throat> I think you, it would be like um, you play your first night and you get through Truth and Reconciliation. And it's a low point, and then mm -hmm. you're the first like this the first session of second night you play. Um, yeah. You play Silent Cartographer, and it's like, oh yeah, this game rocks. Yeah, it's like even even its placing in the like if they started the game the the campaign with that level, it would. It would only be worse. You have to build up to that. You have to experience the low point of truth and reconciliation. <laughs> I think you just have to experience... Um, because there's a lot of points in this level where you just feel really fucking powerful. And I think you need to feel the, the weaker parts um, of the campaign in order to appreciate that. Ah, yes. AOTC. Controversial level, apparently. Uh, I'm a big fan, but... I think the weirdest thing people say about it is that it's like a lot of repetitive corridor shooting. Which I don't think is true. No, I wouldn't really say that. There's, there's a few parts to it, but... um, My major problem with it is that it's a big open level, and the only real reliable weapon you have for distant shooting is the Magnum. Yeah, this is where the Magnum crutch really starts to uh, yeah be apparent. If, if we just if we had this level, but with like a BR or the DMR or something like that, and it was you know appropriately paced out with that weapon and everything, like you're not just using that as a crutch instead. Um, this level would rank much higher, but between having to use the Magnum all the time and the fact that you you run into a lot of vehicles and if you don't have a vehicle yourself or a power weapon which can be hidden so you either have to run around the map and either have good uh, knowledge of the weapon placement or just run around for 20 minutes looking for a rocket launcher so you can take care of the ghosts um yeah i'm just i'm not a big fan of this level I think the, the Banshee skip doesn't make it a bad thing. I think being given options to 
do that kind of stuff is a good thing. It's nothing but Yeah, I, I know that I know this level has power weapons and stuff, but um outside of a couple like obvious locations. And it's a really long level for the sniper to last through. Yeah. Like you're gonna be out before the end of the tank section. Yeah, so imagine doing so this is one of the levels where um if you're playing co op somebody's gonna have a bad time because they're not gonna get the tank. Yeah, and it's a very long mission. Yeah. To gonna have that bad time. I would say it's B. Yeah, I think I think the um the interior sequences are massively overstated. I wanna say it's yeah, like six to eight. Yeah. Like six to eight of the same room. But it's with with slightly different layouts, but I think that's a good mix up of what's going on on the surface. That's it being a corridor shooter and we stand Halo being a corridor shooter. So, you say B? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's a good, it's a decent B level. I'll just slip it in there. Like, they even put arrows on the floor in the corridor section so that, it, listen, if you didn't, if you had no problems navigating Truth and Reconciliation, there's no fucking reason you should have problems navigating yeah, it's like attacking control room. If you take it in context of what else is in this game that we've yeah. already played, <laughs> what's come, yeah, what's come before. Now, nah, for me, it's for me, it's just the it's the balance of the sandbox of Halo One, and like I said, I recognize I'm in the minority there, but ah, yes. Now here's a level. Here's a level mm -hmm. that's gonna divide people. Is it? Well, maybe if you first, maybe if you played it uh, with the updated graphics and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't know for sure. I f I love this. This might be no, it's not my favorite level in Halo One, but it's up there. This is definitely an S tier for me. Oh, I thought people, I thought people popularly hated this level. I guess that's for really. The um, I don't. No, I, like I don't this... hate this level. I think it's. Um, <clears throat> it needs a little more signposting. In the later part, mm. yeah, um, it, it is easy to get lost and end up in uh, corridors and rooms and stuff that you've already well, okay, cleared. So, like, that's the benefit of the flood, is it lets you get a little creative with what the fuck? It lets you get a little creative with um, your level design, I so you can blow stuff. Like Forerunner level design, like it's nice to look at, but it's boring when everything's fixed the flood is a great t switch up where it's like you can have blown open doors and stuff growing on the walls and what have you um, yeah signs of carnage a little bit more of that to help guide the player through like there's a particular sequence where i get confused every time otherwise uh, no solid level great introduction to an enemy yeah I don't, that's I don't great think, atmosphere. I don't think it's too slow, even on repeat playthroughs. Nah. Like even when you know the flood. Anything coming. I want, if anything, I want the level. I wish the level was like ten minutes longer. Oh, and the weapon sandbox goes from whatever to shotgun and pistol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that's definitely the case with the flood levels. Nah, nah, nah. You can use the use the plasma rifle and the plasma pistol. Is I, I think people sleep on the flood a lot, especially oh, in Halo. Oh, people absolutely sleep on the flood too much. I I actually love the flood in the corridor levels, in the open levels with their fucking sniping rocket launchers, and we'll get into that when we talk about two betrayals. Fuck the flood, but on this level, oh man, great peak corridor shooter, a tier. What would you say? I th I think it's S tier, honestly. Right. Uh, it gets S tier for me because of how it's how it's structured with um you know the build up to the flood and then the reveal of the flood. Plus, it's it's just a good it has a good cutscene too. I love that cutscene where um where they reveal it. Nice part of Cursed Edition is that you get the flamethrower. Or can get the flamethrower. <laughs> uh, 
which obviously Bungie couldn't use because it didn't exist. I don't think it existed. It didn't Gearbox? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, was, that was an PC addition. Version. Unless it was like in the files or something like that. I don't I don't know here's the deep lore a, here's of that. A but... Here's a great taste filter. What's your opinion on the library? <laughs> it's not 343 tier. Definitely not 343 tier. I don't think it's um, tier. I, I, I think, think it's. If you're it, into the mechan, what Halo CE is offering mechanically, this is mm -hmm. a great like final test level. For what's yeah. Going on, where it's like I you mean, really get to test like your combat against the flood. It is repetitive. It, it is too long, but it it's not it's not terrible. Um, I, th I think some of the I think so, there's one room in particular where you go in and then they close doors, the doors in front of you and behind you and you have to fight the flood in that tiny ass room. Mm -hmm. That part can go fuck itself. Um, but other than that, I think it's a pretty all right level. Uh, just just a little bit too long. I would say it's C. I like it as a I don't think it's too long at all. I think it might be you too know, long for most people, but. Um, it's a fun it's it's actually a fun level co-op i'll i'll give it that it's like if you're playing with another person it goes up to b maybe even a if you're both like if you both got some good weapons yeah it's a level that in, um rewards competence with using the weapons mm -hmm. intelligently yeah no this is this is a this is a level this is how you can separate the boys from the men with uh fighting fighting flood if somebody goes to this level and they're struggling and they don't pick up a plasma pistol or a plasma rifle, you know they don't know the uh, Halo's Halo's combat sandbox well enough. Yeah, you can make most weapons work against the flood, and this is a great yeah opportunity to really um, play with that fact. I'll you know I'll say I'll say it's B. You've you've convinced me it's B. Yeah, because like I think it could be. It's worse. because it's. Because with... It's because of the co-op. Like, trust me, if yeah. you play a co-op, it really is a fun level. It really will re will redeem itself. I and I think even mm -hmm. single player, um, I've had fun with it. Cause... I've I've had it's it depends it depends how I'm feeling that day. Honestly, <laughs> if I'm if I'm on on top of my game and I can like stomp it, yeah. But if I get stomped, then ah. Uh. And there's also ways to cheese a lot of the uh, annoying sequences like that room that i was just talking about there's actually a spot where you can hide and that's what i'll do sometimes the fact that the library ends up on worst level list of all time is of all games insanity is absolutely crazy it's not even the worst insanity. level in halo one no well as <laughs> we can see so i mean like it's it, it's definitely not the worst um blood level in this series either we get to Halo 3. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, there's, you know, they take up too much space. We can uh, put it on top. All right. Oh, I see what's going on. All right. Next up. Oh, is or I thought you guys already did assault on the control room. <laughs> like you see the problem, three for three with <laughs> using this image, is that this is exactly what it looks like the first time. Two betrayals. Alrighty. Uh. So assault on the control room, but backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, a halo tradition it seems yeah i'm not a fan of this this mission like at all so i gave it points there's a lot of novelty it does one of my favorite things in the series which is um four-way conflict flood versus sentinels versus covenant versus master chief yeah yeah great stuff i absolutely love that um <clears throat> You get the full weapon sandbox at this point and the mm -hmm. vehicle sandbox. Yeah. Um, and 
Like, it even makes sure to cut you off from your vehicle, so you have to switch up in the middle when it has that door that breaks. Right. Which I always just cheese anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, unlike the first time, where you do the repetitive corridor sequences, this time you get to have enemy variety, because you're doing those sequences, but now you have three enemy pools that you can pull from instead of one. Yeah. It, it just comes too soon after assault uh, to the control room. But I mean, you have two levels, one of them being like the longest in the game between it and assault on the control room. And I kind of like the parallelism because you go back to control room and then you go back to truth and reconciliation and then you go back to pillar of autumn. It's like you're doing the game yeah. backwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, Library's basically the inflection point. They were kind of smart. They made sure to not make you replay the entire level so you skip the interior stuff at the end you skip the last bridge sequence it uses the banshee right to make sure that you're not re having to replay too much because it takes longer to get through than assault in the control room just because of the mechanical switch up yeah so the parts i really don't like um the ambushes when you get your shields knocked down when you have to walk into the uh mm -hmm. into those energy beam things those are just brutal and i also don't like the ambush at the very beginning of the level where all you have is a fucking plasma pistol and they send sentinels and a whole bunch of covenant after you if the sentinels dropped weapons in halo one yeah well i don't know i don't know if this no because they would drop sentinel beams and that still wouldn't really be useful against uh enemies that i want to fill with lead if the enemies if they... dropped promethean weapons <laughs> please please no not the promethean weapons not the light rifle <laughs> um i'll also there's just certain parts of this level fighting the flood where it's just like a big open area and the flood, flood have in rocket this... launchers. Yeah, the flood have rocket launchers, and they can move really fast, and they can close the gap on you really quickly. Um, if they're distracted by the Covenant and the Sentinels, that's great. But if once they wipe them out, which they usually do because they have rocket launchers, um, then you're basically boned because if you want was... a long, you want like a long. See, this is a problem with the flood, though, is that, in especially in the wide open levels, is that. They don't. They're not susceptible to headshotting or any sort of distance weapon, so you have to close you the gap. You can shoot mass with the pistol and kill them. Yeah, but yeah, it's it still eats up a lot of ammunition to do that, though. Well, that's good. You need you need more ammo consumption. I think if there had been a better balance between the flood and the sentinels, so that like there was a chance the sentinels could pull through, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be too big a deal. Yeah, I, I just I would find myself in situations. There's there's a couple well, there's a couple canyons, but there's one in particular that I'm thinking of, where you start on one end and you just have to run all the way across like a cave at the other end, and there's like three dudes with rocket, like two or three dudes with rocket launchers. Um, I think they even have a ghost or two, and you just have to run across this entire valley, this entire canyon, and it's not a very fun sequence and you don't get any checkpoints because you're in combat the entire time yeah the checkpointing on this level is a big weak point <laughs> i mean that's just that's just halo one and two i don't even halo three's checkpointing was kind of shit too but halo one and two in particular were really bad checkpointing yeah but assault in the control room and especially two betrayals i think are like mm -hmm. Because you're three usually checkpointing. Yeah, because you <laughs> weird. It got worse. Well, it's, be it's because it's tied to combat and stuff. And if there's somebody nearby loaded in that's in a combat state, you're probably not going to get a checkpoint. Yeah. Sorry. What, we cannot start what, over. <laughs> what would we say? Control room was uh, B to A tier. I, yeah, I'm, would... I'm happy with this being a C. Yeah, D. Oh, yeah, and the, the Banshee sequence on this level, too, is kind of... 
this is the game though where you can hold back right and yeah, the banshee yeah. stays in place you can kind of hover yeah 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 so it's not as bad as halo 2 banshee sequences all right here's a here's a level i solidly don't like <laughs> um i like fighting flood and quarter environments um but this is also this is another level where i always use sequence sequence skips so that already tells you a lot i like when i see halo videos and they use the teleport premise of uh the end of the last level to just skip this one <laughs> <laughs> it just teleports straight to the maw yeah so it's like you've got kind of a flimsy rationale you got to get keys um yes yeah, these... Mm -hmm. And the flood, for some reason, are like basing up on the truth and right. I mean, I guess it makes sense to ship; they can take off one yeah. after. But um... no, I, I think it makes sense from a narrative perspective. So um, the, the problem with this level is that what it's remixing isn't very good. Yes, because it's one of the remix levels, and it's remixing truth and reconciliation. I don't think it makes as good a use of the exterior parts as the yeah. first rounds did. Yep. Love the coolant linking, but um Yeah, just it's my I, I don't want to say it's three for three tier, but damn it is close. Throw some sentinels in or something, like Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say it's three for three tier just so we get the whole broad spectrum. <laughs> I think it is better than truth and reconciliation. It's better in the sense that it's less repetitious, but um, I don't think that you still, alone see, is enough to see. It, it still has the problem. It's what's the only benefit is that it's not as long as Truth and Wreck. But the only reason it's not as long is because they cut out the best part. Yeah, I think that's that's a good thing. Oh, is, um, the oh and, and then is the the, the, can, the canyon section with the flood is very hit or miss depends on the location in the canyon you're at yeah i don't think there's as much room to be kind of experimental because they they tighten everything up so it's not like library yeah. where you have um, yeah. more room to work with if you're getting chased and i think there's a lot of like points of no return when you go through the canyon sequence like i think you have to jump off several mm -hmm. ledges so it's not yep. like you can backtrack yeah, the yeah. level yeah yeah Uh, I'm going to say it's D tier. What about that reveal, though? That keys reveal? <laughs> the face punch. <laughs> I'm all right with giving it a D. All right. I don't I don't have a, a need to. Uh, don't worry. Halo. We got Halo 2 coming up. There's yeah. plenty of fucking 3 for 3 levels in that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, chat. All right. Last level of Halo 1. The Man. Maw. Kind of a banger. I, yeah, I think this is probably my favorite my favorite level in Halo 1, which would instantly make it an S tier. All right, and last remix level of the game. Remix is Pillar of Autumn. Pillar of Autumn, um, <coughs> we put that in B to C tier, but mm -hmm. with the remix, awesome level. Well, um, they they give you access to everything and they give it to you early and you have the whole armory in there which is just loaded with like just power weapons and everything that's what i love this level to just come in and screw around and that's what i would usually replay it to do is i just load it up and be like i wonder how i could do this part of the there's fun level stuff different. too like the the active mm -hmm. camo flood yeah They'll jump you uh, i love you go to the armory. Uh, i loved the uh the battle between the um the hunters that you like you you're walking through corridors and stuff and they don't detect you and you can just see the hunters fighting the sentinels and i think there's some flood in there too that they'll be fighting but usually they kill the flood and it's just them and the sentinels and the sentinels will just keep respawning while the hunters won't so like i would just sit there and just watch the hunters for like 10 15 minutes just hopelessly fighting off wave after wave of sentinels and yeah it just has that that oh and then and they they also introduced the um the uh like the leveled up uh 
covenant and stuff like that the um yeah fuel rod the grunts and everything people. yeah yeah because yeah, they're coming in to like try and scuttle the ship and everything and it has a lot going on a lot of root just really cool moving pieces um people seem mixed on the core sequence yeah I, that I, part i kind of like it i the only part that sucks is running back up yeah um that's a hard that's a hard one to get used to it um that's a hard one to get through if you're not used to um halo one's jumping physics so if you play like a lot of halo 2 halo 3 blah 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 and then you go back to play halo one that that section is going to trip you up pretty hard because you got to get pretty good at um halo one's movement mechanics but i think that's a good thing um and the, the you know the halo the warthog run at the end of course that's a test for you know your driving abilities and stuff too i always make fun of the dirt the dirt bike track that the ship has <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Completely. I, don't, I, don't, I don't literally really know what no it is sense. it literally makes no sense Very you know what when, when i was a kid when i was a kid so like halo halo was my exposure to science fiction and um when I was a kid and I played that level, it it captured my imagination in a way that like I don't think anything is ever since. Because I just looked at that whole thing, I was like, "Man, this ship is huge! Whoa, it's so cool!" And then you know later on you realize it literally makes no sense whatsoever. The scale of it's all completely wrong. But and they yeah, kill, I... they kill Fohammer like <laughs> four levels after she disappears. <laughs> Like, they could have killed Fohammer at a different point in the game. Yeah, I, I love this level. This is one of my favorite... One of my favorite Halo levels of all time, so... I mean... It has to be an S tier for me. I was gonna say A tier, so... And it's another... Another thing where... Uh ending was so iconic that they've basically tried repeating it in every game to no avail Oops. halo 3 was close i feel like that was the closest they got to being able to recreate the warthog run but so halo 1 um what do you think of it in general um I think it's it's so it's not my favorite campaign surprisingly even though i like a lot of the levels and that just comes down to i'm not a big fan of halo one sandbox in comparison to the future games uh but in terms of like individual levels it's i mean you just look at the fucking ranking it's really hard to really hard to come uh to to knock on the uh on the record here yeah, I mean, there's a reason why Bungie kind of um, got big after Halo. Yeah, it's this was a game where, sure, the multiplayer got big afterwards, but um, this is a game where most people were playing it solo just for the campaign, and uh, that al just that alone was still enough for most people. So. I think that speaks volumes to how good the campaign was in Halo 1. And uh, very appropriately, like, kind of healthy diversity of content, too. Mm -hmm. helped, it helped it a lot. I also feel like the writing was the strongest in this game, because it was not... Like, they clearly didn't have big plans for it or anything. Which is funny coming from the people who made like marathon and shit, but I think the complicated it... development helped it a lot in keeping its scope simple. Yeah. Like if they had known from the start that this is what they wanted to make, they might not have done as good a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a simple campaign, but it's done exceptionally but it well. Ruined first person shooters. <laughs> ruined first person shooters like how Skyrim ruined RPGs.
I get the premise of the argument, but at the same time, I don't know if I can agree. I think a lot of people want it to be Halo, and that, that was a bad thing for first-person shooters, but I don't think that means that it itself was a bad thing. Because you had a lot of poor imitations of Halo 1, like Halo 2. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize again because um, Halopedia uses the MCC assets for the level oh thumbnails. God. So we're, we're actually gonna rate Armory here. <laughs> oh, I I left out <laughs> the cutscene level. I left out. Oh, all the cut, Yeah, I left out all the cutscene <laughs> levels. Now Armory is just until you get. The, it's like the train ride, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's okay. A so two I don't, and a half I don't, minute. I don't have to. I don't have any problem deleting it. I got I need space, so <laughs> there's literally nothing to armory. Um Ar armory kind of introduces Kyra. the switch up in writing style for the humans because you have heretic and it's like, oh, there's stuff going on yeah. with the covenant, and then you have armory and it's like I don't remember humans being quite like this. How is Sergeant Johnson alive in Halo 2? Read the books. Read the books! <laughs> I'm surprised he died him. in Halo 3. Oh my god. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, I mean, so there were novels. I don't really think that, like, to understand what's going on in Halo 2, you don't have to read any of them. But... Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, it's a very... It's a self-contained story where the, the novelizations they were doing uh, help supplement and really add flavor to the world, but aren't necessary to understanding it or establishing did, lore copium did you read any of the novels i read all of them until the three for three takeover oh really yeah did you read um the three for three takeover did you read the ones about what's his face um guilty spark no when he was like a human no. they were they were actually they were actually pretty good i'm pretty sure that was after three for three it was it was those were the first books published under three for three but they were actually pretty decent. They they got a really good writer to handle it. That's why. Halo books are for nerds who don't want to read normal sci-fi novels. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, it's got that, more. No, of an it's got more of an action focus, obviously. That's absolutely right. That's literally what got me into reading science fiction. Like it's absolutely something that like teenagers are into. Yeah, into it as a teenager. Abs like absolutely, fucking, absolutely. Got, there's no point in denying that. That's like saying Harry Potter's for kids. You know, like <laughs> of course. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really liked um, Fall of Reach. I, I thought it was actually... A I've considered going back and rereading it. It's actually a pretty decent book. But, it, but Halo Reach... <laughs> Alright, now we've got a level here. Um, yes. We've got a level, alright. Cairo fucking, Station. I love Cairo. It's an this interest, alright. So... Cairo Station is a good point where they really showcase that, like, we have changed the, the, we have upgraded the way that we're doing the storytelling to where mm -hmm. we can have these events happening in the in the skyboxes that um, yeah really inform the progression of things. So it's like, um, hype! The Covenant are attacking Earth. We got to defend the station. You've got everything. You've got uh, defense sequences from Halo from Pillar of Autumn, but they're improved, so it's like more a dynamic thing going on um interesting mechanical introduction to the things that halo 2 changes though yeah it's a hard level <laughs> it's a very hard level to kick off halo 2 with it is if you're playing on heroic you're going to get fucking slammed um Hate the buggers not fun to fight yes the bugger oh. there's yeah there's so much this level <laughs> goes out on such a limb about the mechanical changes so i guess we'll talk about that um removal of health or well it's kind of it's a consolidation but it really is just yeah a removal so Halo one had shields and health um meant that like med packs were a resource um and how dangerous you you played but depended on your health level that's gone. Now it's just shields. Um, 
which is why I say that Halo 2 is kind of like a bad imitation of Halo 1. <laughs> so this is the level where if you if you're playing in a release order, you have to get used to the switch over. Um, yeah, and you got to get used to it health. fast. Yeah, because like they don't pull their punches. Also, um legendary you go up if one it is the iron skull rules. Oh. <laughs> and this is the level where you're going to have to get used to that. Yeah. Yes, Halo 2 is definitely I would I would say it's the most aggressive Halo. Like you have to play aggressive if you want to if you want to win, especially on higher difficulties. You let the you let the elite start dictating the tempo of the of the engagement, you've you've lost. Like just straight up. I think the, very... the tools for beating the elites though have become more robust too. Yes, to that's so that that's what I like about Cairo is that it it gives you basically everything you need. It, I feel like it's a very, it's Pillar of Autumn, just much more polished. I but can't at the believe same it. Time, we won. <laughs> but at the same time, the game is just so much more difficult. So if you're going from Halo 1 to Halo 2, it's just like, oh, God, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, I think Legendary Co-op gets easier after you get off of Cairo Station. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's... <laughs> Until you get to the Arbiter levels, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there, yeah. <laughs> um, so you've got kind of your traditional corridor shooter stuff, and then like it tries to do switch-ups with the um, the EVA section where you go out into mm -hmm. space. Which I'm not a big fan of those sections, but they're also very brief. Yeah, brief, and, uh, um, flashy, because you've got the like station yeah. kind of firing, and that's like a set piece. So there's yeah. a lot of set piecing in Halo 2, especially early on. A lot and of then... scripting. A lot of shit that can break. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I think the EVA elites are not very fun to fight. No. No, they're just, they're just bullet spongy things that try to... Like, they try to avoid fighting you, but then they just... Like, a, a, a light switch turns on and they just turn around and just, like melt you with their dual wielded plasma rifles yeah it's like uh trying to push you to dual wield by making you face enemies <clears throat> that are dual wielding yeah ah uh, oh god i i love especially the beginning part of this level where uh you get out of the um you, you know you have the iconic moment where it's like i need a weapon and you're just going around you're just walking along the walls and like guns are popping out of the walls and everything and those are guns that are actually like viable in the mm -hmm. in the environment that you're going to be fighting in and it's just like, hey, you can take your battle rifle or just dual wield some SMGs or some even some fun, dual fucking magnums. People people slept on the magnums in Halo 2. But it's kind of I'm, weak, but that's because you're used to treating it as a solo weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it as a combo. Uh-huh. Uh, you combo like combo it combo it with either a plasma rifle or an SMG. And you just break the shields with the with the with um one of those weapons and you just headshot with the magnum it just works every fucking time even in multiplayer N nobody ever expected that combo the butter uh, sequence <laughs> yeah the, after you get out bug. of eva Ooh, that's not a great yeah. combo for sure <laughs> and then they have that elevator sequence that's interesting um i'll give it that because it's like you get on the elevator and the idea is that you're supposed to be fighting all the dudes on the elevator as you're going down and fighting all the buggers while you're going down. Halo but, 2 seemed to like that idea, the mobile platform. Yeah. Sequence. And I don't think any of them worked in the game. Yeah. <laughs> they, they actually get progressively worse at, to the point... Oh, God. Oh, yeah, God, the God of Rides. Yeah, so. we're, <laughs> we're jumping ahead there. I got, I got a lot of opinions of Halo 2's campaign, but I still... Fuck, I still adore it because of Halo 2's sandbox. Arbiter's hands, um, for sure. VR is redundant, or maybe I'm misunderstanding the Halo 2 Magnum. Um, no, I mean, the BR has a place. Oh, no, the BR, BR is king in Halo 2. If anything, it's too powerful, which is why they tried to nerf it in Halo 3. It didn't really work all that well, but they tried. The, lo the love-hate relationship with the battle rifle. <laughs> Especially three for threes. Yeah. So, oh. where are we putting this level? 
I would say it's A. Really? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going with B, so. There's, there's a lot that I love about this level. More more that I more more stuff that I love than I don't like. I think it's just the difficulty. It's just too it's too difficult. If they made it a little bit easier. Turn some of those gold elites and white elites into blue elites. A bit of it. Been yeah, a, use the whole roster. Yeah. And the assault like, rifle didn't exist in two. Yeah, I think I think that's a strike against two. Yeah. Well, that's because it would. It, they thought it was redundant with the uh, SMGs, which wasn't really. But Halo Three proved that. Oh yeah, I should probably switch to the Halo Two o ODST. Right, nobody, <laughs> nobody pointed that out. The original OST or uh, yeah. the remaster OST? Oh, well, we're not talking about the remaster. <laughs> we don't talk about the remaster here. <laughs> I like I like both soundtracks actually. When I when I want the nostalgia feel, go we for will the be two. skipping go the very the good Benjamin song. <laughs> hey, I'd hate to break it to you, chat. <laughs> All right, here's a level. Um. Uh, is this Metro? Or is this Outskirts? This is it's outskirts. Metro. Outs oh, I know it's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> Because so here's, so, here's, here's the, so the original the original idea was that it was going to be one level, but due to limitate like hardware limitations, they had to break it up. And um, I think there was a bunch of cut content and stuff. This this level got a lot of uh, it, it had a rough time during development. So yeah, even as a somebody who you know, I watch Halo Two speedruns regularly, I still don't remember which one comes first the same level it's easy to remember you it's the outskirts and then you're in the big city yeah but yeah, you're uh, working working inwards because you get shot down um helicopter shot down meme yeah uh i like it but i don't like how it starts yeah so slow start um defense sequence yeah you can tell what they're against... going for with it because it ends with the climax of like hunters but it, but well the problem too is um you, you want to talk about difficulty spikes you go from yeah. halo 1 hunter to halo 2 hunters and on top of which you don't even have like really good weapons in the sequence for like they're like oh just use the um use the uh machine gun against it and sure that might work on normal difficulty but even on heroic you get on that fucking turret, you're gonna get melted. Yeah, the the start of the oh, go ahead, use the turret. <laughs> <There you. laughs> Halo two, oh man, Halo two has that a lot, a lot of fucking. There are multiplayer maps in Halo two yeah. <laughs> where the turrets are a trap. Fucking play, uh, uh what was that fucking map? Uh, the one that all the MLG people always played on. But yeah, that one that one had some turrets on it. People would hop on that and you just snipe them off immediately. Yeah, so then you have the famous sniper jackal alley. Uh after the defense sequence. Um Yeah. Oh. I okay, so it's a bit rough, but it's easy to learn, I think. And it's definitely gonna um test your friendships. Sanctuary. There you go. Sanctuary was the map that I was trying to remember. Uh, yeah, this level... Like, there's a reason the later games made them, like, gave, gave them bright colored eyepieces. <laughs> really tried to work on, like, making that concept more fun. I'm trying to think what part of this level I like. <laughs> I don't yeah, think there I mean, is a part. Yeah, because I mean, like, so we were doing this on Legendary, me and my friend, and um, it was literally like you would take a step forward and then something else dickish would happen <laughs> to set you back. Like, so it, you finally it get... Doesn't, 
you finally get past the hunters you got the sniper alley you finally yeah. like start going down the sniper alley you get jumped by stealth camo elites mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like it literally doesn't stop with throwing stuff at you yeah um and then it, there's then not you enough get just... then you get get past the hotel right all right now you have fucking phantoms dropping shit on you so you have to hide from the phantom to let it so then drop all of its enemies down and then you have to fight all the enemies and it's like there's no way you just have to sit there and wait for the phantom there's yeah, like there's of, nothing you can do a lot of stop and start to the pace mm-hmm. of this level and not enough hey it's a squad there's three grunts and a blue elite yeah yeah because so like the previous levels are about or um kyra i should say is about teaching you to be aggressive be aggressive and then this level is just like full stop no 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 no. you gotta hunker down you bet you better you better fucking wait and then they give you allies that do literally nothing yeah especially coming off of halo one with yeah. like the invulnerable warthogs and yeah he said marine gunners uh, and then, then you get to the beach, and it just, it just keeps getting worse, because now you have to deal with. It's nice that there are power weapons this early. Yeah, yeah, they they give you some power weapons. Um, not enough ammo for them though. They give you a warthog, and you can either drive it yourself and let your marine kind of shoot at enemies, or you can get in the gunner and let the marine basically drive you to death um kill the marines and park the warthog on like the uh the concrete thing and then just snipe yep. people with the machine gun figure out some uh, matches or something then you get to the tunnel co-op? sequence it's fine well, after that i don't know i disagree i think the tunnel sequence sucks too so here's the thing so the um, the beach is okay if you're playing co-op because you can like work together, kind of try and split the attention of all the all the elites and everything, especially the ones in the fucking ghosts. Especially since but then you, you get... can hijack ghosts now. So. Yeah, but then you get to the tunnel sequence, and sure, it funnels all your enemies and stuff. But if you're playing co-op, it also funnels you. I thought you liked so, corridor shooters. Not when it's vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> not when it's vehicles and the enemy have uh beam rifles um yeah i think i think the tunnel is one of the worst sections because then you fight those fucking those vehicle transporters that never show up ever again in any any level of any halo game this is the only location i'm as far as far as i'm aware of where they show up and they fucking have a turret not only do they have a turret on it they also have a driver who's almost always like a high level elite and the vehicle has a lot of health. So you're just sitting there and by that point, you're probably in a ghost and you're just sitting there peppering these fucking slow moving vehicles with ton for like a minute straight. And there's four of them. Or you just speed past them, do the, do the speed run strat, just speed past them and just ignore them. I think this is a, <clears throat> a solid C tier level that really kind of sabotages it, halo 2 yeah it's c almost d <laughs> like <clears throat> for sure Alrighty, and then you have this level when you get to um bridge that leads to the interior of the city it's like this level feels like it's almost trying to apologize for the previous level (laughs) yeah this is like oh yeah they start you we can start you fun sequences yeah start you off with a with a fucking tank that if you're good enough you can get it to last all the way to the end um tons and tons of power weapons vehicles uh even the sniper uh, sequences, like there's that park you go to, and there's snipers yeah, in it. Even those y- function better. You have yeah, you have options there. Um, you're not going to instantly get. Well, first off, it's open, so you're not getting funneled in to just get picked off by telepathic uh, jackal snipers. But they're also distracted sometimes. Um, yeah, there's just like a lot of. It, it really does feel like it's the previous level just improved. 
the downtown's a little weak because it feels like something that they felt obligated to include because I think it was in the it's, trailer. Yeah, it was in the trailer. Yeah. But I do think like where at the vehicle part in the downtown is kind of weak. And then afterwards, you have the scarab section. And the scarab section is all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, fun, it's pretty good. Fun set piece for sure. Yeah. they it's It's basically it's just a shooting gallery thing. They just give you tons and tons of power weapons. And you just have a bunch of different options. You could either sit, just keep walking along and just killing the endlessly spawning enemies until the end. Or you can just get super aggressive, jump into it, and just kill everything from inside. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a, it's at least B tier. Um, yeah, I, I think... See, it's, it's hard for... Cause my instinct for me, it would be like an A tier if we're just talking Halo One or Halo Two levels. Mm -hmm. But, it's, but we've because got the whole we're comparing, here, yeah. yeah, I would say it's probably a B tier. And you also have the Scarab Gun on there. There's there's a lot of really cool uh, glitches and stuff yeah, you I can think, do on there. I know the first skull was on the last level, right? There's a lot of just cool Easter eggs and stuff. It's just, it's just a good level. It's a good Halo Two level. Yeah, clarify. And I like good Halo Two level. I do love the uh, the new Mombasa aesthetic of Halo Two. I really love it. Um, I like that. There's kind of there. There is a distinction between like the old and the new. Mm hmm. And it's fun that they set uh the game there because it makes it makes a lot the world building that they're doing makes a lot of sense. There's a space elevator yeah. in New Mombasa that makes a ton yeah. of sense because Mombasa is mm -hmm. going to be like a huge trade center because of of the Indian Ocean. So yeah, it makes sense that in like 500 years there's a huge commercial hub there and it it's on the equator, so it makes sense that there's a space elevator there. Just awesome world building. It's it's cool that um that's like on the list of oh yeah actually decent african representation yeah for settings anyways obviously because <clears throat> you don't see a lot of people okay so now <laughs> <laughs> okay um, to be fair it gets worse <laughs> <laughs> arbiter is probably the best arbiter level <laughs> <laughs> once again, and it's also once again it's another it's easy to forget um arbiter and oracle are two different levels because yeah. once again it was supposed to be one whole level but cuts and all of that they're, they're trying um, to be very ambitious it it's a pretty decent introduction to the stealth mechanics of halo 2 you know you got the invisibility cloak and everything like that um, I think the introduction well, is pretty strong. I think you have to start with um, the premise of switching up the protagonist to the Arbiter. Oh, I liked it. I, I know, I know, people hated playing, not playing as Master Chief, but I actually really liked it. I really liked the. Uh... Yeah, I liked the switch up too. I thought it was a cool idea to um, give a Covenant perspective. Yeah. Uh, his, I, his plus, I plus works. I just liked. Plus, I just liked the Covenant in general, and well, I wanted to see, and the thing see more is, of it. They're they're doing a very rare thing, which is they're introducing a new protagonist that makes the previous stuff even better. Because, yeah, lore wise, he was the commander that you were going up against in Halo One. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, he's one of the gold elites from Halo One, and like, our, what we did in that game really screwed him over. It's like the basis of his whole character arc. Yeah, uh, which is like a really cool premise for a character. The only thing I and don't it's... like about the Covenant stuff in Halo 2 is that you'd never fight humans. Yeah. Yeah, that is a missed opportunity for sure. Because it's like Halo is great about having kind of unit variety. And that's why <clears throat> I think the later games that are only Covenant are kind of missing. Um... The main trilogy with the the Covenant, the Flood, the Sentinels. I mean, if you could add humans to the mix, that'd be great. Oh, you do fight them. They're just Flood. Yeah, or like that one human enemy in ODST. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, I've I've always liked the Arbiter. I was also one of those players. I I play as the uh the elite. Oh yeah, he model. absolutely got done dirty by his levels. But the cutscenes, though, on the blood of our fathers, on the blood of uh, our sons, <laughs> even to our dying breaths. <laughs> the cutscenes are just so fucking good. It's such a great world building for the Covenant. It's such so, a step so up good. to get like, a yeah. perspective on them. Yeah. Uh, Gameplay-wise, a yeah, lot I think of corridors. It's a, it's a switch up between not having time to make human enemies having esrb rating concerns and the mm -hmm. fact that the human weapons would just be op like um <laughs> so you can play go play flood firefight which by the way actually a really good mode um mcc has flood firefight for odst which adds the halo 3 flood enemies to odst but the human weapons are fucking nightmares and they always have been it's <laughs> they don't work against the player right and so trying to have a faction that uses them is just would just be a balancing nightmare i i, I can't believe how bad the this rock the rockets are still just fucking four games later yeah be, because it's like it's not really something that you're supposed to give enemies yeah because it's a power weapon he gets done dirtier in halo 3 when he becomes chief sidekick at least he's there <laughs> and like he doesn't have exclusive levels that are terrible <laughs> that kind of like color people's opinions of him so uh, um arbiter is a level of halo 2 <laughs> that we should probably <laughs> talk about premise is cool uh of like where it's really cool what's going on really cool environment i, lo I love its aesthetics mm -hmm. very strong like arbiter has some pretty cool aesthetic levels yeah it's definitely just oh no <laughs> <The key. laughs> um yeah fighting fighting covenant exclusively armed arming you only with other covenant weapons um not very fun uh this is probably the only campaign where people are actually going to use the carbine <laughs> uh odst <laughs> exists uh yeah but yeah True. um gameplay like Everything's going for this level until you get to the gameplay. It, like I said, it's not the worst. It's not even the worst. Oracle steps it up. Believe yeah. me, <laughs> they outdo themselves with uh, compared to this level. Um, a lot of quarter fighting. A lot of clear out the hangar. Clear out the hangar again. But then there's some points where you can just stealth past everything. Or you can use stealth or just getting the jump on your enemies, which I never really understood. It's like they know there's an infiltration squad in here. Why are the why isn't the entire fucking base on high alert at that point? Uh well, okay, so I will say this. Arbiter and Halo 3 has it kind of bad because of Arbiter and Halo 2. Like you you have to bear in mind, people at the time really didn't like the switch up yeah yeah and um so that that's, was a major that's why he ends up being a side character in halo 3 yeah and then halo 5 happens yes yeah. <laughs> sword flying is great in this yeah um mm -hmm. getting to use like this is the first level where you're guaranteed players are going to be using the sword and so you really get to see like Kind of when the mechanics are strong. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We've got copyrighted music. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks, Halo the, 2. The Breaking Benjamin song started? No, it was um, the other one. The cringe one. What? I forget the name of it. Uh, connected. I didn't really this. Yeah, there's multiple um, copyright song, copyrighted songs in uh, Halo Two. <laughs> Shows what I know. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ! I thought mean, so it was just a Breaking Benjamin song. I think the Anyways. Odyssey songs are copyrighted too, or at the very least, the remaster decided not to use them for whatever reason. The fact that we keep getting sidetracked even discussing this level. <laughs> Dude, it's bad. 
Is the Banshee <laughs> sequence in this level or the next one? No, that's the next one. Okay, the Banshee sequence. Garbage. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, uh, well... Easy, easy fucking C to D tier. Uh, I would say this is... Yeah, I'll say this is C. It has its moments, but they are very few and far between. Oh, wait. Is... Oh, oh no no no! I think I think the banshee segment is in this level. Yeah, it is. Oh, Does that change your um, your opinion on it. Uh, well, the thing is, you can sequence skips so easily if you know to just fly, just forward and right. If it was like if it was a mandatory, you had to clear it out. There's no way you like you have to kill everything. Then then it would be D tier. But the fact that you can easily skip it just because you know you don't <laughs> like it, as opposed to the next level. <laughs> yeah, boy, howdy. We're we're, uh, we're on the fourth level of Halo, and it feels like the like the second. Oh man. Oh, hey guys. Oh, right. It is. No, no, no. Oh, shit. That's why I never remember it. Because it's the fucking the Incubus song that plays during the um, during the the Banshee segment yeah. that I always skip. That's why. Right. Forgot. It's fucking Incubus that uh, plays there. So the Flutterback. Oh Christ. <laughs> so, the I Flutterback mean... and much worse for wear. Yeah, so the weird thing about this level is you've brought back the enemy variety, and I'm a huge enemy variety fan. And it's the reason I've uh, been favorable to some levels up to this point. But, wow. <laughs> it is not enough, to, not enough to save this level. They so, use the flood so poorly. So, um, bit of cut content with this level. Um there was originally an enemy called the Juggernaut. Uh, and you can see it when you start the level. If you look down, there's a glass floor. You can look down, you'll see the Juggernaut slaughtering a bunch of, like, grunts and shit. Um, yeah, they just never got to implement it. It's something with the, its animations or something like that. So, um, I think this was another level that saw a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, retooling. Because they lost that ass set and it was supposed to be like, this whole thing. So, yeah, what we get instead is an elevator sequence, like a 10-minute <laughs> elevator sequence. Of getting, of getting jumped by combat forms. Almost unskippable. Like, even speedrunners can't skip most of it. So they just hide in a corner. And So, fun fact about Halo 2, if you look down at the floor and you stick your... You can, like, clip your head into a wall. Um, enemies can't detect you because they're looking for your head. So, if you ever want to sneak past something, you literally just put your head into an object. Just look down the floor and just walk into a wall and just move along the wall. I did not know that. Yeah, the elevator is such a... And it gets worse. The 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 We're standing on a platform that's moving sequences get worse in this game. <laughs> but the elevator yeah. is definitely really bad. <laughs> uh limited weapons hey, that, that's maybe that's a, players that's... will finally learn that covenant weapons are good against the flood <laughs> well One so what's funny hope. is well what's funny is that in halo 2 um the covenant weapons i were kind of nerfed compared to uh, against the flood mm -hmm. they're still decent but it's not like halo 1 where a plasma pistol could fucking decimate an entire squad of flood I legit yeah. thought this section was a fever dream when I played this as a 12-year-old <laughs> at 3 in the morning. No, it's definitely like a you need to go to bed because this game's yeah. not as good as you thought it was going to be. <laughs> kind of wake-up moment. <laughs> it needed to be more hectic and fast-paced. Well, that's the problem, is an elevator sequence is like... ice-cold pacing. <laughs> and it only gets worse because then you get into segments where you just get locked into a room and there's literally just a timer that's going and you just have to fight things until the timer expires and then you're allowed to move on i think they do that twice in this level but, on top of the elevator sequence but there's a boss fight 
the boss oh god the fucking the heretic leader boss fight yeah yeah so i guess this is the first this is this is our first boss in uh in halo it would have been better if the heretics used a mix of human and uh covenant weapons like low tier human stuff in the hands of grunts or something give them pistols yeah i hmm, i guess i could have recovered that but... from like the remnants of halo or something yeah this level you get like you said you get the enemy variety but it's just not enough not enough to salvage all yeah, the horrible the... sins this fucking level commits it is like almost the... everything wrong the cable cutting sequence is nice it's especially cool. if you yeah. jump at the right time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's a cool sequence um so what's funny part is of this level is the lore not in a good way <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot of implications made here that kind of don't go anywhere <laughs> yeah Uh, this is this is three for three tier, I think. Yeah, I think this this earned it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and this is your introduction to the Arbiter. There there really is a reason. Yeah, this, this is not going to be his last three for three level either. Welcome to hell. <laughs> Yeah, this is um this is the level where you make a custom playlist in MCC and you leave this out. All right. So, next up. Uh, yes. No. <laughs> We're not talking about Mombasa Streets yet. Wait, what? I threw up Mombasa Streets. That's the next level oh. chronologically. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> my yeah, my thing's delayed. All right, here we go. Uh, famous level, for sure. All right. This, Halo. Oh my God, this, this is this. This is what Halo is. I, I oh man, I I might actually say this is better than car, uh, Cartographer, honestly, just because, like I said, fan of the Halo Two sandbox, and this level is just the Halo Two sandbox in its entirety. Well, let's talk about theming first. I mean, okay. So, you come off the back of the Arbiter levels, first of all. <laughs> you've survived them. You've somehow made through. Um, you've pushed through. You've returned to the Master Chief storyline. Uh, we've just arrived at a new Halo ring, uh, following a Covenant ship from Earth. So, you've got, like, kind of the buildup from Earth, and, like, yeah. holy shit, it's a Halo ring. And then <laughs> you have the ODST drop sequence. Which, just awesome, awesome cutscene. Yeah. You got Johnson, start building like a real rapport between Johnson and the chief. Well, actually, they start in the beginning yeah. in, in uh, Armory. Oh, there is a reason for us to talk about Armory. Yeah, <laughs> Sergeant Johnson scenes. But yeah, I mean, like, everything's going for Halo at this point with the storytelling. Yeah. And then... Like, they, know, knew, they knew this was going to be a banger level, and they just... And they really all, tried, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then we just get into the gameplay of it. And it's just one great sequence after another, stringed along by just... Like, if there's one section that I think might be slightly weak, it's when you clear the first temple after you've dropped and you're going to the drawbridge. I think that sequence might be the weakest just because you don't really have a vehicle. But they give you plenty of power weapons and stuff that you hopefully didn't burn through. Oh wait, no, no, no. I think they get. I think they drop you a warthog actually, which you know, not not a not as not really that big it, of a help as it was. But yeah. But if you're playing co-op, and this is another level where it's like, oh, we didn't even talk about the last two levels that are. If you're playing them co-op, it <laughs> it doesn't get any doesn't get any better. Yeah, I mean, um, this is where. Um... You go, yeah, this is why we played this co-op. <laughs> of course, it crashed. We couldn't use the Scorpion when I played it co-op, because if you use the Scorpion in MCC, sometimes it just crashes. Oh, my God. 
But there, yeah, there is dialogue that actually acknowledges that you don't use the scorpion, which is great. Yeah. Um, uh, you have the environment, which is just great. It's it's not just that like Mediterranean look. It's the like run down buildings that are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's lore reasons for that and everything. I loved Halo 2's um, aesthetic. I, I just I just loved his aesthetics in basically every level. But um, the the forerunner, the run down forerunner architecture is just will always have a always have a place in my heart. It's especially compared to 343's take on Forerunner. Fucking goddamn. Oh. I love that you start this mission with a rocket launcher. Yeah. That you got in the cutscene. And you could and you literally take like two steps forward and you can grab a battle rifle too. Or take the take the weapons, take the battle rifles from your uh ODST. Yeah, first real sequence companions. with ODSTs too. Yeah. They're in Mombasa, but um this one like you can't miss put some them. yeah put some front and center you you do an odst drop like mm -hmm. yeah i mean this is s tier like for me it's the question is if it's better than cartographer and i think it is if it just I feels think cartographer's like cartographer's better in this in the like openness uh do what you want um, yeah design of it uh, yeah you, i could you can't, you can't sequence break I mean, you know speedrunners, so they, they can sequence break and stuff, but like, they designed the sequence breaks of uh, Silent Cartographer. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put them right next to each other. Just to help really sell. I mean, it's it's obvious what they were going for with Delta Halo. They were like, yeah, people liked, people liked Silent Cartographer, we're gonna just do it, but better. And, um, yeah, I just I love that fucking level. And then and then go to regret. Which depends who you ask. Yeah, it depends personally. on if they like the corridor shooting or the more open. Personally world. personally I fucking love regret, but there are sections like the gondolas where I want to kill myself. I just want to jump off those fucking gondolas. Yeah, regret's definitely proof that like they still kind of got why people like the corridor stuff. <clears throat> But yeah, um, mistakes were made. I love the underwater elevator. Yeah, and the whole sequence that's underwater. Underwater, that, yeah, that's it's a very well designed, very strong gameplay section, very strong aesthetic themed section. I feel like that underwater section, um, the quarters and stuff are basically um, the quarters from uh, Attack in the Control Room, and they yeah. just took they just took lessons from that and implemented it into those sections. Which yeah, is probably why they feel really so fun, good. Really fun Covenant arena. Yeah. The worst part about the underwater section is probably the arena where the two hunters come in and you have jackal snipers. But you still have plenty of cover from the jackal snipers. And like once you figure out that they're there, you're just like, okay, I'll just avoid going into the middle of the room until I deal with them. So it's like an order of operations to the fight. But that's probably the weakest part of the underwater section. Um... And they knew There's how to some... visually break stuff up. So it wasn't yeah. like Assault on the Control Room being visually yes. repetitive. Yeah. I mean, and this is one of the sections where 343 3 actually did a very good job with the remaster. And they took they took creative liberties, but they they were tasteful and they just yeah, expanded on the original this is vision. One of the only levels where I've played in the remaster graphics. Yeah. Just because it, I, I wasn't it's immediately turned off. It's it's worth it, I feel like. Especially even if you just turn it on for the underwater like gondola section where they're just taking you along to the next section. Just seeing all the fish and the sunken mm -hmm. ruins and everything, it's that that was cool. That I really liked. And then you have the gondola. Yeah, the gondolas. Oh. All good things it, come to an end. <laughs> the gondolas, and there's also some defense segments as well, where you kind of just have to sit there and wait. Mm -hmm. Um waiting for the gondola to come to you that segment isn't all that great um is then there's the another first, is this no last level first time they use the weapon drop pods yeah um I think these it, this is the first one that they use at mid-mission i think so um no 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 they they did it in um delta halo at the end near, uh, okay. uh, near the end i, I, I um, still i think that's a plus for it 
That, yes. That really feel it, feeling of like um, but weapon support. The problem is that you have to wait for those things. So you're just sitting there fighting off waves of uh, Covenant. And um, I don't know. I wasn't, I've never been a fan of those sections. I'm going to put all this right. in the A to Bungie tier. And there, yeah. there's the boss fight, which... Oh, God. I think it's a hilarious <laughs> sequence. I think there's some like mechanical strength to fighting everybody besides Regret. Yeah, yeah. Like, the uh, that... fighting the Honor Guard is cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, known, known terrible boss fight. So, A tier? Yeah, it's definitely an A tier. If it wasn't for the gondola section, man, that it it would just be Delta Halo Part 2. It would have been so fucking good. Oh man, in Delta we didn't even talk about the the sniper sequence in Delta Halo near the end with all the jackals and everything, where it's like you get into that little like bowl valley and it's literally a sequence where you're just fighting jackal snipers, but it's fun because you have weapons everywhere, you have mm -hmm. options, yeah, it's, it's and, and the fucking banger song playing. Man, I, lo I love Delta Halo. Delta Halo is probably my favorite Halo level of all time. But what is your thoughts on this thing? Oh, no. Ah, oh, oh, no. Hey, guys. Uh, we're, reworking, <laughs> we're reworking the library. Oh, 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 no. This is like the cursed love child of the library and assault on the control room. <laughs> or, no. Oh, my. The love child of the library and two betrayals. So, so somebody said, somebody said, um, the, uh, Oracle felt like a fever dream. This level feels like a fever dream to me. This level has. It's so bad, it feels like it has no identity. Like, it just doesn't know what it wants to do. Which is, it, it's weird. That's weird to say about a Bungie level in a, in a Halo game. But this level feels like they just never figured it out. So And it's another Arbiter level. It's an Arbiter level, it's a Flood level, it's a Sentinel level. Um, I mean, at least, at least the only the only good thing I can say about this level is at least the flood, are human flood, so at least you get access to human weapons pretty quickly. Yeah, like what a uh, decent weapon oh. variety for the arbiter, which is oh nice. god, and then they, and they fucking introduce the enforcers, those like flying mm -hmm. super sent. Oh man. Yeah, talk about the a concept that okay, so sentinels in Halo One were all right. I'll say yeah. all right to kind of good. Yeah. They never... Bungie struggled with it, and 343 definitely struggled with it. They never figured out how to do, like, the Forerunner-themed enemy ever again. Yeah. Yeah, so it's funny. Like, the Sentinels just... They got introduced in Halo 1, and they just never changed since. They were okay in Halo 1, and they've just been okay ever since. Yeah, and this was the this was so the problem with the enforcers is that this is your attempt to update the kind of forerunner roster, and the enforcers, they're not, you know, they're not the worst enemy I've ever fought in a game. They have <clears> mechanics. <throat> they're not. Yeah, they're not the ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, if we're gonna come, if we're gonna bring in a Halo Four and Five and shit into this. And yeah, I would still take the enforcers, but god damn. They're better to fight when you're in a vehicle. I'll give them that. Which that's but why that's why it's like fighting them on foot. I think they wanted to introduce them before the vehicle sequence so you got used to fighting them and they didn't realize mm -hmm. that that's the wrong order of operations. You should have been fighting <laughs> them in the vehicle sequence first and then doing the on foot stuff in the next one. Yeah. Level. Yeah. And you should have been given power weapons because not only do you have to fight the enforcers several times you are never given any really powerful weapons unless you killed a rocket flood you know and 10 minutes ago or... and yeah and yeah and sat on that the entire fucking time i mean there are ways to cheese the enforcers they're actually very easy to cheese but okay if listen. you're trying to fight it straight up 
I still haven't played Halo Infinite, so I don't know what's going on in that game. I just know yeah. that, like, in terms of the Bungie Halos, I think that they the Sentinels got a weaker experience over time. Weird how the Enforcers weren't in Halo 3. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff where, like, it didn't work in Halo 2, so they kind of gave up on it. That yeah. it might have been nice to see. It might have been, it might have been interesting in Halo 3, because... That was the game where they introduced um, the scarabs, or mm -hmm. not, they didn't introduce it, but they introduced um, like actually fighting them. The scarab sequences. Yeah, and those were really good. And it's like you could have designed the sentinels in a similar, with a similar philosophy, where it's like okay, there's like a sort of order of operations to fighting them, and like maybe you have to like cripple their arms, and that gets them to land, and then you go in and you have to like destroy something in their core or some shit like that. Like there that, could have been something to help differentiate them. That's kind of the thing. Like I love the enemy variety in these games. And my problem with the Sentinels and the Flood is that they kind of gave up on them because they couldn't get them to work right with the later yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's going the wrong way about it. Like Halo 4 would be better if it had Flood. And then you had Covenant, Promethean, Flood dynamics throughout the game. Oh man, I don't. I mean, that's that's assuming that they figured out how to make Prometheans fun to begin with. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if if it was balanced to where like the Flood would consistently beat the Prometheans, then yeah. <laughs> Are you saying you don't enjoy knights just infinitely respawning? That I don't enjoy Watchers. Like it's very realistic. They fly away and take cover and recover, but <laughs> yeah. doesn't make for a good fun enemy. Uh yeah, Sacred Icon. Um I love the cutscenes for this level. It's a really fat so this is another this, like this level is such a colossal failure on basically every front that you don't even realize the stakes of what's going on here. You don't you don't realize what's going on. Like you're literally fighting an outbreak of the flood here because the AI went crazy and started letting shit go to hell. And this is the level that's supposed to introduce all of that. And you're yeah, trying to fight into the quarantine wise, zone. This is like setting literally up the grave mind as a faction. Yeah. Which is such a big deal for the story. And it's like, Oh God, I want it to end. And like the structure that you're fighting in is a structure that they created on the halo after the halos fired and everything because they broke out. Like, it's a lot of really cool, interesting stuff's going on, and it's just all completely lost. Because the level is just so fucking bad. Oh, thanks for the zero dollars. Um, yeah, no, and it helps build up Halo 1. Yeah. Like, the concept of, like, oh, that's this is what would have happened if um, yeah. things had gotten further out of control. So, it like, really justifies our actions there. I liked the cutscenes is like saying I like when I'm not playing this level. I mean, <laughs> the Arbiter stuff is really strong. I think, okay, the first Arbiter cutscene is too long, but the general Arbiter theming of like really giving you an insight into what's going on with the Covenant, cool stuff. Um, the premise of this level is cool. Some of the stuff that, that some of the ways this, like this is a strong Forerunner um, architecture level because it has to be. But holy shit, the gameplay experience. <laughs> That's, I mean, three for three tier. Yeah. That's Sorry, Arbiter. Hard, hard three for three tier. I saw somebody saying, like, oh, no, this level isn't as bad as Oracle. I completely disagree. I think Oracle is better than this level. It, it, it literally only gets worse. until we get to a great journey or amazing almost. that the branding wasn't the worst thing to happen to the arbiter because <laughs> now all right i'm just now preemptive, preemptively like <laughs> I, I there's no debate right <laughs> now now we are in it listen if you manage to make it past sacred um make it past quarantine zone you're good. It's it's only up from here. <laughs> they fixed it. <laughs> Holy crap. 
top. Okay, so t uh, all the problems with the previous level plus a gondola <laughs> sequence. Plus a gondola sequence. Plus now it's open. Now it's just super wide open, and you're gonna get sniped by rocket, uh, rocket flood constantly. Not only no no not only the rocket flood, but also um, their their scorpions, their goss wart hogs. Um, just they got so many human vehicles that they could just one shot you with. Uh, oh yeah, and then they introduce the the fact that the enforcers they can get worse and they can pick up your uh, vehicles and uh, do sink kills on you. I'm gonna this, put it in so, the rare D to three four three category, just because it's a it's a amusing co op experience. Really? Oh man. I, w I would rank that as the worst level we've seen so far out of any of the games. The previous level is not particularly fun in co-op. This, at least, is, like, with the vehicles, gets amusing. Yeah, I I, I guess. But, oh, man, that, gond that gondola sequence is so rough. Do you know the cheese location? Yeah, I found it by accident when it, the last <laughs> time I played. It's because it's so, it's so fucking easy to get in there. Yeah, that's the literally, um, all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom now. Is the gondola the modern game version of the forced scrolling sequence? It's not even modern. Is it, and is anybody <laughs> still doing it? Oh, yeah, speaking of the restroom, um, I think now's a good time for our smokers to go take a break. And I'm going to go use the restroom, so. All right, chat, what's going on? I haven't, I haven't been reading much. Insert ad time. Oh man, gonna do them dirty. Goss hog, scorpion, so many, so many good vehicles. The problem, ugh, the problem is that the level just doesn't feel well laid out for it, especially when you're dealing with the flood. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with the floods aim with vehicles, but they just. They're just too goddamn accurate. They can snipe you with those scorpions from across the map. There's there's certain parts of here where I'm I'm still traumatized. When are we playing Halo 2? Uh, when I got when I start making a video on Halo 2, which might happen sooner rather than later. The rocket flood. Oh right, the rockets in Halo 2 lock on. <laughs> Is it wrong to assume most of the Halo 3 levels will be Bungie A tier? Halo 3 has got some really good. It's it's honestly, it's just it's just Cortana. Almost every other level in that game is just really well done. Loved fighting alongside the elites. Yeah, Half Shaw gets a good showing during this level. There's see that's the problem. It's like the hey, the Jack, Arbiter levels. Sorry. The Arbiter levels are, they have so much going on because you're fighting alongside the elites and everything like that. There's so much, but then just the gameplay, <laughs> the gameplay comes in and oh boy, it's, it's gameplay. All right. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't think I've played this level co-op now that I'm thinking about it. That might change my opinion because there's so many vehicles where there's, there's enough fucking scorpions for both players to have a scorpion for most of the level. Uh, we could try it out co-op after. Hmm. Uh, just to see. This level isn't too bad on Lasso. Uh, okay, so let's talk about... Let's talk about the story. Um, I think a lot of people hype up Arbiter's story. And I don't think the levels do justice to what's going on. Because there's just the, it's the betrayal sequence at the end. There's not enough... Um... Doubt. <clears throat> Uh, with what the what's going on with the Arbiter and this sequence to really lead up to the betrayal. Well, so it feels like the, the betrayal only, is the only thing that's informing the switchover. Yeah, the only the only real like evidence you can get of the betrayal coming is um if you just don't trust uh what's his face? Truth. Yeah. Like that's that's really it. But so even like, yeah he doesn't that's a player reason. I'm talking about an arbiter of in-character reason. 
Oh, for him to just switch sides suddenly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, getting thrown into a pit at the behest of your boss. I mean, maybe they could have had a moment where they're just showing him, like, kind of doubting. I, what I like, would have done, how I would have written it, is um, you make it clear that, like, the Covenant are the reason why the Flood are out of control. Because, I mean, how did yeah. the Flood get out of control? What were they consuming? Yeah. And it's like, oh, the Flood found Delta Halo first and did the same shit that they did on the other one and let the Flood out. Well, no, the humans let it out. So that's why they, that's why the Covenant didn't let it out there. And then, uh, but this is this was the learning point in, like, so everything that you're see all the horrible stuff that you're seeing in the in the containment zone is because of the covenant meddling with mm -hmm. stuff that they didn't understand. And then Arbiter's like, huh. And the humans seem to be trying to fix this problem. And it, it would be like a big moment for him because it's like uh, he would go, this is what would have happened on my Halo. Yeah. If um, yeah, it would if it justify hadn't been destroyed justify his his actions and stuff during the first game to try and prioritize containing the flood so it, it would have been a um there's stuff that you can do with this premise and i just don't think that they do it i think that the arbiter's betrayal is mostly informed by the fact that he doesn't like tartarus and he got kicked in a hole to be to be <laughs> frank though halo was never halo's never had good characters they have characters, but they aren't good. Honestly, I think Arbiter's th the Arbiter only real who, attempt. Yeah, he. That's who people <laughs> point to when they say, "Oh, but Halo 2 storytelling is so much so mature and political." And it's like, what? Yeah, on, what? Pa on paper that that's the case, but in reality, like, did they miss like all the stuff in the beginning with Sergeant? Jo Anytime Sergeant Johnson is on screen, just. The whole the whole thing is absurd. I feel like Halo 2's is much more absurd. That's honestly what that's honestly what I like about Halo 2's uh, storytelling is that it just it... kind of amps up the yeah. It's just it, like all the like all the shit in new Numba in new new Mombasa and stuff like that is just so just like they, the bravado is off the charts. They and it's just like yeah, like this is much better. They leaned into the Marines being goofy in Halo One. Yeah, and like just having fun with the war. Yeah. There's a lot more that they could have done with the Arbiter to kind of sh strengthen up those sections, but at the same time, if you're not buffing up the gameplay, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's a shame what happened, but there's a reason it <clears throat> happened. Great um, mind. These thumbnails are not doing me any favors, so I believe <laughs> the sequence is it's the Master Chief first, and then Arbiter, and then Master Chief, and then Arbiter. I believe, um... I believe that's the order, so... This is, despite the fact that we're seeing the Grave Mind, actually the Covenant level of the game. Wait, is it? Yeah, this is the level where you uh, first arrive on High Charity. So you have the cutscene where like Master Chief and Arbiter are together and uh, Regret and Penitent and yeah. whatever, and the, yeah, yeah. the Grave Mind's talking to them, he sends them on their way. And it alternates, because it's like doing a thing where it's like, now they're aligned, so they're they're kind of like instead of doing the missions separate, they're like kind of mixed together. But yeah, you start with the mission on high charity, and then you go to the first mission that Arbiter is um, fighting the brutes, and then the second mission on high charity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is this is Grave Mind. Yes. Which is the. Level where uh, what's his face pops out and he goes like he's like boo and scares off the yeah. fucking grunt. Yes. All right. All right. Now that we figured out what level this is, okay. Uh, cutscene. Um, I don't know if I like uh. the Grave Mind's character <laughs> or the premise of the Grave Mind. You you don't you don't like the talking cabbage. Yeah, it's a very very strange. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah, very strange decisions that were made with the the Grave Mind to try and i like characterize the flood i like the premise of a grave mind yeah, um it makes i think sense that they would kind of like have a diplomatic intelligent iota that would say um our interests are aligned so I'll yeah use you to my advantage but yeah the way and it it's also, done 
it, it's also it also has really interesting implications for like how they learn about their enemies and stuff is by literally just absorbing their knowledge and stuff there's a lot of really it definitely elevates the flood into something more than just zombies but oh boy is is this introduction an introduction all right Um, but that cutscene aside. All right, so that cutscene. Let's assume that this level starts with the Master Chief just manifesting onto High Charity out of rage or something like. <laughs> Holy shit! I fucking love this level. Yeah. So this, so, oh. this is um this is an apology for Truth and Reconciliation. <laughs> so remember, Truth and Reconciliation is in D tier. This is yeah. an easy A tier mission for me. Oh, this is S tier for me. Like, S tier all the fucking way. This, like, butts up against Delta Halo for one of my favorite levels in Halo. Because this is this is Halo quarter shooter done right. Yeah, because this is the Halo, especially, right. especially Halo 2's combat sandbox makes for an excellent quarter shooting experience. Surprisingly, when even though they have a game that is a designated marksman rifle. Um surprisingly it's still very fucking good as a quarter shooter but then it has its moments where it opens up and then you also have the covenant fighting the covenant which is really awesome and makes it just completely throws everything off because then you don't know who like mm -hmm. who's on your side and everything like that yeah it's Although that aspect none, of two betrayals are on your side. it's that aspect of two betrayals where you have uh faction <clears throat> conflict internal faction divisions yeah and but you're managing to pull that off with just the Covenant roster. Yeah. Which is so cool. It, uh, yeah, so much, fire so your much guns. enemy variety. Uh, the Breaking Benjamin sequence. <laughs> so much energy, yeah. Um, yeah, because the Covenant has an expanded roster. It has Brutes now, which... Is this the first Brute mission? I think so. No. Yeah, I think this is the yes. first brute mission, yes. and yep. you have drones now, plus the usual roster. So you've got six enemy types and um, brutes, though. <laughs> yeah, fighting the brutes is, especially in Halo Two, not good. But. In this level, it's mitigated a lot. You don't fight many brutes in this level. Yeah, because I think the elites win usually. Yeah. But it is definitely wow. it is definitely like they're a fine addition to the roster because they're not the main covenant. Yes. Enemy. Yeah. If they until you reach the were, until you reach the last levels. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> really where they shit the bed. <laughs> but like for right now, the, right now it's going yeah. strong. You've got a new enemy type. You've got a lot of interesting ideas. You've got the prison break. I think the only thing that holds back this level is that it's all covenant weapons. I would yeah. have liked to have seen some human weapons in there. Not it, don't need much because this does this level does make you learn how to really use the covenant weapons to their fullest, that, and you'll be surprised. So much. Yeah, but I, I feel like this level does it right. And you'll be surprised, like, how good some of the Covenant weapons really are in this game. But um, still, I would have liked to have seen some human representation. And that, that's literally the only thing I can say about this level, is that I wish I had a moment where I was given a shotgun and a rocket launcher. That's, that's it. That's, that's, that's the only complaint that I have about this the, level. The it's Skybox just... is so cool, too. Yeah. Oh, High yeah. Charity is such a neat... Um, such... So, so well... Setting. So well done. I, it it's crazy that um, Halo 3's high charity just cannot even hold a candle to what Halo 2 did. Yeah, for me, this is S tier. Like, great level. Well, so what's your biggest complaint about it? You didn't really uh, let the like long elevator sequences and uh, all covenant weapons, mm. brutes, um. Kind of a lot of things that I think hold it back. There's that one sequence where you're in like some weird void location and you have to like set up those uh those bridges between the 
between the different platforms and you got drones flying in that sequence kind of sucks but they still give you enough weapons and stuff to get through it yeah yeah i i, I like that level a lot it's i would definitely say it's on the upper end especially co-op um, yeah, co-op co on that level would probably be really good too. I almost feel like we should just jump in on uh, Sacred Icon or whichever one's the first Arbiter Containment level and just yeah. play through to the end of Halo 2. <laughs> I, and I'm trying to think. So I'm pretty sure what happened was my friend and I were playing uh, Halo 2 co-op and we got to Sacred Icon, called it a night, and I just don't think we went back to it. I think that's what happened. Yeah, that's why I... there's a lot of stuff that can break a co-op playthrough of Halo 2. <laughs> so I almost feel like I almost feel like if you're introducing someone to Halo 2 um, and you think that they're not going to like the Arbiter stuff. My brother and be, I played it split screen. You'd be better. That was oh, way no, back yeah. in the day. That, that was way help. back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> if you think that uh, if somebody doesn't have as good a taste as you. Um, you need to like probably skip the arbiter stuff yes oh without a doubt you just uh all right so it gets better <laughs> speaking of arbiter levels this one isn't the worst yeah um, we've come a long way <laughs> but oh boy there's a lot of sequence skips you can do with this level and um i usually do them yeah, this is another one of those weird, why did they p use this level, or this picture for the thumbnail? Because <laughs> there's nothing to distinguish it from part two. <laughs> it's so much weird thumbnail design for him, the Halo yeah. Yes. And I do apologize, but that was my only resource. I had to get like 55 images. Yeah, so. yeah. You, you weren't about to load up the game and take pictures yourself. Um, kind of unmemorable. Um, I think a sin of this level is that it really is breaking up the stronger Master Chief stuff. Yeah. At the end of Halo 2. Yeah. Um, um <laughs> the, the ghost sequence, not as bad as the Banshee sequence in, uh, Arbiter. Still pretty bad though. Because it's just a long is there, corridor. Is there a Banshee sequence in this one? I think that's the that's the final level. No, that's, that's the final one. There's a ghost yeah, this, sequence. Yeah, this is the ghost sequence. The very long ghost sequence that ends with you fighting a bunch of wraiths in mm -hmm. these narrow canyons. <laughs> of course there's of course there's jackal snipers. And not only are there jackal snipers, there's also brutes with brute shots. So yeah, this, and this lots is, of them. This is where you're fighting a lot of brutes. And then uh, the theming? they do they have they have human weapons. Um problem is they really love giving you shotguns on this level for whatever reason. And yeah. uh I, I guess the idea is that if you're fighting um brutes that are charging at you, the shotgun's nice. Mm -hmm. But um you know what's also nice? Sticky grenades. <laughs> like, yeah. You just stick them and you just run away. Some strange decisions. It's interesting that they never brought back the idea of brutes being willing to use human weapons because they're not yeah. like religiously opposed to it like the elites are. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this level. A lot of monkey business going on with this level. <laughs> I think it's a. Uh... I think it might be a C. I don't think it's D. Yeah, I could I could go for some C action on this one. It has some moments. Um, there's a pr there's a prison sequence where you break out some uh, covenant, some allied covenant. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You do it's it's another level where you get to fight alongside allies, and they give you hunters, so they don't immediately get wiped out. You get you do get the weird covenant warthog though. <laughs> 
Oh, if you're foolish the enough to use it. The Seraph, yes. That's on the, you. The mountain climber. <laughs> Okay, the problem. People are gonna. Here's the problem, Halopedia. People are gonna be asking me, "Oh, what did you rate two betrayals?" Because they, like, even when it was by itself, I doubt people could easily locate which level was fucking two betrayals. Yeah. Because of these icons <laughs> that you've picked out. <laughs> uh, just use process of elimination, you know. It's a shame you barely get to use the human weapons against the Brutes and Flood in this game. Halo 2 has a hard-on for Covenant weapons. That's because they're very... The way that the story is written, they're very apprehensive yeah. about... Like, you can't add the Flood to these final two Arbiter levels because then Halo 2 has to end with you blowing up the ring. Yeah, yeah, they front they front-loaded the human stuff hard. I mean, you know... Start with your best foot forward, I guess. Well, it's also just the story. Like, we knew Halo 2 was going to have uh, Anyone levels Anyone who seriously on Earth. thinks fighting Marines would be fun either doesn't... Well, fighting Marines wouldn't be fun because you can fight Marines, as is, and it's not fun. You can make it fun, though. Like, it doesn't have to suck. So, um, yeah, glad we got that over with. <laughs> Alrighty. That's okay. It gets better. Uh, this level's called Hide Charity, isn't it? Yes. I do not remember the level names uh, after Halo 1. I know, well, I know ODSTs too. Weird, isn't it? Fun. Actually, ODSTs is the ones that I that I don't remember. Oh, uh, Reach, good. I don't really remember all that well. We've got a, we've got well, a, a split then. Yeah. Well, it's good. We have we have a cover cover each other's inadequacies. All right. So you got the strengths of Grave Mind plus you're adding flood variety. Flood. Mm -hmm. um, um, another probably another the, the strongest flood level. I would say. Um. Yeah. I, I would say so. It might be the strongest flood level in general out of all the games. Honest. I, I'd better, be willing to say that. Three four three guilty spark. Well, the thing is, is that three for three guilty sparks missing flood for half of it. Right. Yeah, I guess I could I could agree that it's a bit like better. Like ded dedicated flood level. There's a lot of cool stuff that's going on with this level too, in terms of the story. Yeah. Um, um this is an this is another level that suffered really hard from the cuts. There was supposed to be a whole like warthog sequence where you're driving like so the the beam of energy that they're using to fuel the the ship that was originally supposed to be like a whole warthog sequence and stuff but they just didn't have the time to do it so you just get teleported in a cutscene so, instead and so master chief uses the uh rainbow gate yeah <laughs> um i don't know if a uh, warthog sequence but that was, that was literally going to be like um it was going to be like the halo one warthog sequence uh, like that's yeah. literally what they had envisioned for it. I don't know if that would have made this there's level better. Of, there's a lot of paralleling going on. Yeah, in Halo Two, like level design. I like kind of a joke. What I really like about this level is that it really starts to set the stage for like what the flood can actually do, like what an outbreak of the flood would really look like. Well, and that's, that's what people complain about with Halo Two is that it's just setting up Halo Three way too much. But at the I, same time, like, there's a lot in Halo 2 as is. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it's shit, but... <laughs> <laughs> there's Halo 2 is, like, the extreme of a Halo campaign where it's either garbage or amazing. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's the lo very, very low lows, but very high highs. Like, you saw with, with Halo 1, the spread was... We had levels in almost every category. Yeah. Um, I, I would say... Halo 1 skews towards the higher end, but um, yeah, Halo Halo 2 is just either all highs or all lows. I think this mission's up there for sure. Um, just because I love high charity and I, th oh man, I, like, I want to like, give it a. I like. I want to give it a. Yeah, I would say a. I like the sequence where um, Prophet of Mercy gets 
got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much that happens in this level. And I just I just love the recontextualization of it. It's we we've only been gone for, you know, 30 minutes or so, which is mm -hmm. how long it takes to complete the last level. Um but it just feels so, so like shit just the flood arrive and shit just goes off immediately. Yeah, the like, whole level starts getting darker and darker. They really sell how much of an apocalypse the, like how apocalyptic yeah. the flood is. Yeah, like I'm surprised 343's trilogy isn't about dealing with the inevitable flood outbreak in the Covenant Empire. Because <laughs> <laughs> like Gravemind's weirdest decision was going for the Ark, like fully. Like you, he couldn't have spared a ship or two to go. Yeah. Infect uh, some colonies. And that's a great lead in for having the flood in the other games. Ah, uh, great journey. But yeah. This. <laughs> very, um. Very mediocre level. Not a great ending. Not a great send off for this game. Remember, no. the law was A to S tier. Yeah. Yeah. And this is. Not only is it an Arbiter level. <laughs> arbiter level, Banshee level, um, boss fight level. And the Banshee the and the Banshee section sucks. It's doing all the you're things that this following, game did wrong. You're following the slow-moving Scarab. You don't have to protect it because the Scarab's invulnerable. So there's nothing stopping you from just flying to the end. And, and just, just parking and, out, yeah. and just waiting, yeah, which is what most people will wind up doing because it just gets so boring and so tedious and so frustrating too. Because you're not going to get checkpoints while escorting the fucking the the scarab. Yeah, um, suffers from checkpointing. Not a great send off to the game, so it's like there's no flood like it, the maw has. The maw has everything yeah. that was in the game up to that point to be like a final test. Yeah. Um. Whereas this is just a Banshee sequence, of which I think there was one other in the game. Yeah. Um, it's not like the Scarab section is a reprise of that idea because you don't go on the Scarab and fight. Nope. Um You you get to watch you get to watch Sergeant Johnson. Yeah, you, 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 Sergeant Johnson characterization. Yeah. Definitely um Yeah, he calls um he calls Tartarus Mr. Mohawk and threatens him. Mm, at least he doesn't call the arbiter a hinge head. <laughs> oh man, Palmer. Uh <laughs> Yeah, so um I I said even the sequence before the Banshee part where you're the, the it's a vehicle level, it's a very weak vehicle level, I think. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of corridor stuff between that part and the Banshee sequence that's all right at best, and then... Oh, right. I completely forgot about the, the first half of this level where you yeah. start on the beat. Yeah, because the Banshee sequence <laughs> is just a, um, like, all-around kind of garbage time. Yeah. And then a little bit of a corridor shooter at the end, and then the Tartarus it's... boss fight. Yeah, yeah, the corridor part is probably the strongest part of the level. And it's, it's literally just because of that, that was the strong part of yeah. of Arbiter's last level. So yeah, yeah, and you get some you get some allies again. You get some. Uh, I think you get some hunter allies in this. But yeah, man, it's it's rough. It's rough being Arbiter in Halo Two. <laughs> I think this is D tier. It's not D? as bad as mm. Arbiter's worst levels. Um. Yeah, yeah, the Tartarus, Tartarus fight brings it down to D. Because I'm looking at, we have, um, we have Great Jer, or, um, fuck, w whatever the, the previous Arbiter level was, that was a C. So if that was a C, this is definitely, this has got to be a D then. Yeah, because it's a step down. Tartar, from, Tartar, from Tartar is, is such a bad fucking boss fight too. I think that's why people <laughs> don't like the end of Halo 2. Because the last because the last level is that bad. It yeah. And then it ends on a cliffhanger just to kick you in the balls even harder. I don't see I what okay, chat. Um for the the whatever the fuck this level's called, Great Journey or whatever. 
What's the upside of this level? Like I said, the quarter section isn't terrible. Because I'd be curious to hear it. I've never thought this level was good. Um, I thought that this is kind of endemic of the, all the problems with Halo 2. The music, the prison break sequence, that's not this level. Hunter allies, that's not this level. No, I think I think you do oh, get hunter allies in this level for like the five it, minutes at the in the control room or whatever. Um, I know there's a bunch of elite allies that help you during the Tartarus fight. That's kind of oh, neat. is this oh, is this a level where you do the breakout? No, that's the, the last level. This is the level where the the there's the fake out with the wraith. That's how the level starts. It starts on the yeah bridge. yeah yeah I know. No gondolas is the highlight. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that could have improved this level further is here's how you make this the ultimate shitty level. You start with the Banshee <laughs> sequence to get to the Scarab, and then you do a gondola section with the Scarab to get to the control room. The Scarab is the gondola section. Like, that would have been the peak garbage <laughs> design. So you're right. It could have been worse. It sucks that the Arbiter gets the best story levels and the worst gameplay levels. That's kind of the trade-off in this game is like you've got the Master Chief stuff that's amazing, but kind of rarely gets the story right. And then you've got the, well, not kind of, like it's an average story, we'll say. And then you got the Arbiter stuff that is amazing, but the gameplay sucks. <laughs> and yeah, that's Halo 2. I think we've kind of um, hit on all the problems with this game. All the reasons yeah. that I kind of don't like it. Oh, man. It's... See, but for me, it comes down to... Is, Halo 2 is definitely my favorite. Um, and it's just... I love the sandbox. I love the sandbox, and I love how fucking janky the game is, too. It's one of those... Is, it and Oblivion occupy very similar places in my heart, where it's just... The game is so fucking janky that part of the game for me was just finding glitches and messing around with the engine and stuff and um mcc really sucked a lot of the life for that uh out of halo 2 because they gave us the vista version which was just like just some of the bugs just don't work anymore so uh super bounces aren't in it but don't, don't worry it's exactly how you remembered it <laughs> But I, I love this. I love the sandbox. I love the multiplayer. I really, really love the level, the map design of uh, Halo 2. Halo 2 is not afraid to have levels like um, Headlong, where it's literally designed for one or two game modes, and that's it. But they made up for it by giving you levels like Lockout and Ascension and stuff, where it's just it's like, okay, you want you want your good PvP, like your good competitive like map. All right, here you go. Zanzibar, that's most actually no. Even Zan Zanzibar plays pretty good for uh for um like four v four, five v five. Halo Two was a definitely a multiplayer strong game. That's why it was it led to Halo Three being such a big deal was the multiplayer more than the campaign. Yeah, which is kind, which well, is a shame, but it was also you know. The technology behind it they they pioneered a lot of a lot of stuff for xbox right. live if anybody's late joining and wants to know what a level is ask now i will not be answering questions um <coughs> later on about what tier stuff <laughs> is <laughs> all right yeah I've you're welcome watching. i apologize for the horse cock segment i know it's loud <laughs> <laughs> okay all right now halo 3 we've got a new we've got new hardware we've got 512 megabytes of ram <laughs> um this level's called what 0117 yeah all right, so Halo 3, uh, kind of a continuation of a lot of what was going on with the gameplay of Halo 2, uh, but I think in a lot of ways they were better able to make utilization of 
Um, it's not as bad as Halo 2 was with difficulty traps, but it's also just kind of an easy yeah. game as a result. Yeah. You can really, Especially when you're playing co-op. You can really feel that, like, this game is so much easier. And I think part of it was they I thought if you if you want more difficulty, you got to turn on the skulls, which fair yeah. enough. But yeah. At the same um, time, especially with PC even controls. With, dude, even, even with skulls, Halo 2 is... Or Halo 3 is not that difficult. Especially when you're playing co-op. This is a game that was designed for four-player co-op from its inception. And get four people to play this game. This is a uh, new Mombasa it's... is B tier. Well, okay. What I like about the co-op is... Uh, it's no longer everybody's a copy of the main character. They actually yeah. <laughs> made unique characters for each one, even if it is just Master Chief, Arbiter, Red and Blue Elite. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's pretty cool. Oh, man. I think it's easier because it's Sandbox is the best of the series. I, I think that, but I also think it's just easier in general. Like, yeah. there's Jackal Snipers, but they, ton they uh, toned them I down. Have Half the time, the Jackal Snipers don't even have sniper rifles. They have carbines instead. Yeah, so, I mean, they were, consci and, they were conscious of not making Jackal Snipers too busted. And, yeah, uh, the There's, brutes are, there was a lot of a lot of stuff. The Brutes don't go ape shit as easily. And the, the Brutes also have, like, an armor system now. So, like, you break off their armor and then they're vulnerable. So they have some mechanics and stuff related to them. Hunters are the same way. You can break off their armor, and then they're just yeah. It's just a lot, a lot easier than Halo, Halo Two, especially. What what tier is Cursed Halos? Forget about keys. Uh, if you're asking about Cursed Edition keys, that's a whole different question. Cursed Edition on keys is actually kind of fun, just because there's so many ways to get up into the um, the plateau. You can use like the blunderbuss to. Uh, to jump up to the top of the level and you can see like all the flood spawning you can just skip that entire section <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah keys is in the d tier okay so training wheels level um it's a good training wheels level though yeah it has it, a lot of really well designed opens, sequences it opens up the sandbox a lot faster than pillar of autumn did oh yeah they don't they don't uh stick you with um with the ar for too long they get a br into your hands rather quickly um yeah it's just it's just a level designed to get you introduced to things but it ends with a really awesome fight sequence really well designed combat sequence at the end yeah the dam is an interesting level like an interesting area to fight in very smart you got the choke introduces point and opens up and then brute chieftain um, introduces the meme of rescuing sergeant johnson yeah you literally rescue him like three times during this fucking game we don't know how else to use them we're sorry <laughs> people loved him but we don't want to we don't know how to do it yeah um what would you rate this mission i want to say it's b tier i want to say b or is b as well yeah the only reason is there's a lot of levels that I'm going to want to put in A and S tier, so I feel like Halo 3 is going to need some B representation. I think it's just kind of boring. Like, it's not yeah, it's not offensively it's, bad, and that's kind of surprising considering what we just went through. It's quick, with Halo though. 2. It's, it's very a, quick. It's a very fast level, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I should probably switch to the Halo 3 music. Interesting. We didn't use the whole two soundtrack, but we did Halo One. All right. So that's, in your opinion, is that is uh, Sierra better than um, the Pillar of Autumn and uh, Cairo? I think just because so Cairo fucks you over a lot. Um, yeah. Well, no, we rated Cairo higher. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what rating I gave Cairo. I think you. I think I was the B, and you said A. A. Yeah. Yeah, I think 
I like um, I like Cairo because it's more fun on uh, repeat playthroughs, especially as a veteran of Halo Two. Whereas Sierra is just kind of like, yeah, okay. It does exciting I've played, set I've pieces. I played Halo better. Three. Yeah. Because you've got the stations blowing up and what have you, and Halo Three yeah. doesn't really have a whole lot of going on with the set pieces. Well, they um, got the. Well, uh, they do introduce the concept of blowing up uh, phantoms. I didn't know you could blow up any of the phantoms in zero one seven. Yeah, you can actually. Um, it's I mean it's scripted for the uh, for the pelican oh, to yeah. do it at the end, but you can okay. actually blow it up yourself if you have enough armaments to do it. I mean, that's not really got anything on, like, space stations getting blown up and the ridiculous <laughs> cutscene at the end of Cairo Station. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but Pillar of Pillar of Autumn is, like, like I said, it, it takes too long to open up, whereas 0117 yeah. does actually open up. Yeah. And give you kind yeah. of the full sandbox. It, but, yeah, by yeah, the, I mean, by the end, they level. give you... By the end, they give you the fucking gravity hammer. Yeah, and then vulnerability. So it's like, yeah, that, that's why I, I rate it higher is that it does give you stuff to do at the end. But yeah, it is a sleeper. All right, so then we got the ace is in the hole. Don't remember the name of this level. I do apologize. Crow's nest. Yet. Crow's nest. That's why I don't remember. It's <laughs> this is the, yeah, the, the multiplayer level. Um, um, I like this level a lot. Corridor shooter, um, kind of core fighting covenant. Um, yeah. Well themed. Kind of putting new boots in the ground in the human covenant war. Yeah. Um, the writing. This is this is where I really started to notice on my most recent playthrough of Halo Three, just how fucking bad the writing gets in Halo Three, because like truth. Oh, oh, this is the this is the introduction of um Terrence Stamp as uh as truth as well. Yeah. Um, Man but yeah, Car when, Cameron. yeah, yeah, when Mancar Cameron comes on the mic, oh man, oh, that was, that was a speech. All right. Where are we going, ma'am? To war. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, they, yeah. They, and they recasted, um, they recasted her as well. I really liked her original. Yeah. I think voice Miranda actress. got a rough mm -hmm. portrayal in three. Yeah. I, I, li I liked her portrayal in two cause she was just like. It worked with her with her character more that she was kind of trying to fill in like the the shoes of her father and stuff. She's like kind of stepping into a more leadership type role, and uh, yeah, in three she's on level with Lord Hood, just running the entire operations. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, you you, you shut down the Halo at at the end of Halo two, but um, well, and they I, use, I didn't they see use the, in a weird way too. Yeah. It's like I didn't I didn't see the leadership skills that like Lord Hood had in her. Well, you no, know, she used a rope and got the the uh key. Yeah. You have to remember yeah. a lot of Miranda's character story in um Halo 2 is in arbiter levels. <laughs> so it can be very easy to forget that what's going on with her character, but I there's the shift in character writing in Halo mm -hmm. 3 in general, but yeah um, miranda get miranda gets it pretty bad and then they just kill her i mean we'll get to that we'll get to her death scene but i kind of like the, the casual death <laughs> like, i think it fits halo kind of well that like people can just die the casual death after they talked about committing suicide <laughs> yeah <laughs> um drones but yeah I think it's oh, yeah. a pretty mid enemy. Um, they're not as bad in Halo 3, I feel like. And yeah. they set up the sequences better than in Halo 2, that's for sure. Uh Lord Hood's model has definitely aged. <laughs> oh my god. Like these game these games, uh Halo 3 does look good when you play it on MCC, but there's the, a few there's, there's certain... some stuff that's not yeah very good and lord hood's yeah. probably in the bad category uh, he looks like a halo 2 model but it's not his halo 2 model because his halo 2 model do it looked even worse uh brute jet packs i believe this is the first time brute jet pack mm -hmm. units are introduced a lot of the armor abilities are in full swing at this point yeah 
Uh, I like hot take. I actually liked Halo 3's equipment. It's um, all right. It, it adds a I bit to the definite, sandbox. I definitely preferred it over Halo uh, Halo Reach and Beyond's armor abilities. Well, of course. I mean, I, armor abilities that barely exist. Like Halo 4, man, fuck. And <laughs> every armor ability sucks and is either sucks or is annoying to use. Yeah, I've always seen the equipment in Halo 3 as being an extension of, like, Overshield's active camo. Yeah, um, it's very basic stuff. I like the grav lift. I like the yeah. double shield. I like the regen field. Um, I like the deployable barrier. I like the EMP. The flash one is the only weak one because it's just meant to be used against the player. It's, yeah. It doesn't really do and anything. And there's, there's also the radar jammer that also kind of yeah, sucked, The, the too. multiplayer yeah. option. Yeah, I mean... It's an alright addition. I wouldn't say it's like a sellout reason to play three over the other nah. games. It it was just it was a fun little spice, and um, I don't know. I feel like people just really shit on it, shit on equipment in Halo Three. I think it's because Reach is like the Halo Two of armor abilities, where it's either like really good or just not impressive, like the <laughs> jetpack or. Because the jetpack's your grav lift replacement, and it's like, yeah, it's cool. Vertical mobility. Yeah. I don't, I've, I was never a fan of mobility stuff like that being equipment abilities. Because it's like, if you don't have a jetpack in Halo Reach, you just, just add a disadvantage. Same with Sprint. It's like, um, it, should, it should have been... Everybody should have had it, or nobody should have had it. So, some interesting stuff with this level, like... You know the part where you're rescuing the marines from brutes? Yeah. Have you ever gone up into the ventilation? No. So there's a whole ventilation network you can go up into in that part and like jump back down and like fight brutes in the middle. It's this is a good co-op corridor shooter because it has So I know I know if, see I know the ventilation system in the bomb room in the command center. I didn't know that there was one in the prison as well. Yeah, there's a there's like a so there's the walkway on the second level, and then there's there will be ladders mm -hmm. that go up. So yeah, those, yeah. Those uh, those have openings that you can drop back down and get to other parts of that sequence. Interesting. It's a yeah, it's a huge ventilation system, so it's kind of goofy that Master Chief can get through it. But gameplay wise, <laughs> I think it's a great um, it's a great little addition to give players options, especially in co-op. Like I said. It's a this this whole level is just a really well designed quarters like section. Uniquely themed too. This is the only level that yeah. kind of looks like this until you get to reach. Yeah. Um. Because it was because what it was is an old military base. Yeah, it was that like they a just World War II recommissioned. Era base. Uh huh. Yeah, they just recommissioned it for the war, which is some interesting like world building. It's like wow, or like you know. Things are getting that desperate that we have to rely on World War Two era shit now. Yeah, and that it's effective too. Yeah, like it, that it's a strong like uh, command base that they can use in this area. Yeah, because like, it, it you know, it's solid world building for leading up to you finding out what happened after you left. Uh, with Mombasa just getting destroyed. Uh, pretty good level, I would say, A tier. Yeah, I would give it A. Like, it's not amazing. Like I said, it's sleep. It's Halo just... Three is a bit of a sleeper with some of its levels. It takes a while. It's just really, it's up. just really well, it's just really well done. Is basically it. Um, it's definitely. Not it feels bad. like it's the product of just a lot of lessons learned. So what's interesting is I wonder if we're just gonna agree on Halo Three levels and not have any like. <laughs> inter tier <laughs> ratings for these because halo 3 is like consistent in how people interpret it okay speaking of consistent in how people interpret it ah Savo highway the halo 2 level that made it into halo 3 <laughs> at, least, at least how it feels design wise um uh so warthog level like warthog and brute the chopper entire time, the entire time yeah, yeah. Some brute chopper stuff if you can get it. Um, yeah. Seeing the destroyed rings is kind of cool. 
Yeah. But I mean, this feels like a level that was included because it was in the trailer. And I don't know if you remember the trailers. They were yeah. rendered, but like they were super barren. <laughs> like there was no grass or anything. No, like um, Master Chief wasn't fighting it anywhere. He was like fighting in a plane. Like, <laughs> a plane, an empty void of a world space. Um, and Savo Highway feels like the gameplay representation of those trailers. I've I've seen a lot of people really love this level, though. Um, there's a good where it, you can get a sniper. good co-op. It's a very good co-op level. Yeah, it's a, I'll give it that. If you're playing solo, it's B. If you're playing co-op, it's I'm, A. I'm actually surprised you rated that highly. I was gonna give it a C. Really? Yeah. Uh, there's some section. The problem is, like, if you're not in a vehicle in this level, it sucks. Yeah, um, there's not enough contingency where, like, later games would have just a marine spawn with Warthog and drive up to you. Yeah. If you ever got, like, stranded. I might give it a B. I'm gonna put it in the B to C tier. It has some cool, um, skybox moments, too. The, the cruisers jumping in and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you once you figure out what's going on with the world building, it's like, oh, that and was that was Mombasa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's what's interesting too is um So in Halo 2, they would have done all that like all those reveals and stuff while you're in the middle of getting shot at. But in Halo 3, they figured out, oh wait, we should give them a quiet moment to just drive along this highway where we'll introduce like what's going on with the greater lore. So it's like so much, like I was saying with like um, Sacred Icon and stuff, it's very easy to miss all the interesting lore implications and all this world building that's going on because you're in the middle of getting swarmed by like, you know, 10 by flood. The way, by the way, um, the thumbnails for Halo 3, mysteriously, I can tell <laughs> what fucking level they are. <laughs> because they actually represent like what's in the level and gives you a good <clears throat> vibe for what what actually yeah. goes on uh um, i forget that this is a level is this is this stormgate storm, no storm, storm storm something no stormgate is or is it f floodgate floodgate's the next level so this is yes. storm something because there's like a yeah. thunderstorm going on and you can yeah, see, yeah and like the world design instantly improves it feels like there's more detail um this is the scarab level yes the that's storm. a good Yes. The storm. Yeah. So this is the scarab level. That's a great way to kind of uh Yeah. Uh explain what this level is. Um War door stuff I think is kind of weak in this level. Yeah. They give you a lot of power weapons. See the problem with the corridor sections is that they give you so many power weapons in the other sections. Yeah. That you that can just kind of mop them up in the quarter no sections. To it, for sure. Yeah. So um it ends up being like criminally easy. And then the vehicle stuff is oh it's okay um the problem is that it like we're looking at the problem right now is yeah these are it's just yeah it's just an arena there's not much you can really do with it yeah, uh, and you think you would be able to jump these <clears throat> but that's like yeah. a, these ramps are like a death trap there's um, there's some cool stuff though like the crane and everything yeah. you can walk across a crane to jump into the scarab but i mean the scarab steals the show for this entire level really yeah. you you forget that anything else happens in this in this level yeah, you forget the warehouse section or like yeah. the part at the end with the anti-air gun it's very very forgettable oh yeah the, the anti-air yeah like i said it's fucking <laughs> forgettable uh mongoose introduction i guess I think this is yeah. the first mongoose level and like so and like they up front with the given marines rocket launchers rocket with, yeah. the with the mongoose very smart <laughs> um i got i have to give them credit for that um yeah just as long as they don't blow you up with it it's better um, than savo highway yeah i would it's, say it's so doing definitely the things i like about savo highway but it's a better level so yes yeah <laughs> um no i know about the missile pods i mean if i said if i said sava was b then i have to make this a so an, a good a to b tier 
Yeah. All right. Well, you, see, you said yeah. you said we might not disagree, and then we disagreed on two back to back. This is the part of Halo Three that I tend to forget is even a thing. It, I, like I forget that there's even levels between that. There's not only one, but two <laughs> levels between yeah. Crow's Nest and uh, Floodgate. And yeah, I, and I remember Floodgate for not great reasons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah unfortunately. Uh... Unfortunately, we're about to really hit the shit. Because Halo 3 Flood, oh boy. Which, it exists, which, all right. Which, ironically, chat, we should say, are better in ODST <laughs> than they are in Halo 3. Because they tuned them down. Well, they're like, they're the transformations don't happen as very, yeah. as often. And yeah, they're easier to kill. And um, ODST and they has a and, and they And they swarm more, too. There's just more of them on the field, and it's just so much more fun to fight. Yeah, if you own ODST on MCC, go play Flood Fight at some time. Yeah, because definitely. you will actually was, be surprised by how amazing that mode is. That was actually really fun. Okay. <clears throat> Solid yeah. introduction to a level with the um the arc or the uh where oh, yeah. ship goes to the arc and like the human ships are powered down and then the flood ship shows up and like crashes and it's like it yep. does that thing I like where it, it's the level you just played, but but completely uh, recontextualized. Yeah, yep. um, you get the flamethrower. Like do you, this is the first Bungie game where you get to use the flamethrower against the flood, so that's neat. Um, kind of sells the idea of like how bad the flood getting to Earth is, which is important for a later cutscene. Yeah. Um. The flood in Halo 3 can reanimate dead bodies. I like that. Uh huh. That's a great mechanic. The flood in Halo 3 have the transformer blood types, though. <laughs> and good God, no thank you. <laughs> so you, and it's like they have the Bethesda archetype, too, where it's like you have the warrior hulking one, and you have the, yeah. the rogue uh, fast one, and then you have the mage turret one. <laughs> and it's like, ugh. And they all transform within each other. It would be neat if those, like, if four combat, or like, let's say four or five combat forms came together and formed into one of those things. Yeah. And that way you could control their spawns. So, like, if you're doing a bad job at managing the normal flood, but that also gives you the advantage, like, you can pay attention to what they're doing, and if you see them forming up, you can use a power weapon or a grenade or something and blow them up and then stop it from happening. But it's like, no, they're just enemies, and they just spawn, and they're just not fun. Yeah. Drop pod elites were cool. I love drop pod anything. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, the the elites, the elite allies in this are fun, and um, they're actually pretty good. Uh, they give them appropriate weapons and stuff so they don't immediately get annihilated. Uh, level short. So it's got that going for it as well. <laughs> Mercifully short. <laughs> Something that Halo Halo 2's 343 tier <laughs> levels couldn't manage. Uh More Covenant worse. Yeah, good line. Good line. The vibes in this level were great though. I'll give you that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it it has some really good atmosphere. It's like it's what I liked about the storm but <clears throat> worse because it's flood level. I almost want to say it's like, um, do we give it a D? Oh man, I don't think it's that bad. D to C. See, because if we give if we give it a D, then I have to give Cortana a three four three, and I don't think Cortana is three four three. Well, you can give this level a C, and then give that one a D, and I'll give it a three four three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm way. gonna say this. Is a C. I've heard you say mostly only only say good things, and then you're like D. That okay? The covenant the, or the flood transforming forms definitely really bad. I don't like the way the weapon flows, weapons flow in this level, and um, I think this is where it really starts going hard with the Cortana sequences. 
that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. So Cortana like will interrupt a level and slow walk you, and that oh, kind of yeah. stops for a while and then picks back up in this level <laughs> in in a bad way. Um. There's a lot of stuff I don't like about it, and it just comes down to the flood are kind of bad, and um. The flood are bad, and the the arenas they put them in are usually really bad too. But listen, you gotta you gotta have the uh, the storm before the calm because holy yeah. fuck, we are getting into the <laughs> the, the bangers. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be like back to back bangers. Yeah, right here. Yeah, so the cutscene at the end of um, Floodgate and the start of this level top notch. Ex excellent. Yeah, excellent. So fucking good. The cutscene, the music. Even the writing picks up. Mm -hmm. the, the only oh. writing thing I'd make fun of is Lord Hood kind of being a baby, and he, even he like, yeah. kind of gets his shit together. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, but I mean, fucking half draw being like, I'll glass this entire fucking planet. It's like, yes, yes. That's that's what I want. That's what I want out of my uh, out of my elite, out of my elites. Yeah, the the. The way they do the elites, I like the standoff between the elite, the elite forces and the marine forces. Yeah, yeah. And then Sergeant uh, Johnson and Arbiter like kind of tie that together by trading yeah. weapons. Yeah, and then then yeah, you just get the the descent onto the arc, and it's yeah probably probably the best fucking cutscene out of the out of the bungee halos. Banger introduction to this level. Which once once again, it's your it's your um, silent cartographer, but they ju yeah they just they just amped it up. I mean, obviously it's S tier, uh, and it's and it's also clear like if this if this level was in Halo Two, it would have been broken up into two levels into two missions. But mm -hmm. because it's Halo Three, they actually. You got it all into one continuous level. So it's the best level you've played so far. And it's long and it's great the whole fucking way through. Just does not stop. Like every time you think the level's about to end, it's just like, no, nah, we got another sequence for you. Yeah, great desert level. Um, sniper oh, yeah, that too. That too. Prominent, First time we're seeing deserts in, a, in a Halo uh, game. Prominent ODST presence. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Keeping the ODSTs alive is a fun challenge. I encourage anybody <laughs> to try doing it. Great uh, starter sequence with the open areas and the snipers, and then it turns yeah. into a vehicle level um, that has a lot of great stuff, and then it turns into a tank level that has a lot of great stuff, and then it turns into a corridor level Quarter. that has a great stuff. Yeah. It has a scarab <laughs> boss fight that's a lot of fun because it's got a good arena, yeah. and it ends on a great another great forerunner corridor sequence and a f optional boss fight where, like, that's a really cool because like the brute chieftain wants to one on one you. <laughs> now, it's just a back to back like they nailed it. Um, yeah. With this level. Ship flies in too. Yeah, that's a fun sequence. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's literally the part where it's like, oh, this has to be the end of the level. And it's just like, nope, here's your fucking tank now. That's that's a ha that's that's the halfway point of the level, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah that's what's crazy is uh and it's play you play it solo you play it co-op you play it with two people four people does not fucking matter everyone's gonna have whatever the fuck they want mm -hmm. for pretty much the entire level and it's just great it's weapon just spread. yeah i don't know if i if i wasn't such a halo 2 fanboy this would be like this i would say would be the best uh best bungee level but I think Delta Halo wins out for me just sl just slightly because I like Halo 2 Sandbox more. Even, the, game's even more the people challenging. with blackened hearts who hate everything <laughs> about uh, <laughs> about like Halo 3 have to admit that like this is this, a great level. This, this fucking level smokes. Love trying to keep the ODSTs we, until the tank section when they all die. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we said a single negative thing about that level. <laughs> I don't think there's a single. Ne the only negative thing about that level is a meta thing, which is the terminal on that level establishes. <laughs> um, it has that contradictory lore about the forerunners being not humans, even though everything uh, else says that they are. Oh. Uh, so it's like th if that terminal didn't exist, it would literally be the perfect level. And that's such an <laughs> easy thing to just ignore. <laughs> and then you and go then, into this and then it continues so what what's better than one cartographer level how about two silent cartographer levels yeah and again visually distinct helps yeah um, helps a lot with it because you've got this kind of temperate area and then you've got the snowy area in the back and it's like uh great send off beach level introduction of the spartan laser um you get into the interior uh Good sequences, mm -hmm. corridor stuff, great forerunner usage. Uh, this game has amazing forerunner architecture. Yeah, it's just great stuff to look at. You come back out to the beach, Hornet sequence. Um, I think this is where they really started to work on their flying sequences to try and make them fun. Yeah, yeah, I would say this is probably the first flying sequence that I really enjoyed. Um, outside. I mean, nothing in Halo 2's flying sequences I liked. Mm -hmm. Halo 1's hit or miss. Uh, I would fun, prefer to have a tank. The fun of trying to get the anti-air um, ray. Yeah. Just because it's such a weird <laughs> thing. Yeah. So there's like a fun little mini challenge in there. Um, elite allies make a return yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You've got Once the... again, the the weapon weapon pacing throughout the whole thing is fantastic. They give you everything that you need, what you want. And the it's in another the counter pacing with the chieftain bosses. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, those mini bosses helps break it up. Oh yeah, the two and... scarabs, but it doesn't feel like a. Oh right, that's this level. So mm. once again, it's another level where it's like you think it's over, and then it just keeps going. Yeah, because you've got uh, two scarab fights, you've got hornets and all kinds of vehicle yeah. options, and um, yeah, because you can. I think you can get tanks, and I think you can use warthogs. Yep. Yeah. Um, they give you the whole. This level has the whole suite. Yeah. Uh, for that kind of fighting stuff, and it does everything is diverse and it's paced, and um, you get into that final building, and the floods show up. Yeah, allies. but it's still, it's still, that's, that's the first time where the Flood's actually fun to fight. Mm -hmm. because, because it's a long corridor, but they're able to use, like, their jump mechanics to get to you, but you can also use all the cover to, like, well, protect after, yourself. Right now, they're allies. Oh, right, yeah, 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 the, the ally section, and I forgot this, about it's that. It's this long hallway where there's this series of seven, like, holographic halo rings, and that's so yeah. cool. And you yeah. And you see the damage that's been accrued to... The, to the ones that you've been to yeah and you have the stuff at the end of this with truth and um sergeant johnson and miranda dies and best part miranda dies <laughs> uh arbiter gets his like payoff even though yeah. he doesn't have much going on in this game <laughs> he gets his moment he needed his moment you, you know that famous back-to-back -back shot of arbiter and master chief yeah and uh, then you then you ended out with fighting the flood in a great sequence, that, like you said. Yeah. Um, all around. I mean, this is what it sounds like when we're being fully positive about a level because this is <laughs> this is it. It's and the, to think that this is the follow up act to the to the arc where it was like, wow, this is one of the best Halo levels I've ever played, and it's just like, all right, here's the second one. It's like they knew they knew what the best, and that's what that's why I like about Halo 3's campaign is that. It's clear they took lessons from all the other games that they've made and just poured it into at least two levels, but I would argue the whole campaign. But mm -hmm. like Ark and Covenant back to back, it's just it, it's it's almost like they're flexing. It's just too fucking good. And it once again, another not another level where either you if you're playing it solo or one player, two play like however many players you throw into it. It's still just as much fun, and everybody's gonna get what they want because there's ample ample stuff in the uh, 
this yeah this really is kind of the peak of the franchise i think that's a great oh way of abs it. absolutely yeah like this is um when people are hype about halo this is what yeah what they're into and unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> i remember it's coming from that's that's a halo 2 fanboy saying this is this is the peak of halo right here these mm -hmm. two levels and then you get to Coven, or uh, Cortana. Yeah. It's like they Ooh. heard that people liked high charity <laughs> and said, we can make another level there, but... Do you really want to go back? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why so much of the level has to be the flood flesh material. I, I don't really get that I, making a whole lot of sense. Yeah, I did not like the, uh, the body horror aesthetic. It because uh, it's it it's literally impossible to tell that this is high charity, and it's like okay if the cov if if they've taken it over why is the arena's brighter, like high charity was very dimly lit because it's it's an in, it's an encapsulated, uh, you know it's like an encapsulated uh space station, and then in here it feels like it's just like bright sunlight outside. Why do people hate on Cortana so much? There's a lot of reasons. So firstly, um. You're taking the, the masterpiece of level design that was the high charity sequences in Halo 2 and not using it. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of like, like, okay, I have said previously that the flood is a great level design opportunity to like damage stuff and what have you. This is not the way to go about it. There's way too much fleshy surface. It doesn't look good. Um, it's not fun to fight in because it's the same color as the flood and that might make sense but you don't want that in your level not only okay so not only is it ugly it also makes it difficult to navigate which is funny because this is actually a very linear level mm -hmm. um yeah i so mean like it, getting lost is impressive yeah it's it's impressive because you just get turned around oh yeah there's just the constant and the constant sequences of cortana and grave minds talking to you yeah. where they, they jack the field of view to like 150 and make slow walk you and like shake your screen yeah completely and unnecessary. then and then you have the transforming flood which i think i think that's the nail in the coffin for this level for me well and is... um a lot of just heavy reliance on covenant weapons yeah but I mean, those transforming flood where they can just run away, climb up, up climb up on a wall, transform into the shooting enemy, mm -hmm. and you just have no recourse because the only th the only thing you can use at that range is a carbine. And guess what's really ineffective against those fucking wall climbing enemies? It oh yeah, and you're trying to pick them out on a surface that's the same color Six, as them. Yeah, and there's like three of them. There would be like three or four of them in a single room. And it's just like wow. I I I I didn't even have a chance to kill him because it was it was a fucking it was it was a brute or like a there's you know, sequences a where you get to use the the sword to good effect in this level. Yeah, that doesn't justify it <clears throat> that much in my opinion because I like the library. Um, where's the library? I can't tell what it's fucking icon. It's in <laughs> the library's in B tier. Um. Yeah, no. Most of the level geometries actually cut content from a mission after Floodgate. That's why the engine room is weirdly small. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Because it does look more like the Covenant ship. Yeah, the crash ship. Tile set more than the oh. high charity. So that makes that makes a lot of sense, and that's definitely like another reason why I don't like this level. Because I mean, I love the level design of um High Charity. Yeah, high charity yeah yeah it's it's a shame it's a shame to see what they did to our boy here yeah i really hate to see it and for there's a lot of annoying things um yeah yeah it's it if it was just the aesthetics but the rest of the level like was just banger gameplay and stuff i i'd be able to be able this to survive mission reminds me of a shitty doom mission yeah it's like uh amateur doom wad <laughs> put into a halo level like i'm surprised that bungie made this especially this where they're this peak into their level design um for them to be putting out something like this is 
not great. And to come after the two high, it, it's see that's the problem too is the contrast here. Mm -hmm. To go from the highest point in the franchise, basic arguably to okay, so the I, worst level in the game. So I get the. Here's the problem with the thematics argument every time it comes up because the thematics argument seems to come up every time there's a, a three four three nearish tier level, like um, arbiter stuff. Is mm -hmm. yes, it thematically makes a lot of sense. It's still a not fun environment. There, you can nail thematics and fun at the same time. Example given, high charity nails well, what the if... thematics of what's going on in the story is a flood mission doesn't have any of these pitfalls what if we got to this level right and we found that there was still there was still covenant alive and they were like just they barricaded themselves into like a tiny part of high charity and it was just like under constant assaults and we can like ally with them because of the arbiter and shit that would be an interesting so you can have the whole thing and you can launch a rec rescue mission Cut the surfaces and... down from 90% flood to like 50% flood tiles <coughs> and add in those covenant. Add in a mixture of hostile and friendly covenant. Yeah. So that you get a bit of enemy variety as well. Yeah, you could have like brutes in there and stuff too. Because that's the other problem with this level is that there's no enemy variety. It's just the flood. Yeah, this is, this is D for sure. Again, people think the library is the worst, one of the worst levels ever <laughs> in, in video games of all time, which is an insane thing to say. <laughs> Installation 04. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what can we say? It's like a really short version of Assault on the Control Room in the Maw. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it looks nice. It's nice. Um, oh, it's not this yeah. part, but like the opening part in the um, the icy area. Very yeah. nice looking area. I lo I loved all the writing related to the arc and like the technical aspects of the arc and the Halo rings. It it does a lot of cool world building and stuff, and like it's really awesome to see a, a Halo ring actually being constructed and stuff. I think that was an awesome idea, mm -hmm. and I think they executed it well. Especially when you see this thing, when you see the Halo actually launching into space. So that was such a fucking cool moment. And especially after Cortana, the reprieve, even though you're still fighting just the Flood. Um, yeah. It's such a much, it's a much better experience <laughs> at least on this have, level. At least we have visual variety again on this level. Yeah, you can actually pick them out and uh, shoot them. Yeah. And there's, there's some fun parts to fighting it um definitely a level that suffers a lot when you're playing it solo though co-op this level's a lot better yeah solo uh so it's you, rough you get to the control room there's guilty spark boss fight um <laughs> sergeant johnson dies that's, a, that's pretty good um you are for you are forerunner yeah a uh, great reveal makes a lot of sense um I mean, for, guilty, those who guilty spark for those who weren't paying attention yeah guilty spark <laughs> is a character in this game by the way i know it's it's very easy to miss <laughs> uh, he does have stuff going on mostly just related to finding out the ring exists and wanting it back and uh yeah he's not really the antagonist of the game but that's the weird thing is the prophet of truth is the, definitely the game's antagonist and he's been dead dead <laughs> so well well now we have the grave mind yeah, and then which is and like, then we kill the grave mind, kind of when we blow up high charity, we slow him down at least. And then we, and then the antagonist is three four three guilty spark. It's very yeah. Um, and and then and then the the final antagonist is um, the halo about to blow up. Yeah, I mean it's not <laughs> it's not doing too hot in the <laughs> department, which is a very cool sequence visually speaking, gameplay wise. Eh. Yeah, gameplay not, wise, it's just it's not there. not as big of a fan. Yeah, and and it's it's probably the weakest part when you're co-op is uh, the drive because one person gets to drive and the other person's going to be sitting in the uh, in the turret. Yeah, there's not a lot to do for the the turret person. 
Yeah, you're just shooting at enemies Be that and, aren't. And that's because at that point, it's just you. you're fighting Flood and Sentinels. So yeah, if, if Sentinels had been buffed up as enemies, which why bother? There's one level where Sentinels could have been used as enemies, which is this one. Then that would be one thing. If Flood were f ever fun to fight with vehicles, that would be one thing. Yeah, I think I think this level for me gets propped up a lot from just visual spectacle. Seeing the incomplete Halo is mm. really, really fucking cool. And um, when, when you take it in consideration that this was supposed to be the last Halo game, at least for Bungie, it's it feels like an appropriate send off. Yeah, it's a it's a decent trilogy ender. Yeah. For something that was never kind of meant to be a trilogy. Yeah. Uh, so, if I had to rate it... C to B? B? I, I would say it's a B. I'll, I'll throw it in the C to B tier, just so it mm -hmm. evens out. Okay, we're building a nice little pyramid here. <laughs> Alright. Now is your time to ask chat if you're late joining what 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 tier are you level got <laughs> it's it's getting hard to read yeah it doesn't help the thumbnails suck for um, three for three two of the games yeah. yeah that's even even the thumbnail for uh for that level is really fucking cool that yeah that's, that's the really thing. like i said really the, the, the thumbnails accurately capture three. what happens in those levels yeah isn't there a chopper on Heroic 2? There, I know there's a ghost in that sequence that you can get. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Arbiter can drive the ghost, I guess. Because yeah. the first time, the problem is the first time you're playing, you don't realize that there's not going to be much to do as the gunner. Yeah. If you're going Oh, online. yeah, that's, that's who. What did the library get? The library is here in B tier. ODST or Reach next? We're doing release order, so it's going to be ODST next. ODST is right. kind of a complicated one. This one, this one's going to be very complicated for me because I don't remember much about ODST. That's cool because I have tried multiple times to make a video about it, so I know a lot about it. <laughs> Ghost is part of Vidmaster. Don't remember how it worked. Vidmaster, yeah, I was going to mention the Vidmaster stuff. I think you have to play Lasso with four players and get through the sequence without anybody dying. I literally have to pull up a guide here to figure out what uh, to do what the the levels oh. of <laughs> I mean I can tell you so the premise of ODST is like well I remember the premise and everything it's just it's just the individual levels that I always get mixed up on okay so it's, it's also a lot shorter than I remember it being uh, final cutscene of Halo 3 um you got the Spartan 117 memorial I don't know it's a decent ending, but it's clear they were leaving it open for another studio to take over. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was really I, I was really annoyed with um with Johnson's death. That it wasn't the fact that Johnson died, it was just how he died and that fucking goofy ass scream they gave him yeah like the dude survived halo the first halo being blown up on him it took, like, a, well, it took a forerunner artificial intelligence to kill him <laughs> yeah but it was and that's the other problem too is like he got killed by guilty spark the fucking light bulb Yeah, that, that kind of soured me. So by the time I got to the end of um, the end cuts, you know, I was just like, wow, all right, that's that's done. Yeah, you have to Master Chief's fate is locked to legendary. I guess that's neat. Did two have a legendary scene? No, I don't. Th um, it, it does. It does. It has. But it's kind of stupid. It's just Cortana talking to Gravemind. Oh, yeah. OK, so one yeah. is like a joke. Two is like lead up to Halo three and yeah it's just three, more more three has more like a confirmation up. of master chief's fate yeah the shield world and everything 
Is the shield world in Halo 3's? I thought that I they think were so. just drifting in space. No, 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 no. They show... I'm pretty sure they show him going towards the shield wall, the shield world. Now you have me doubting. Chat's going to have to confirm that. I'm almost positive they showed him drifting towards the world. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so then you have ODST. Yes, ODST had an amazing marketing campaign. I mean, so did 3, but... Yeah. ODST had a crazy marketing campaign. And someone did ask me to mention when I first posted the stream that ODST was panned at the time. People did not... Um, like, game reviewers and stuff did not like this game when it came out. It's Halo 3, but worse. Yeah. And it's short. And were they charging $60 for it? I I thought... Okay, I do know that Master Chief... Uh, when Halo CEA came out, the anniversary, it was only $40. People say that that yeah. was a $60 remaster, and that's not true. Because the reason I remember this is because... Because it was only $40, I was able to get something else. <laughs> you have a memory directly tied to it. It was sixty dollars with all the Halo Three yeah, DLC, I think that was, right? That was it. it came with Mythic Edition, so you right. could get all the map packs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's I, th I think that's how I got. Well, and the, and the map remember, packs. it came with the Halo Reach beta access. That was another thing that ODST came with. Oh, right. But yeah, so basically, it was like, um, I think it's fair as a forty dollar game. And um, then you get the twenty dollars of uh, in, in the map packs and the reach the beta packs. access. Yeah. Because I mean, it was a two disc game. Because you had Mythic Edition as the second disc. Yeah, yeah. I, it wasn't just a map pack. It was like straight up um, multiplayer with everything. Yeah. It was it was a, it was a standalone disc that you would just put in and play uh, Halo 3's multiplayer with everything in it. I don't think how's ODST on MCC? I think it, it's pretty functional. It's super cheap. Um, it's like five dollars, and um, they didn't enhance it. I think the biggest enhancement is that you can have anti-aliasing now. <laughs> like that, literally that single option uh, completely canceled the original ODST video. Wait, what? My ODST video uh, was... The reason I made the Morrowind video was that I was going to make an ODST video. That's why I'd been covering shooters. And then they announced MCC for PC and that, like, scrapped the entire uh -huh. <laughs> So you're like, yeah, I'm just going to wait for uh, wait for that to come out then. Also, first game with Firefight. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, so opening cutscene to Halo 3 ODST is... Fantastic. Yeah, pretty good. Um, sets up all the characters, sets up where this is taking oh, place yeah. and what the conflict is. And um, This is the first Halo game where we have like actual characters now. Where the other Halos, like Halo 3 tried to make Miranda and Johnson into characters, but they were pretty set in stone already. This one, blank slates. All right, we're, all these characters are going to have like actual personalities and shit. And yeah, it's the, the the whole campaign is about not just their adventures and stuff, but them as, as them as people. And yeah, I know they all have different um, personalities. I'm very aware that three four three removed all the um, Destiny posters from ODST. <laughs> um, drop sequence really good so good um i love odsts like they're such a cool con <laughs> they're such a cool concept and, and the drop pod sequence is really good um actual characters who were half of the firefly cast yep firefly mm -hmm. was a big uh thing for bungie big motivator r.i.p taken from us too soon Man, you want to talk, you want to talk about something getting done dirty? Yeah. <laughs> or or fire. Post fire. fucking poster child for that. So 
So, um, yeah, the way ODST works is you get dropped in, you wake up six hours later, uh, because you crash land, and, um, you hop into Mombasa's streets night. But what's different is you keep coming back to this level. So you'll play this level for a bit and then you'll find something that re reminds you of something and then you play like it's a normal Halo level and then you come yeah. back to this level and go to the next one, find the next memory thing and all that. So Mombasa Streets is an interesting and complicated level to put into this tier list because there's literally no other level that's like it in this game. In yeah. This entire um, franchise. Yeah, until like Infinite. Infinite has an open world level. Mm, true, yeah, yeah. So, um, people rag on it. I actually really like this I level. love it. It's, it's, it, it, I didn't even know we were going to be rating it as a level. If we're rating it as a level, it's fucking S tier. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing <laughs> premise for a level. Atmos the atmosphere is great. The, the city oh. design is great. They put so much work into the assets that they use and so there's so many different things that you have to take in consideration first off this is like bungie's first attempt at making an open world type level right yeah not only that it's for like an expansion basically between two games yeah I mean, and you can't the amount of odst being lazy when it's got this level yeah and like the amount of effort that went into this not only in just the level design and the enemy placement and how like the the level changes as you play as you progress through the game like yeah there's new more spawns will happen there's more elements um there's I, there's secrets to unlock there's all the all yeah, the so there's i could i could go on about this level for a long time um, <laughs> they added the visor mode and the visor mode looks cool um yeah but it's not it's not detective vision so there's no reason to always keep it on yeah um unless your tv is just very dark yeah which, which was my problem when i originally played this game i was playing it on a fucking crt hooked up with coaxial there's a map which is neat um yeah what's interesting is the superintendent will change stuff about this area in order to guide you to your objectives so for uh -huh. instance uh, <clears throat> street signs road indicators um atms like the superintendent just, just so keeps... such a brilliant idea like it, a an ai utilized well yeah it very smart um there's the audiobook story that you can yeah, do which is, and which is actually that. good and you have a reason to look for it because it unlocks the weapons caches that'll get you like yeah you get power weapons and mongooses and and you can and on those are on repeat playthroughs too so you can um you, you only have to do it once and then on your repeat playthroughs you'll have access to all the caches and it and it teaches you like it recontextualizes the ending of the game so it's just like oh okay yeah it explains like, like, oh you know it changes the end it changes the yeah, ending it, too it changes it changes stuff it changes the scenes <clears throat> where you interact with engineers and it changes yeah. the scene with the cop and yeah that's just that like that's such a cool thing it gives it a little bit of it gives it some replay value uh gives it some fun to explore um and then you have it just as a combat arena because this is used this area is used for other missions that um that geometry yeah. stays and so it's useful in both the mission where it, it takes place there but also in the broader mombasa streets mission which is and what's cool too is like the mombasa streets um it's really more designed to be a stealth sequence while the other levels give you that classic halo 3 just like balls to yeah, the walls action because and I get, but it's it, health system kind of encourages a more intelligent approach rather than, yeah. than just running gunning uh the health beep indicator is probably the only thing i would change about the way the gameplay <laughs> works uh but Otherwise, like, yeah, there's a lot of incentive to try and, like, outmaneuver enemies rather than just fighting everybody. Even though yeah. resources, like, resource management's not really a challenge in ODST. ODST's yeah. really easy, sadly. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the first, first Halo that I beat on Legendary. And I retro, retroactively went back and did uh, Halo 3. 
The NPC guides you with signs. Yes, um, if you have an active objective, then road signs, advertisements, uh, screens of any kind, because there's like lights on the road that you can see in the picture. Um, barricades. The AI does a lot of things. The literal like city AI does a lot of things to draw your attention to stuff. Yeah, it's 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 well designed, and it's, it's one of the music level too. Oh it's got, god, it's got so oh, much the, good music. Like half the, the soundtrack the music. is just this level. Yeah, the music and the um, just the vibe and the tone of it is just so and, so and the, good, the so aesthetic. distinct. The skybox with like the uh, all the smoke from the yeah. burning buildings. It's and, and the tall I buildings cannot and the rain. think. I literally cannot think of another game that nails this sort of aesthetic. It is literally in a league of its own. Like, there's no way this isn't an S tier level. No, no. And is and even though it's a large level, you can start to learn it. Like, if you play the game long enough, mm -hmm. you start to learn like where everything is. So it's like you don't even really you, you can navigate without the without the map after a point if you played it enough and there's some which is which is the too. hallmark of a good like a well-designed open world because uh some like ghosts and mongooses start to show up yeah about halfway through the game so it's not even like you have to run everywhere because if you have to backtrack through an area you, you'll have access to vehicles at that point Uh, yeah, the gameplay balance does change a bit. Brutes are harder to kill in ODST than they are in three. I like almost the same with hunters and stuff. I feel like, I feel like they're more fun to fight in ODST than they are in Halo Three. Yeah, because 3. they're they're more of a challenge. Yeah, but the, and so because they're more of a challenge, they don't throw a million of them at you. It's like one, yeah, they one really, or two. They nailed the the premise of. Uh, the ODST is being more fragile than the Master Chief and appropriately changing the gameplay to represent that. Yeah. Like, even even a couple of grunts can really fuck you up. Even, even if you survive, it's like, oh no, I only have like one bar of health left. And that becomes a real consideration because you just have to then go out and find more health somewhere. Yeah, New Mombasa, just amazing city. Because it's it's a kind of cyberpunk. Man, it it breaks my heart, breaks my heart to see Bungie make something like that, and then they go and make Destiny. <laughs> I know, uh, great tragedy. Like, imagine if they did ODST two, just mm -hmm. same fucking thing, just bigger and better. You know, they're more uh. fun to fight than elites. Yes and no. I feel like the best thing would have been a mixture of elites and Halo 3 style brutes. Yeah. All right, so Tayari Plaza, he uh, it's a uh, Buck's mission, Buck's first mission. Yeah. So it's um, Yeah, it's right after right after the uh the ship yeah, jumps. Yeah, like the opening the opening cutscene is like the slip space jump and then you see his pod come in. Yeah. Um uh. I don't see. I, I, the, this, this is gonna be a problem. I don't remember much about this mission. All right, so um, it is just a lot of fighting. Um, you kind of it's a good mission for getting used to Halo uh, ODST's pace of combat. Um, there's kind of an opening part where you fight a phantom that's dropping off troops, and then you go through. This is. Do you remember the part where Buck finds all the elite corpses? This is that's this is kind of a yeah. weird story thing where like apparently yeah, yeah. They, they started killing the elites right after they jumped, which is kind of not true. It's kind of just a way for them to hand wave away the fact that elites aren't enemies in this game, which was such a weird decision that they couldn't have done. Oh before. right, right, right. And you're you're trying to get to what's her face's drop pod. Yeah, I feel like it, something I would have loved to see in ODST was more like actual elite enemies bringing them back and mm -hmm. was, you know it was a missed opportunity because they made sure to prominently show off that they were bringing them back with reach 
See, I remember a bunch of the other levels. I don't remember this one all that well. I remember parts of it. This so one's, this one's simple but sweet, and it's a lot of what what I like in an early part of a Halo game is just front squad plus leader unit, and you know, yeah, uh, simple ja simple jackal usage. You know, there'll be a sniper tower in the middle of a street that you gotta take out. Um, Wait, is is there a vehicle sequence in this level? Not this level. Okay, all right. I'm thinking of the other one then. Yeah. So then you get there's like a plaza and there's jackal snipers in like this bull arena, and once you yeah. take everything out, like the gates open and hunters come through, and you get like forced to backtrack into the plaza to fight them there. Just because the hunters are a bit more of a menace in ODST, just because you can't jump oh, over yeah. them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm. I think I'm gonna have to give this level a B. I think that's a that's a fair rating for it. It's a slow start. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's where Sierra One One Seven is, and I'd say it's like kind of a kind of a similar level. Yeah, there's a reason I don't remember much about it. Like I'm I'm looking ahead at some of the other levels, and I'm like, yeah, I remember that one exactly. I remember yeah, you, that you, one. You probably remember this one, aka we're sorry for Savo Highway, and we're gonna make it up to you. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> this level is just Savo Highway, but better. Yeah, th this one's this one's a pretty solid banger. There's parts of it that get a little bit frustrating, um, most, but it usually comes down to you just got to get used to playing as an ODST. You're not a Spartan. You got to remember mm -hmm. that. Even though you do start with the Spartan laser. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another weird decision, but, you know, go for it. Um, yeah. Vehicle level, but the vehicles are kind of traps on higher difficulties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. But, there, yeah, there's a lot of solid stuff. I like the part where you chase the, the ghost messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, Banshees show up as enemies. Wraiths, the, the turrets. Um... Yeah, they they basically throw the whole thing at you. Yeah, it's it's pretty decently paced at yeah keeping the vehicle um, pacing going, and then you have you have that part with like the observation deck and the safari um, where you can like restock on power weapons, and uh, you blow through that, and then you get to the big bridge with the elevator collapse. Yeah. Yeah, oh right, this level has that, that whole sequence. Yeah, so the elevator collapses and it like kills a bunch of the marines that are in the next area. Yeah. And kicks up dust everywhere. And um, you get which, to where Which is a really, really fucking cool visual scene. Mm -hmm. And nails what Savo Highway was about better, just because you get to actually yeah. get to see what happened. Where yeah. Where Savo Highway is just kind of the aftermath. Um... What did we give Savo Highway? It was a... It was a um, I think it was like between a C, C and a B, and right? Yeah, I mean... This is like A to B. I would... Definitely. Oh, it's between an A and a B for me. I'm gonna say... B? Only because... Um, playing this level solo is not nearly as good as playing a co-op. If you're playing this co-op, this level is so fucking good. But, um, yeah, playing it solo, it loses, it loses a decent amount of... This is, uh, Dutch's level. If you want to stand Cortana, you have to be here. We gave a long list of reasons of, of problems with it. Remember, you're going back to Mombasa streets between these missions. Nice. Yeah. O always a great ca uh, palette cleanser. Uh, I forget the name of this level, but it's uh, Mickey's first level. This is... Kazingo Boulevard? Yes. Okay. So, um... You start with a rocket launcher on this mission, and there's like a fun sequence where a tank is backing up and fighting. And uh, oh, this level! Oh, I yeah. I like this level a lot. It's, so it's a tank level, um, yeah, which is pretty good. Uh, appropriately uses the urban environment, yeah, to uh, yeah, 
So this is this is a level where once again playing co-op, um, you can have the pe like some people in the vehicles, and then other people can be on foot, and it's actually fun for both both parties yeah, because of the way the weapon um, progress and, goes. Yeah, the way the weapons the weapons work, and also the way the levels are laid out, and you can have like interesting situations where the vehicle is providing cover to the people on foot and then it swaps where the people on foot will be providing cover for the vehicles and it's just kind of this back and forth it's a, re a really interesting take on a vehicle level that uh we really just haven't seen in any halo game as far as i can as far as i can tell now i, I really like this level a lot this is the one that i was confusing um the uh, plaza one for yeah because they're both like in the city during the day levels, and that kind of yeah. that kind of stops after a while. I'm gonna say A tier. Yeah, I'm gonna say A as well. Very, very good. And then we then we get to it, and we get to the next one. O and I base. Oh. <laughs> yeah, here's a mission. The, I mean, you might as you might as well just put it into S tier already. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it, it picks up after where the last one left off with Mickey and Dutch being together. I think the playable character is Dutch for this one. Um, interesting that you think it's S tier. I actually think there's other missions in this game that are S tier. So I, I'm really? Little, yeah, I'm apprehensive about giving it to this one just because I don't want to be. I don't want to let my I love well, this game. Well, I think ODST I might have it. like two two s tiers honestly yeah but um two s and i mean this this is high a's. actually actually might even, might even be three s's <laughs> yeah i mean the but, latter half I of mean, this game just picks up like yeah 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 when, once you but i mean this here, you're in the solid part of this game this this level's my favorite in odst so i got i gotta give this one the s yeah you got the bridge sequence um which is pretty good and um you get into like fighting through the plaza and interior you're fighting up the stairs, which is a great firefight map, by the way. That's yeah. Of, this is one of my favorite firefight maps, too. That's kind of what I like about this game, is that it is it will reuse areas appropriately uh, in firefight. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, firefight wasn't just a chance for them to shoehorn in some, like, fucking horde defense mode. They really designed those uh, those arenas to be well, uh, well used. Yeah. Because so usually, if usually I those those sequences were in campaigns defense sequences anyway so the arena was already built to facilitate it chat if you're gonna it, play flood firefight uh the new mode um try it on this map we got to like a million points in two hours <laughs> playing playing it uh we literally wouldn't have died if i didn't start doing a gimmick <laughs> But how wait how many how many ghosts did we have at the end i think we had like 22 no we had 26 ghosts parked up at spawn <laughs> <laughs> and i only i i have ran down the life counter like collecting all the ghosts yeah it was we had we had to end it it was not going to end any other way it was 3 a.m and it was a blast <laughs> oh that was yeah that was so much fucking fun Flood Firefight's awesome. Find somebody to play it with. Um, yeah. Yeah, S tier. You get into the building, there's the defense sequence, but it's not a shitty defense sequence like the yeah. other ones in this series. Um, and then you get to the rooftop. The rooftop's a... I think there's Spec Op Brutes up there and the Chieftain. Mm. Yeah. And uh, big story implications for what's going on. Because like um, you're finding out about like your squad's original mission, and they're trying to destroy the superintendent. And something I only figured out just now is, um, you know, the hole that they fly the Phantom into in Data Hive to pick up everybody. Yeah, that was the hole that was created by the bomb in this mission. Oh. Yeah, I only just now picked up that that's what was going on. <laughs> oh. Because it's like, why is the superintendent's cave exposed? Oh, because the ONI base was built on top of it. Yeah. Speaking of huh. banger missions. It's ONI, excuse me.
I think this mission um, heavily inspired New Alexandria. Yes, uh, with without a question, without a without a doubt. Yeah. So, oh man, oh, this is such a good level. <laughs> yeah, the song for this mission is amazing. It's probably <laughs> one of my favorite uh, music tracks from the album. Man, oh, this is such a it's just not... such a good on foot level. Yeah, so you play as Romeo, so you start with the sniper. Um, you get a lot of on foot action. Um, fighting banshees isn't horrible in this game. Yeah. Uh, appropriate use out use of like sniper enemies, and then you get the defeat. The, another amazing de defense sequence at the end, where you're defending. I don't phantoms and. You know, I actually don't. I actually don't like that defense sequence all that much. Um, it's very easy to run out of ammunition up there, especially on higher difficulties if you're playing co-op. I think that Somebody... helps with it. It it really. Um... Yeah, but the problem is, is that you don't get anything to supplement that. My friend and I were doing a co-op, and we just ran out of ammo. And we're like, I guess we got to restart because you... we literally have oh. nothing. Were you breaking off the missile turrets? Because those are empty. Yeah. Yeah, no, we broke off the missile turrets, or or a brute would come by with his brute hammer and fucking knock it off for us, so then we would well, see, lose it. My experience has always been that it's paced right, where those get destroyed at, like, the right time, so that you're just running out by the time you get to the final sequence, Ass which is amazing. Assuming, it's just this... assuming everybody's good enough to do it. We were doing it on Legendary, and it was just two of us, so... Yeah, I played it solo on Legendary, and it was paced perfectly. Yeah. And then... The ending of this level is amazing, where this phantom shows up, and it's just a hard cut straight to the cutscene. Yeah. And you got this great sequence of the squad fighting a brute chieftain, and it's like, holy shit. Because it really, like I said <laughs> with the other stuff, it really makes the previous games better, because it's like, Master Chief can one-on-one -on -one brute chieftains, and yeah. you see this entire squad struggle to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great to have a um to have a moment where not only does it context like contextualize what's going on here and the characters that are you're playing as and validate what your experience has been so far it also retroactively makes your experience with the previous games better because it doesn't sh it doesn't shit on the master chief or anything it just makes him look even more fucking powerful and it validates your experiences in those games more it's it's just it, this see because because then you get to halo 4 and 5 where they start doing shit that just completely shits on previous games. It's just like, oh, it's like, like the fucking Hunters in Halo and fucking Spartan Ops. Just, no, uh, what, what were you doing? Just... Chat. Legendary is co-op difficulty. What, in this game? Uh, in or, all uh, the Halo games. Heroics, yeah. are, Heroics the good solo difficulty. Solo, and yeah. Nor uh, Legendary's co-op difficulty, if both players can yeah. go Heroic. The only game where i might disagree with that is halo 2 maybe yeah and that's because of the co-op spawn rule yeah because you're getting um, you're getting opted into playing on iron and not a lot of people yeah. like to do that yeah but other than that yeah you, you got to put it on legendary when you're playing with another player unless but, that other player is like basically just a warm body yeah like, like this it, is their it, first time playing the shooter yeah you then you can turn it down for their benefit yeah. And just, like, handicap yourself some way. I'm putting this S tier. Uh, I'm gonna have to say A for me. Alright. So, it's... Good balance. It's that It's that last sequence. I'm just... I don't know. I, I've had more bad experiences with that last sequence than good experiences. And then we have the... Uh, one where they try to take a train out and... Turns out all the lines are busted. This is this level I literally have no memory of. It is the one I remember the, the cutscene. The beginning cutscene, and that is it. Uh, uh so most of the squad is together at this point, and um and I, Romeo I, was I injured I in the fight against need. the Brute Chieftain, and they're trying to get like a phantom. And so you're escorting the phantom out, and this has the scarab boss fight for ODST. Mm, phantom. 
It is it is kind of a, a mid mission. I I, Do you remember I all literally the engineer hives need... that you like blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that, oh, okay. This it's mission. this mission. And and what's her face is like, you haven't been killing all those engineers, have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. All right, I remember this mission now. It's uh not my favorite mission, to be sure. It's still it's still good though. I, I like still more, really I like, like it. I like having more fodder for the nighttime city stuff. Yeah. Um is another another mission that's really fun co op. Yeah, and you got the squad uh dynamics playing up and Yeah. Um they give you ample banshees to make sure that you don't have too many issues with uh Yep. I would give it damaged. a B. I, I would give it a B. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair rating. There's not much there's not much to say about it. <laughs> You'll notice with ODST they're um <laughs> not... it skews pretty high. <laughs> it's almost like it's a really good game. <laughs> Data Hive. Uh, the rookie's first kind of real mission. Yeah. Um. First, like it's kind of just the corridor shooter mission for this game too. Yeah. Uh, I remember this arena though. Yeah, the drone one. Mm hmm. Yeah, prolific like drone sequence. I, the drones aren't terrible in that part, which is kind of amazing. Um, I think the layout of this area is interesting. You have the police part, uh, the yeah. police guy that's kind of interesting. A lot of like CQB action, and um, if you do the audio log stuff, then you get the payoff with the cop. Yep. Uh, pretty good shotgun mission. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a lot of a lot of long corridors though is the problem. And I yeah, and I think it suffers in co-op. So like the other missions are yes. great in co-op. I think yeah. this is a great solo mission. Yeah, so this was the mission. So like my friend, the friend that I was playing with, um, he's insanely good at Halo. Like he can go up against uh fucking like MLG players and hold his own. So in this level he literally killed everything before I could. I think at the end, he had like three or four times the amount of kills that I had. Because it's just whoever's in front, whoever's lead. Yeah. Like, if they're good enough, they just annihilate everything. Yeah, it's definitely um, a, a better solo mission. Yeah. Which is Yeah, solo... Shame. Yeah, solo... Yeah, which is funny because it's, it's a level that... It was a game that was designed for... Uh, and build for co-op like mm. you know the fucking the whole the, the whole, whole squad premise, yeah yeah ah uh, somewhere between b and a for me well, is it better than the last one i think it's the same <laughs> So what I say, the last one was B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna give this one a B as well. All right, I'm giving it an A. Have you talked about the weapons in these games, or is that another stream? Uh, we've been on and off with talking about weapons. When we're talking about kind of the way that the games are generally, then yes, ODST is like three's weapon design. But the SMG has been improved, and the pistols yeah. been improved, and the battle rifle's gone. Basically, uh, it's just Halo 3, but better. Yeah, I think that's a pretty fair assessment, because there's minor <laughs> tweaks to the enemies that improve them over 3. Yeah. Uh, we've got one mission um, of ODST left. Which... Then it's... <laughs> is a banger. <laughs> it's it's the it's the third s tier yeah in a game of bangers this is uh another well. one 
You have battle rifle and firefight. You have battle rifle and firefight now. I'm pretty sure that's a uh, MCC thing. But uh, so vehicle mission, um, entire squads together escorting an elephant, but the elephant's not too bad on its own. Yeah. Turns into a tank mission. Great atmosphere. Yes. The sun is rising. You're trying to get out of the city. The city's the skybox. Um, you got like the scarabs coming out of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> you have the covenant ships that start showing up and glassing the city, which is like an amazing, yeah, just visual sequence. Um, good co-op mission. People have stuff to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Plenty of plenty of opportunity to work together, or everybody just grabs their own vehicle and just however you want to play it. And then you end on such a good fucking defense. Yeah, it's like a, it's like set, trying to. This game is trying to sell you a firefight. Yeah, yes. And it's like it's <laughs> one that... of the best firefight maps too. Yeah. Um, is that that final area and um. Like people, people criticize games, some especially shooters, where it's like you walk into an arena and it's like, ah, oh, this is this is a defense section. Mm -hmm. But like you walk into there, you get that feeling, and then you are that 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 feeling goes away because it's just such a good fucking defense sequence. Yeah, I wouldn't. I I would think this sequence would be worse if it was like, well, we're going a hundred miles per hour down the high. No. I think the fact that it is like such a slow rolling sequence. And yeah. Like, you see the cities getting glassed and scarabs are showing up and it's like, can we get the fuck out of here faster, please? <laughs> <laughs> nope. She they're literally driving a garbage truck. Yeah, so I think I think the speed It's is it's just done right. intentionally. Yeah, I mean S S tier all the and, fucking uh, way. Banger song. The finale. Yep. And a good good send off to a to a great campaign. Ending cutscenes great. Mm -hmm. It ties things together well too. Yeah. Like it fits in perfectly with Halo 2 and Halo 3. Yeah. Well, not perfectly. There's some more stuff, but it's imp dude, it, ODST is such a fucking impressive game. Just in so many ways you look at it. It's just like it does not seem like it should have been this good. The de the deck was stacked so much against uh, Bungie. Its bad levels are mid compared to a lot of other Halo <laughs> levels. Yeah. Which is what's crazy. Yeah. And I wonder how Reach is going to skew things. Ooh. Oh, boy. So, yeah, ODST. Uh, Patrician tier for sure. I remember when I originally played it, I was, it wasn't that I was unimpressed. I was just kind of, I, I didn't really know what to make of it at the time, but then I played it again and I was like, no, that's, it's, it's actually pretty good. And then I, like, I just kept playing it over and over. And after like the fourth time, I was like, holy shit, this, this is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> uh, Buck's second level was the Banshee mission. And, uh, what do you think of the squad? Um, I liked it. I, I thought they were all pretty good, pretty solid characters and stuff. I mean, like I was saying, comparing it to Halo 3's characters and stuff, it's practically night Where and day. Where are we going? To war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you got a, you got a very good, strong lead with uh, Nathan Fillion and everything. Mm-hmm. You got romance, He's, and you got sarcasm. And, uh, yeah. You got quippy lines that aren't obnoxious. They're actually funny. There's good moments of, like, levity. And it really does feel like they are veterans of this war. Yeah. Definitely. Great stuff. And we'll never see it again. I know that's just a shame too because it's like how do you in a new intellectual property do um 
do another ODST. Yeah, another that's game like ODST. Yeah, that's the thing too. It's it's the context of which that game existed. I I don't know. I really don't know how you do something like that. It's, it's the context. It's the contrast from the other games. All yeah, right, Halo. That that era of Bungie felt like that was like they were on top of their fucking game. I know it's such a shame that it's it like got and that squandered. that came out was it? It came out like what a year? Or yeah, and then Reach was 2010. Yeah, so it came out like a year and a half or so after Halo Three dropped out. So Halo Three is at its fucking peak at that point. Like, Forge is out. Everybody is just just going wild with that fucking game. And then they drop something like this on top of it all. It's like, damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> god damn. We will and all then, aspire to have a streak as legendary as Bungie managed to have between Halo 2 and Halo Reach. Like, pe people say Call of Duty killed Halo, but no. It it was the fact that Bungie just, they there was no way. There was no way they could do another banger after that. I know people love Halo Reach, and it's almost always because it was their first Halo. But let me tell you, Halo 2 and Halo 3 at its peak was something truly to behold. I was there for Halo Reach. I was there for the whole fucking thing. Never again would we see something like 2009 Halo 3 was it. It just, it just had to be there. It had to be there. All right, Halo Reach. Um, Interesting game, to say the least. So Fall of Reach was a book. And mm -hmm. Halo Reach, I think, retconned a lot of that. I, I don't think they're incompatible. I just think <clears> that, like, Reach wanted to do the, the Reach thing, which they had been alluding to for so long. That it, it was just big deal. Um, and so this was Bungie's send-off game. Uh, this is the last stuff that they would be doing before handing things over to 343, which I think was known already at the time that that's how yeah. things were going to go. So what do, you, what do you think of the new MCC armors? Uh turn them off. <laughs> so and, and if I recall correctly, Halo Reach wasn't even like Bungie got roped into doing that. Yeah, they had to make two more games after three. Yeah. And so those ended up being ODST and Reach, which talk about your limitations <laughs> being making you like stronger. <laughs> there's just such an insane step up from three to reach in terms of like uh fidelity and design but at the same time i feel like their reach just doesn't have the bangers that they've yeah. been making up to this point reach felt like so reach felt like a test bed for destiny and on top of which, it really felt like they were phoning it in, especially on the level design and the campaign design. Because I think they were trying to go stronger on multiplayer. Uh, <laughs> if they were trying to, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But those fucking levels in Halo Reach multiplayer are fucking abysmal. Those are the worst fucking levels that Halo... And Halo 3's multiplayer levels were not that great to begin with, but Halo Reach whoa there's like two levels that i would say are playable and that's um oni sword base it was the fucking beta levels yeah <laughs> the, the beta levels got, were the ones they got feedback on the only ones that were playable the rest of them were so like you don't even fucking they had like voting right they had map voting back then and almost nothing would ever win aside from those maps And those are the people who who were enjoy presumably enjoying the multiplayer, which I was not. Mostly because of armor abilities, but so neat then... thing about Reach is um, your multiplayer character is in the single player. That was that I liked. That was really cool. 
very very neat detail gives you a lot of personal like noble six has a lot of personalization for how he appears i always dress him up as a yeah. ST because just because i'm such a fan of that game but like um banger campaign but not yeah no I banger missions i think yeah just going back to the character thing though i felt a, an attachment to my character in a way that i never felt attached to any other character except for maybe the rookie yeah personalization helps a lot seeing your character yeah in scenes and yeah um they're voiced but they don't have much to say yeah which is a nice thing man or woman of few words uh yeah so um, I forget what this level's even called. I forget what these levels are called, too. Um, even despite the, how many times I I actually played these, because, uh, I, I don't know if yeah, you, I... people, people tend to leave out the fact that Reach had that, those challenges to get credits. And so, oh, right, yeah. Like, they were very early to, like, the battle pass thing, but it was so much more innocent back then. Uh, Winter I, Contingency. I think three four three's worst. De I thought that was the cutscene level's name. Uh, I think three four three's worst decision was using Reach as a design base instead of three. The whole point of Reach's design was to be different and experimental. Um, yes, but four does a lot of things different from Reach that also kind of kills it. So this level, um, so you have the introduction to Noble Six at the, their their base. And you get the cutscene, and it's like introduces all the characters, and then you have the Falcon ride in uh, to this area, and like oh, I'm sorry, wait, oh yeah, 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 in. yeah. Noble Actual is the cinematic cutscene. Then it goes, then this is Winter Contingency. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, yeah. So, visually, I like this level a lot. Yeah, I like, I like the area that it's in, and um, I liked I like the introduction cutscene too. Yeah. Um, they were going for a dark, grittier thing, you know, haha, a game from 2011 doing that shit, but uh, I liked it. I liked the aesthetic they were going for, especially with what Reach was, if, yeah. if you're, you know, versed with the uh, with the um, lore and everything like that. It makes sense to go that direction, and I, I, ju I just like the, it, it had like a really strong military vibe to it. I mean, reach is like the military strongholds of yeah so you know thematically makes sense so um and we got another squad again yeah i think they liked that dynamic idea a lot yeah for character storytelling and kind of some of the things you can do um so this character this mission's a bit of a slow boil at the start because it's like setting you up for how the game plays. yeah it's, it's the tutorial mission but trying to think of the tutorial missions it's like the most open spaced one i think and it gets into being a real level like pretty quick yeah yeah it doesn't really fuck around for too long yeah there's a bit of a mystery about what's going on um with like the covenant and you're investigating these um these houses that like trying to figure out what's going on and I don't, I don't think the Covenant's a big reveal, but they, they do kind of get the, like, panic that would be involved in realizing that there's Covenant on the planet. Um, so then you have the first mission where the Covenant, sh Covenant show up, you get used to Reach's combat. Um, I forget the weapon balance in this game. Like, what weapons you have at this point in, on this level. I don't know if you have uh, the yet. Nah, nah, this is this is definitely an assault rifle yeah, start. Assault rifle, pistol. So you're getting used to it. Um Assault I think it's I think it's assault rifle, pistol, and then sprint. That's your loadout. Yeah, it's a return to return to kind of the classic covenant uh <clears throat> combat encounter. There are skirmishers now, which are like high mobility jackals, but they don't have shields. Yeah. I think they're a decent addition. Yeah. They're just a new new variant of jackal really they're not offensive they're fun to headshot especially with the dmr uh mission opens up i remember like a big river that you cross through 
um, and you're fi you're fighting your way through in kind of long range on foot encounters. You get trucks instead of a warthog, which is neat. Yeah. <laughs> and like yeah, you gotta... George uh, hops on the bed of the truck with his turret and uh, yeah. works it like a gunner seat, which is pretty neat. I like the trucks. I like their design. I like that there's wild animals in this level. Yeah. Um. And you can run over I them if you want. I think there's wild animals in almost every level that that's on on the planet anyway. Yeah, it's a very. Um, um, it helps sell the setting. I guess not in New Alexandria. Those are the only levels where you don't. Yeah, and that's just because it's an urban environment. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a solid introduction level. I feel like. Um, I like the ending. Well, the ending uh, no, you're, you're engagement. Rushing, you're rushing ahead there. You wow. Have the, you have the truck part where you drive around and uh, complete some objectives in the area, and then you get picked up in a Falcon and taken to that ending area. Yeah. Um, what do you think of, like... Because that's kind of just like cheating and using a helicopter, and I think that's the first time in these games that they do something like that, where two areas in a mission aren't connected in a way that the player can traverse. Uh... I don't know. It's all right, I guess. Yeah, like, that's kind of the problem is that, like, there's a lot of it's all right, I guess, for something that's following ODST. Yeah. <laughs> and just following that level of quality. Like, the human area is, yeah, it's all right. There's the end cutscene, world building, and fighting the zealots. And... Yeah. I like, I like that last that last engagement a lot where uh george fucking like closes the door and it's just yeah. like one of those moments where it's like oh no we're not trapped in here with them they're trapped in here with us yeah <laughs> it really kind of sells the spartans yeah like we're back to the the spartan like you're playing a powerful person and you can go toe to toe with some crazy enemies yeah so um ODST kind of nailed that niche of being weak, and then this is a return to uh... <clears throat> the power fantasy. I mean, sure, you're a discount Spartan, but yeah. you're a discount Spartan with armor abilities, so. I'm going to say this is a C tier mission. Yeah, yeah. I, I was on the fence about B or C, but I I I'd put it C. So ranked against the other introduction levels, then that it's, means it's this on the, is it's on the worst side, and I think that's yeah, pretty we, accurate. Which is funny because it's like its tutorialization isn't even that bad. It's just the fact that it's just a very mid level overall. It's a tutorial strapped to just a mid level. Yeah, and I think as someone in chat said, they kind of missed the swing on the covenant being a. a big deal yeah yeah isn't georgia too that's the weird thing is um <laughs> i mean he's he's is physically it... bigger and he's capable of accomplishing more but he's not really on the level that the twos are supposed to be did i mess up the scaling or is it but he was it he was a two yeah his training was as a two but yeah he's stuck with a bunch of threes pony sword base um i guess this is oh wait no 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 you're storming that see this level does does it twice yeah uh, this is I... one of the repeat the we go back into a destroyed version areas yeah so you helicopter well, in, land in the court land in the firefight area yeah that's pretty well designed and then um great great fucking soundtrack great song to start this level with like and, I, and another I, banger world yeah area like world space really cool stuff going on with the skybox and everything mm -hmm. this game really sells the uh large scale of um of the conflict that's going on well you just the, the genuinely the too. yeah like reach is like a place you... that i would want to explore in like starfield yeah like if, they, if they made starfield about exploring planets that looked like this that'd be cool yeah 
Oh yeah, the orbital strike thing. It's such a gimmick. But at the yeah. same time, they tried. You know? <laughs> they gave it a good sequence where you're fighting wraiths. Uh, with yeah. The... Uh, so if I remember the sequence, you clear the courtyard, go out into mm -hmm. the open area. Um, you go to the town, you go to the military base, and then you come back to the, to the big sword base. And you, yeah, you just, you I think you, you destroy some, uh, some AA turrets and stuff during this. Yeah. So like it turns into a vehicle section. And so you get a bit of a taste of what's going on with the vehicles in this game here. Uh, DMR heavy at this point. You yeah. That the DMR is going to. DMR is king. Yeah. DMR is going to be a big deal for the next, uh, forever. Um, <laughs> Then you come back. I like. I actually do like the interior section of uh, Sword Base. Oh, oh yeah. That's that's a really fun. Well, it's the it's a multi the, the one good multiplayer level. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's not just the part that you explore in multiplayer. There's other parts of Sword Base yeah. that um are really security, cool. Security checkpoint and everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, and it's once again a nice a really cool visual location where they're really selling the military aspect of this area every reach level has a special gold ranger elite except this one it's a randomized albino and sword base oh my god you just unlocked a memory for me <laughs> the there's a, like a limited time enemy that you have to rush to get to that um i forget what it what the deal with them was i think you oh you had to kill all of them to unlock something in the mission where you meet Halsey. It was like an East. It's like an Easter egg room that was full of references to the Halo community. Uh... But, you, but you had to hunt down and track these limited time enemies that were hidden in the levels. Remember when Easter eggs were a thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually good fun easter eggs yeah so uh sword base uh we, we said last uh last one was c right yeah this is better than uh winter contingency i i actually kind of really like this level i might i might go for an a yeah I I'm, I'm gonna go for a b so that yeah that sounds fair between a and a b uh which is the same as like data hive and Tayari Plaza and uh, the Storm Cairo Station. It's, yeah, it's a it's a really good vehicle level for Halo Reach. Uh, vehicle, I would say it's a good vehicle sandbox level, mm -hmm. where you're given more freedom and less sequencing. And and the, and then the corridor shooter parts are actually really good too. So. Yeah, so you got that diversity that you like, but it's also just kind of mid. And it's also a good, it's also a really good co-op level. All right, now we're talking. <laughs> okay, so truth and reconciliation, but the part that people <laughs> like. But good. Really good, in fact. Yeah, just interesting environments for you to use the sniper in. And when you run out of sniper ammo... Um, turns into like solid combat encounters. Um, They're try they really try to the assassinations. They finally characterized June as something other than just being really obnoxious. Yeah, they gave him they gave him a role that was like, oh yeah, this is why they have him around. Yeah. Um, very good aesthetic. Yes. And I like the part where you find the the insurrectionists. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that whole that whole yeah. sequence. And they like give you the weapons from their cache because yeah, when the covenant is that... around, the UNSC is justified. <laughs> and you have that uh that whole defense sequence at their like little outpost there, which is also a really fun sequence. Yeah, I think there's another forklift on this level. They yeah, made, I think they so. Made forklifts drivable, which is fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, the big dinosaur aliens. Are, pretty, uh -huh. are cool uh nice uh continued world building um this is yeah this is up there i'd say this is an a a yeah 
it's just a really good level if like if i was to give any if somebody asked me like give me a good level from halo reach to play this would probably be my first pick and it has a cool cut scene at the end where you find the whole uh hidden uh yeah. army and everything like you're actually doing reconnaissance the the stealth element wasn't just for gimmicks it was like yeah, no we're it, actually doing doing this, recon here this helps track what's going on with halo reach's story <clears throat> better than what yeah this was in winter contingency we're doing uh which is important because we're leading into uh tip of the spear here notice i know the name of this level <laughs> Uh, we already listened to the Tip of the Spear soundtrack, but I'm turning it back on. Yeah, this level. How does it end? Oh, this is the one where um. You're assaulting that the Covenant uh, little cruiser in the bubble shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the big mission sequence. Um, kind of dumb with the like. We're gonna drive a bunch of warthogs side by side across the <laughs> desert. But yeah still they're cool. trying yeah it's it's a cool s sequence a cool cutscene. And... i do not like the standoff that you do in the beginning when you get shot down yeah and all you have is the grenade launcher yeah the grenade launcher Ugh. uh the battle there's a constant battle going on in the background that's pretty cool uh-huh they really sell that like this is a oh wide scale conflict compared to like the more surgical strike aspect of previous Halo games. Yeah. But no, yeah, they so this is a vehicle mission where you drive the warthog and you have cat. <laughs> famous know, cat. famous for uh, all the memes that have been made about this level because of her. Um I okay, so the actual player space, I think, looks kind of bland and colorless. Yeah. I don't think they did a good job with the desert areas of Reach and making them feel like, um, like this is an area where the world is it even, kind of starts. Is it even too. desert or is it supposed to be tundra? Um, I don't know. Like, I guess, like, I mean, winter contingency. It's in winter, but yeah, it still doesn't look like a good area. Yeah. It's also a massive tonal shift in the story, definitely at the end. Um, right now, it feels like, oh yeah, we can stand up to them and there's a chance. I think they're trying yeah. to build up the, uh, there's a lot of hope aspects here. Because, like, I mean, you're making a lot of progress here on, like, this upper ridge area that's overlooking the battle. Um, there's not really a feeling that you're contributing to what's going on out there, though. This mission is much better in co-op. Yeah, it's a strong co-op mission. Yes, yes. But You get that, you get that rail shooter when yeah. you get into the uh the uh, inoffensive fucking, uh... but a little too long but inoffensive mm -hmm. uh, then you get into the bubble area which is one of the invasion maps uh and you play it exactly like you would invasion so <laughs> that's kind of neat um was invasion in the beta i don't think so I don't know if I've even played Invasion. The color... Uh, oh, Invasion's awesome. Um, invasion's a solid mode. And the map, this is like uh, the map for it, is that Bubble Shield area. Um, the Bubble Shield area is all right. You know, you're fighting through the rocks. You're given a lot of options on foot for how to progress through it. And then you get into the actual spire. It's like close quarters, covenant ship aesthetic, which you're going to be seeing more of later or next mission, yeah. actually. But um, I think this is a pretty solid mission. I think this is as close as Halo Reach gets to having a banger level, like mid A to S tier. Uh, I don't know. I might I might actually say it's B. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess that makes it, what, what, an A tier? Between the two of us? Yeah. I do agree. I understand why you feel that way, because there is a lot of 
um, forgettableness to this mission. It's almost like the in between of Savo Highway and Ty um, the fuck. Yes. The menagerie. Yeah. It's a level. See, the problem is, it's like it's a level that really encourages just getting one or two weapons and just carrying it the whole way. You get one or two weapons, find the vehicle that you like, and you just stick with it. Like, there's, there's ways that you can destroy the AA turrets without even getting out of your vehicle if you find the right angle. And that's what I would do. I would just not, I just try not to is, get out of my vehicle too much. Is that a much. bad thing, though? I mean, we've given levels credit in the past for letting you do stuff like this. Now, now, here's a mission. Oh. Here's a oh. fucking mission, all right. Oh. How does... How does the level go from being so good to so fucking bad? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, is this, this is where they have the cutscene in the cave, right? Yes. Right before yeah, this yeah, mission. It's... Yeah. So, a bit of drama going on, realizing that, uh, the Covenant invasion's a big deal. I liked, I like the moment of finding out. Once again, it goes back to, like, building up your character, and it's just like, oh... You used to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, this. There's, there's a certain mystique to your character that just gets elevated during that cutscene. Yeah, it's, you're skilled at something that um, the other Spartans can't do. Which is yeah. Cool. Yeah, so the on-ground part in the base is cool. Yeah. Every, it, getting to the base, getting through the base, good this, stuff. This is, this is their silent cartographer storming the, uh, storming the beach moment, and it's... But this level is not silent cartographer. Yeah. The, well, the first, the first part, it's fine. It's really good. And the fight inside the, uh, inside the base is also really fun. Um, and I just, where do you even begin <laughs> once you get into space? <laughs> I mean, it, it almost feels pointless to labor on it because people shat on it even at the time. Yeah, it's definitely a pretty mid-sequence. And I think the problem is that it's holding a better part of the level hostage in the process. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because there's also the... You have to remember, this is... The level. Right. You have the sword base, you have the space mission, and you have the covenant and ship. The covenant ship. Yeah, which is a, which is another really good level. And so it's section. Like you got a banger at the front and a banger at the back, and you got the space section that's just holding. And this the and covenant the space ship section, the space section is just so bad though that it just dominates <laughs> dominates my memory of this fucking level. And what's sad is it's aesthetically good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on with it. It's just not there. Cutscenes, yeah, the cutscenes are great. I, I really, I really love that launch sequence cutscene. Is the that, space that's... battle worse than your average space battle in Star Wars Battlefront 2? I would say it takes too long. Is the whole deal? <clears throat> yeah. You just don't have, and you only have two modes of firing. You, you just have such, such little. It, it, the mechanic was just way too underbaked. Is the problem? Yeah. If it was like a five minute sequence, fine. But it's like 15, 20 minutes. And if you're playing on a higher level, to, and that's a problem too, is like if you're playing on normal or even heroic, it's all right. But kick it up to legendary and it's fucking miserable. That, that's what's a shame too. Um, it's like, oh, you can just turn the diff. Oh, wait. That means you have to <laughs> play, you can't play the ship on legendary. So. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, and the ship the ship part is really that that's it's uh it's the second half of truth and reconciliation done better. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it really is just truth and reconciliation, but all the parts that were good, like they were really nailing the covenant ships. Yeah. They they cut out all the bullshit getting lost in the boring ass semi corridors. Yeah, far more functional. Um fun part is of course the firefight map. It's weird that the firefight map parts of the of the campaign levels are really good. <laughs> I feel like this level, more than any of the other levels that we've that you've played so far, also highlights the strengths of the uh, of the elites, especially like the high ranking elites. 
because you go up against quite a few of them in here and uh, especially on the bridge where you have to fight like three of them it really made me appreciate just how good the elites were in this game yeah and i think this is one of the engineer levels where the engineers can show up so they've yeah them into being in the roster yeah yeah after odst which is good stuff so the question is though where does this rank this is another <laughs> one of those edge case <laughs> missions where it's like it's like Man. the ground sections you take that at face value it's like an a tier yeah you add in the space stuff and it gets bumped down to like c but then the, but then the ship part like the, if it was just the ship part and the the beach and like just you cut out the space stuff mm -hmm. i would almost say it's s here but yeah because it really oh. is it's so close to being a banger oh but just that that space part just in the saber i just i'm putting it, it like mid cb yeah yeah i would say b R.I.P. It, it's that bad. <laughs> it hurts it that bad. And the, the ending cutscene with George's sacrifice. I think it's so that, good. That's where it starts with the with the everybody are, dies. Yeah. Yeah. People are yeah. dying meme. Such a such a good send off. Um, oh, come back to orbit uh, or you come you fall back into orbit. I don't think that's as good as the drop sequence stuff. I know what they're going for there. You gotta yeah. limp back to society, and that's when you get to New Alexandria. So, solo I mission love, for Noble Six. I love, I love the, I, I love that whole sequence, especially when you get to New Alexandria and the when the music kicks in and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta for for whatever reason that cutscene and that song just lives rent free in my head. I just think about that a lot. Let's see where you. So. At. Yeah, this is this no, is a good this, this is a good one. There it is. It's almost like this one's apologizing for the uh, for, for the, the space sequence. Yeah, yeah, for the space sequence. It's like, all right, here's that level, but without the space sequence, and we're throwing so, in vehicles. The city looks to really cool. apologize. It's, they're the, Bungie not only made. They could have gone easy mode and just made New Mombasa on Reach. Yes. But like they made yeah. a distinct city. Yeah. You guys didn't mention the Covenant fleet showing up. Oh yeah. That's such a banger moment. And it's a shame that it's <laughs> in such yeah. a lower tier level. Uh Covenant ship detected. Covenant ship detected. Um yeah. the whole fleet and then, showing and up then and you know that you're George George blows up the whole fucking carrier mm -hmm. and you see that carrier in the next cutscene crashing down. That's really, really good. Yeah, I mean, good, great, great good stuff. setup. Yeah, good setup can for we... this level. Yeah, when the when the war is really going on at this point. Yeah, um, and it's, there's a lot it's... of stuff to like about this level. It's really solid taking advantage of Reach's combat with the Covenant. I think Brutes well, show so... up at this point. So going just going back to the going back to the setup and everything. This whole level is not about like defeating the covenant or pushing them out. It's just to help people escape. Like that's it. We're evacuating now. Yeah, the stakes are evacuating civilians, which like that's that's pretty cool. Good uh good change there. This sequence so, that's in the picture is uh the jump pack part. Yeah, the bullfrogs. Mhm. Mm with the uh, ODSTs. <laughs> yeah. Another... Oh my god, just another sequence that lives rent free in my head. Where you go in there and it's just like, Oh no, the commander's on the other side. And you gotta like use the fucking jetpack to jump up to the ledge and mm -hmm. shit. It's... I don't know. There's, so, there's, so, there's something about this level and... um, I think it's the next one that's coming up where... There's just certain... Certain sequences, certain moments that just really stick in my head for some reason. Yeah, this mission's uh, got a lot of a lot of those. Yeah, and it's just another just really... another uh, one where the firefight map on this level is a <clears> bigger <throat> area in the, in yep. the campaign mission. Yep. Um, the way it just ties all these areas together too. Yeah, because it, it's it's very it very it is a very um 
from like a level design standpoint, it's very disjointed, but the way it flows between each section, you don't even notice like what's going on. It's just one, con it just feels like one continuous thing until it's like the end. You're like, what the fuck? How do we, how do we get to this defense sequence? Um, I mean, like I said, if the other one wasn't, didn't get fucked by, uh, by the space sequence, that would have been a, an S tier. So for me, this level is easy S tier. Really? Oh yeah. I I really love this level. You gotta put it under tip of the spear so people don't ask. What's on top is mostly informed by what I think people are gonna ask the most questions about. <laughs> Hey, so I heard you like flying. <laughs> uh, so this, this mission's actually kind of interesting because it's mixing the flying sequences together with the combat arenas. Yeah, and really good combat arenas at that. Some even some multiplayer's player maps like Ivory yeah. Tower. Yeah, so you got a mix of multiplayer maps. One of the areas is a reused firefight map from ODST, like the layout. <laughs> Oh, you get that fight in the club with the with the hunters. Mm -hmm. That's that's a cool sequence. Kind of frustrating if you don't have the right weapons for the job because they don't really give you much in the arena. But it's it's still and, a fun um, sequence. The uh, the hospital with all the spec obsoletes. Yeah, yeah. I just love the the progression of this level where like you'll see buildings collapsing and stuff from the glassing and it's just the, the horizon getting more and more bleak yes that's what uh that's what ivory tower is it's a halo 2 map yeah put into reach which did not play well at all in the reach sandbox yeah because of armor Armor abilities and also most of your weapons are long distance. I mean, yeah, I know Halo 2 BR, haha, but um, Ivory Tower was a very good map for uh, SMGs, dual SMGs. I don't think this is a bad co-op mission. Um, no, I don't think so. And I like the the aesthetics. It's a mix of Skyline, yeah, from ODST, and um, your a flying level. Uh, and the flying the flying isn't bad um the vehicle they give you is probably the best flying vehicle that they've had in a halo game my opinion did you ever do the pelican no there's an easter egg with a flyable pelican in, in uh in reach yeah is that a, is that was that an easter egg or was that a no it's I definitely think was... an easter egg because you have to go to a specific building that's like not enterable and manage to land on like the side of it like halfway down and there's yeah. like this ramp with a hidden button that you press oh okay okay and it's it's kind of jank to fly like i yeah yes because i th i always thought that was um that was like a bug or an exploit or something i didn't realize that was an actual easter egg yeah um the community had to be guided to find it yeah um but yeah this level uh I, I really like the aesthetic. Feel feels almost ODST like. Yeah, um a really solid kind of aesthetic to be sure. <clears throat> I just love New Cat. Alexandria. Like for it only yeah. being in two missions, New Alexandria they, yeah. <laughs> they put a lot of juice into this uh city. <laughs> only for it to be destroyed. Not not only does it get destroyed, they fucking glass that bitch like completely. That's a that's a cool sequence too. When you're going down into the bunker, they blowing up the the Oni headquarters and shit. Mm -hmm. Go down to the bunker. Cat gets domed. Yeah, cat famous cat death scene. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, they they just like emerge out of the bunker with some of the civilians and stuff, and it's just fuck. The city's just gone. And it's like all right that. Once again, them like Bungie. Re if one, if they did one thing really well with this game, it was in the campaign was selling that this place is getting fucking annihilated by the Covenant. 
just like no holds barred. It's large scale slaughter. Like, you know, we, we put up a good fight in the beginning, but goddamn, mm -hmm. there's no hope. Yeah, it, it's such an unfair conflict, which again helps sell yeah. the victory in Halo 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Once, it, once again, um, setting, yeah, recontextualizing. Setting, setting something up that doesn't require you tearing down <laughs> previous events. So, what would you rate this mission? Uh, I would say it's A. Good A mission. Yeah. I'm gonna give that A B treatment of Oni Sword Base. So Reach is kind of fallen on the upper end too. Which yeah, it's which is surprising and that's always something that I've said about Halo Reach is I hate the multiplayer, but uh it's probably my second or third most played campaign. I think I think what it is is you see every Halo game as representation in the banger category except uh, Reach. Yes. And um, we're not going to get there. <laughs> not with this level. Oh, this or is... whatever the fuck this mission's called. Your, your two betrayals. 2.0. Yeah, what what is this level? No clue uh, what it's called. This is the package. Wait, really? Already on the package? Yep, because you go to the, you're going to Doctor Halsey to get Cortana. Right, Pillar of Autumn is its own thing. All right, right, yeah. okay. I was confused. Oh God, yeah. Oh, oh. So classic. Um, so there's there's some stuff I like with the world building here. Okay, so. Um, you see, you see that the base is destroyed. A lot of the snow is melted, so <laughs> the water is flooded. So like, yeah. the lower parts of the map, like where the village is, is now like knee deep water. Yeah, which is really cool. You can see a very visible increase in the water line. Um, everything's burning, obviously. Problem. Uh, mission kind of shit. <laughs> like honestly, it's just O and I sword based, but. Um, with the first part cut off and more at the end. Yeah, and the stuff at the end is not very good. But there's a Forerunner building. Which it, it looks I don't, cool, I, I, I guess. I, I think that's an unnecessary addition. Yeah, well, I think what it was is like it's meant to contextualize why Cortana knew... Like, like, she said it was a blind jump, but it's implied here that it actually wasn't a blind jump, that she was actually programmed to bring the Pil Pillar of Autumn to the ring. Mm -hmm. um, the firefight map in this level is bad. Yes, I would agree. It's one of the rough... It's definitely one of the uh, rougher firefight maps. That ex that explains why I hate that sequence so much. Yeah. <laughs> is Oh, boy. Yeah, so it's like... the ground, I sure the love getting great... Yeah, the we like there's a weird number of phantoms that show up for where that yeah. area is. Yeah, yeah. How the fuck are they even getting down there? Yeah, they nuke it at the end too. Which is the best part about the next sequ next fucking cutscene is them blowing up that entire fucking level. Thank you. <laughs> they knew what players <laughs> wanted. Yeah, it's just it's like a more mid version of um of Oni Sword Base. Yeah. And it doesn't... An only sword base was already not. It was fine. I almost feel like anything that interfaces with Halsey and Cortana in this game is like worse <laughs> as a just... consequence. <laughs> like tying into Halo CE was kind of a bad idea. For it was un it was unnecessary. Yeah, because at this point it's like kind of given up on the war. So it's only yeah. sword base is an A B. I feel like this is a B C. Oh. I I would put this in C. Yeah. It's C almost pushing D. I think that's fair. Like some the, the on surface vehicle stuff is all right, but that's about it. The Halo Reach changed where Cortana got the coordinates for Alpha Halo. I mean, that's not even the problem. 
All right, last level that I have an icon for. I know people want Lone Wolf to be its own thing, but I'm it's rolled into Pillar of Autumn. <laughs> like it's not its own level. Yep. So the second, everyone's the second version everyone's dead except so so all we have left June June went off with Halsey. Um. So all we got left is Carter uh, and Emil. Yeah, and Emil. And Carter, Carter goes out like a champ. All wounded and ramming a scarab with a pelican. Good, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Solid moment. Um, <clears throat> uh, you jump out of the pelican. That's a nice dramatic moment. As if you actually fight the, fight the scarab. Yeah, so this is an interesting level to be sure um it's a bit brown it's got that brown problem that tip of the spear has yeah so it's not too visually interesting like some of the better halo reach missions but it has a really cool skybox yeah it's definitely like the end of the game apocalyptic yeah. vibe that yeah, uh, yeah that they're going for contextually it makes a lot of sense you're delivering cortana to the pillar of autumn so that halo one can happen I'm also I'm also a sucker for infrastructure, so seeing like how a ship like the Pillar of Autumn launches from this place is also really fucking cool for me. Yeah, great seeing great all the sequence at the end. So let let's yeah. let's get there first. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of bigger open area fighting, uh, bitter wraith stuff turns into a vehicle sequence uh, mm -hmm. where there's scarabs. Take points off for the scarabs not being killable. Yeah, that. <laughs> that would be nice. Chief is in the game if when you look right in the cutscene, everyone knows that. Uh, the fact that Lone Wolf isn't a firefight map is genuinely confusing. I wonder if 343's added it as one. That's a good question. That might be worth looking at, because they added flood firefight, so. Yeah. Um You got the Carter sequence. I remember there being in like a mildly annoying drone part. Um, yeah, where you're in the you're in that canyon. Mm -hmm. Then there's the warehouse the and stuff. And you're fighting through the leads, and then finally you get to the firefight part. It's like that final defense sequence. Yeah. Where you're. Holding... I like I like the warehouse sequence too, and fighting through the um through the shipyard. Uh, like you have that whole like big open area in the shipyard, and there's vehicles everywhere, but you have plenty of power weapons and stuff. I thought that was a really fun uh, segment. Yeah, the Mac gun sequence is pretty shit on Legendary. Ugh. Ugh. You gotta do it like exactly perfectly. Yeah. No room for no room for error on that. But yeah, the last the last standoff there in that yeah. arena. Uh Emil really dying, good. very tragic. Mm-hmm. Got killed by zealots. Went out like a boss though. Man. I think it's dumb that I'm Chief just, is just taking I'm just a nap thinking. during all this. I don't think Chief, like, that's an Easter egg. Like, yeah. Fucking Master Chief doesn't wake up in the hangar of Halo 1. So, like, <laughs> they didn't move him. That's just a fucking thing that you can see for fun. Because normally you yeah. can't move the camera. I'm reactor just thinking how... maps are asked because no one ever in multiplayer is competent to guard a reactor, so it's a 100% fail. True. Yeah, I don't know what, what they were trying to do with that. So, yeah, then you got the Mac gun sequence. You shoot the ship. It goes down, but you're stranded. You think that you're going to get to go with the Pillar of Autumn, but you don't. Man, ima just imagine, though. Imagine if the the LT got on board the Pillar of Autumn and yeah, <laughs> the Chief had another Spartan with him. It's really kind of, you know, man... Yeah, Noble Six being present for the Halo trilogy would be a <laughs> completely different story. <laughs> Go for the Banshees first. Yeah, there, there's a way that you have to do it. Yeah. Are we are we tier listing character deaths? <laughs> oh wow! All right, and then you have uh, Lone Wolf, which is the final sequence of Reach. Yep. Uh, famous current objective survive uh unwinnable kind of infinite defense sequence where you fight covenant until you die 
or it's all right. I mean, in a in a world with firefight, I don't really know why I would spend more than five minutes doing that. But you know, just the challenge of it and to see what happens, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's um, it's a very cool kind of sequence, like uh, yeah, Ludo narratively. It's thematically fitting. The problem, is, <laughs> so the problem is, is like, if I put myself in the head of my uh, my uh, Spartan. I would want to just slaughter every fucking, every single one of them. But when I think retroactively after playing Halo 3 and it's like, yeah, but those are our allies. So it's like, that's kind of the problem with Halo Reach in general is it's trying to make the Covenant the big, the big baddie again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, but like the Arbiter and everything. Well, that's, it's, the, that's the thought process that made it so there's no elites in ODST. And I don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah. I mean, it's war, you know? You're getting killed. It's okay to kill a bunch of elites and go down swinging. At a certain but... point of visor crack, you get infinite ammo. It's pretty funny. Really? I did not know that. <laughs> it's bold and challenging and unceremonious bungee tier for me. I don't know if I can say Pillar of Autumn is a banger. Mm. Definitely, like, mid, like, high A to bungee tier. Yeah, yeah, I would say A. Because, I mean, you have to remember, the bangers that it would be competing with, like, <laughs> that's a good way to kind of tie this all together, is yeah. to talk about the broader list in general. The stuff that it's tying together, fucking Silent Cartographer, Delta Halo, The Ark, The Covenant, Mombasa Streets, ONI Headquarters, uh, Coastal Highway, I mean... That is a insane roster of levels <laughs> to say that Pillar of Autumn is competing with. Yeah. I it's just, a really. I think Reach's it's a problem. Strong, Reach's problem it, in the long term has been that it doesn't have a definitive banger level. Yeah. It's got stuff that gets close, but. And it's not even like anything really hamstrings the last level, like Pillar of Autumn. Nothing hamstrings it. It's just just as a whole it's just not at that s tier it, it's it's a very strong emotional level um especially after i got so attached to my spartan watching him die in the end it's just like oh but great level absolutely but yeah not s not not bungee tier which i think is valid because like we were saying halo reach they kind of phoned it in so to say that you know if they're gonna phone it they're phoning the game in but there's still like a bungee tier level and uh, that doesn't really doesn't really sound right but i i still really like halo reach's campaign i think especially playing a co-op it's a very very good co-op uh, experience. Space some of this out so folks can see kind of what's going on. Yes, now we gotta now we gotta go through. Now we gotta talk about it in its entirety. Oh man, wow! F it took us five hours to go through that. Or f I think four and a half. I think I. Yeah, there because there's a lot to talk about. This is just the this is just the bunch of games. Imagine if, <laughs> imagine if we threw in the three for three games. See, yeah. The problem with the three for three games is like we would need tier tiers below three for three. <laughs> yeah, it would just be a slaughter. <laughs> really, really unfair for them now rank halo wars levels i never even played halo wars yeah that's kind of the problem halo wars is hard to rank well that's kind of the thing is i think post three they got really good about not putting out dog shit levels
Yeah, hang on. I will. Or the thoughts of the DMR replacing the BR. I can take care. I can handle that one. Um, not a big fan. I feel like the BR was a objectively better weapon because it was a, it was a burst fire weapon, and learning to control its spread and use its spread gave it a higher uh, skill ceiling. They added like a uh, aim bloom and all that stuff to the DMR to try and compensate, but I just don't think it worked as well as just getting good with the BR, especially Halo 2's BR. I, I feel I feel like. They they took a, a a weapon that actually had a real learning curve to it and just gave everybody the tool to just just when in doubt use the DMR, DMR and uh, Magnum as a backup. Yeah, that was starting to lean into the um, more Call of Duty aspects of it. Yeah, it's like the core design of the game should be high skill headshot oriented kind of gameplay, and that delegitimizes most of the weapons that are either weaker at headshots or don't headshot. Halo 3 BR and BTP sucks. Halo 3's BR was... they See, that's the thing. It's like they tried nerfing it in Halo 3. Oh, th That's why the MLG playlist actually buffs it again, because it's, it's, it's a rough weapon in Halo 3. Alright, that's a good question. How would we rank the games as a whole? Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll go first. Halo 1, um, A, Halo 2, C, Halo 3, B, ODST, Bungie, Reach, A. No, Reach, B. Wait, did you just say Halo 2 is C? Yeah. Oh my. It's got way too, I've, we've had this discussion before about how I think Halo 2 is like the weakest Bungie game. And it's just because it misses way too many swings for me. Oh, man. Wait, are we just talking about the campaigns? Yeah. Okay. Holy shit. All right, we're, we're about to have we're about to have a moment there. <laughs> if we're just talking the campaign. All right, we're, we're in. All right, so for campaigns for me, it would be. Halo one is. Damn, I think Halo one might actually be Bungie. Oh, yeah, Halo one's holy Halo one's really fucking good. Halo 2, C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, it's it's the Arbiter levels. The Arbiter levels are so fucking bad. Ah, oh, it, it hurts, because Delta Halo is, like, one of my favorite levels of all time. Pro probably my favorite level of all time, but damn. Damn, do those fucking Arbiter levels suck. Uh, Odia, um, alright, so then we got Halo 3 is... Mm. I want to give it a bungee tier, but I, I think I'm going to have to go with A. It's, dude, it's it's so fucking hard. It's so hard for me to, to distinct, like, to separate the, the single player from the multiplayer aspects yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's a lot easier for me. Um, So I would give it an A just because some of the levels in co-op in Halo 3 are not the greatest. Um, but, oh, I mean, Ark, Ark Cov... Um, Ark, yeah, Ark Covenant, such a banger lineup that it, mm -hmm. it almost gets its a bungee tier on those two alone. Um, ODST is bungee. Just fuck, no fucking question about it. That's a bungee tier. It's got three S tier levels. <laughs> it's, it's fucking OP, dude. As a campaign... And then reach uh, B. Give it a B. Yeah. All right. I'm. I can. Uh, I can turn off the games one at a time. We've got to review the data. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, so, okay. But with with multiplayer though, we get we gotta have this discussion with multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Please tell me Halo Two goes oh, yeah. higher than a C. Halo Two would be an A multi just multiplayer. All right, all right. I'm partial to Halo 1 multiplayer being Bungie tier, and then Halo 3 is probably an A. ODST only use Firefight, so I mean, kind of graded on a technicality. Firefight's <laughs> fun, but it, it doesn't really carry as a multiplayer experience. Yeah. 
and then um and, and then you also like and the other problem too with um with firefight and this is why i never played it was because you always needed friends to play it with yeah it was it, never it was never match made so matchmaking in firefight would have helped odst a lot yeah i mean like the problem is is then you're dealing with match you know randos and stuff but it still would have at least been able to give me the exposure like i genuinely just have never really played firefight all that much aside from when we were playing it it was one of the not not the first time but one of the first times like probably like third time i've ever played firefight um yeah if we're if we're talking multiplayer halo 2 bungie tier halo 2 just wins out for me in general i just the map designs of the multiplayer levels and the sandbox mm -hmm. just so so tight so fucking tight and it just it does so much so well um but then halo one um i didn't not a big fan of play, halo i didn't play infinite see what happens when you really <clears> so <throat> a, a game as bad as four is that you burn your audience out of playing whatever <laughs> decent stuff you decent things you make in the future i don't know if it's decent i hear yeah. it's better than four which would make it decent yeah um three four three is f tier for a reason <laughs> halo one uh i'm not a big fan of its multiplayer especially online mcc made it online and it just plays like shit half the time um I can definitely see its appeal for being like a couch co-op game. It's one of those games where it's just you had to be there. Right yeah. time, right right place, right people. If you didn't have that experience, then you just missed out. Uh, I unfortunately missed out. So Halo 1 would go down into A tier for me uh, when we're throwing in multiplayer. Halo 3, Bungie tier, mostly because of Forge, honestly. I was not a big fan of its uh, map designs, uh, its built-in maps at all. And its sandbox was a downgrade from Halo 2's sandbox, but Forge, File Share, holy shit, did those things really just made Halo 3 such a such a phenomenon. There's a reason they're still trying Halo. Yeah. yeah Halo 3 is the reason Halo there's it, Halo 3 is the reason 343 was able to get by for so long, just completely annihilating that franchise. Like 343 ca Halo 3 carried that. And then Halo Reach, it's C. It's like, sorry. <laughs> it's just that multiplayer was rough. Oh, ODST. I forgot about ODST. Um, if we throw multiplayer into it, it goes down to an A. Because like I said, um, no matchmaking with Firefight. So that whole thing for me, complete waste. Yeah. Just completely lost. So... All right, Halo 4 rankings. Let's go. Uh, Dawn, uh, you're on the forward end to Dawn. Uh, fucking <laughs> D tier. Um, Requiem. What the fuck is this mission? <laughs> Dude, I don't even remember any of these levels. I remember the first two levels. Well, like, and the, icon the icons don't help either. You're, like, wandering <laughs> on the surface, and there's crashed ships. And there's valleys. I remember. Definitely D tier. Okay, next. Forerunner. <laughs> is this the mission? No, oh, this is the Promethean mission. Okay. Uh, but uh, 343 tier. Uh, <laughs> just fucking god awful. <laughs> Hor horrifying mission. Infinity. It's the one in the jungle. Uh, 343 tier. Uh, Reclaimer. <laughs> that's the one with the giant elephant. Uh, D tier. Jet down. That's the Pelican mission. That's the one where Cortana screams really loudly. Fucking 343 tier. Composer. <laughs> that's the one on the space station. Um, uh, D tier. Midnight. That's the one where you fly the ship and you... Uh, I think you wrestle the um, Didact and Cortana dies. That's below 343 tier. <laughs> yeah, that... Oh, oh man, I'm just remembering that <laughs> level. <laughs> oh, 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 that was the one where you were like jumping through a bunch of like teleportation gates, too, right? Yeah, and Cortana's like just going more and more rampant because she's just getting fucked up from the tele. Oh my god, what a what? Oh, 
What a game. Whoa. <laughs> that Me level. Memory unlocked. That, <laughs> that level. is It's a miracle they made Halo 5 after just after anyone played that fucking level. Wow. I remember the memes when that when that game came out. Just so many people shitting on that ending cutscene. And, and she will QTEs. arrest that man. <laughs> and the QTEs and ever oh god damn. Rank Halo 4 Spartan Ops. Um <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon, trust me, I'm aware. <laughs> There's a reason this stream came about. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, so let's look at the games individually. This is Halo 1. Pretty good spread. This is Halo 2. Ooh. <laughs> look at that bottom. It, see what I'm talking about with Halo 2? It's bottom heavy. Oh man, I'm I'm so delayed. There's like literally a 10 second delay on this shit. Yeah, Halo 2. People Oof. people question the Great Journey, but I think we laid out a lot of reasons why the Great Journey is not a good mission. Yeah, it's too railroady. I think is the ultimate issue with it. The fucking Banshee sequence sucks so hard. If they, if you know what, if they remove the Banshee sequence, here's how you improve. Here's how you improve uh, that level. Remove the Banshee sequence. You're you're stuck on the you're stuck on the um on the scarab, scarab but you have enemies jumping onto the scarab and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's like Banshees and shit flying all over the place, and you get to you get to hop onto one of the turrets of the of the scarab and shoot them down from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> there's stuff you can do with the Scarab to make it a better mission. Yeah. yeah. I think just giving us a Banshee and telling us to follow this slow-moving thing while we're killing infinite spawning Banshees and stuff. Just, oof. No thanks. Yeah. But when, when Halo 2 hit high, it fucking hit high. <clears throat> Gravemind, Delta Halo, Regret. Halo 3? Another. Th that's a Halo 1 tier spread. Look at this. <laughs> it's got it's got less mission. It's got more missions at the top and less missions at the bottom. Yeah, wow. That is so <laughs> like it's so uniform. Yeah. <clears throat> ODST. I mean, look at this game. Look at this game. <laughs> it's almost like it was just a product of a ton of refinement. And they just got to focus on making a really good campaign. Damn. Damn, that is such a tight spread. <laughs> just can't seem to miss <clears throat> and then reach. Reach is like another tight spread, but instead of being at the top, it's like kind of mid. Yeah. Yeah, Halo Reach is a sad one. It it, it had so many levels that could have been S tier, but either something hamstrung it really bad, or the whole level just just couldn't push push up. Oh yeah, just couldn't you, crack. You were never getting a version of the Great Journey where you could <clears throat> pilot the Scarab. No, that was no. not gonna happen. Halo real. Two, Halo Two is already held. To, it, it, just my suggestions to make that better probably wasn't even technically feasible. Halo Two was such a fucking. You want to talk about a janky game? People, people give like Bethesda shit and stuff. The only reason people don't know how badly busted Halo Two was. Is because it wasn't an open world game. Yeah, you, you didn't that play game, a single level long enough for things to just they're, unravel. They're still finding glitches in that game, like big glitches. Like you can be any fucking enemy or vehicle in the game. Glitches, <laughs> like. <laughs> 
like shaving minutes off of the speed run level of glitches that game is so busted oh i wasn't that that wasn't all the reach this isn't all the reach missions this is reaching two i was leaving two up for like comparison of like early a halo kind of like average and then like after three such tight groupings like look at the three and odst um years combined you're all high chat rank each game's story writing and character oh, i mean that's been thing. that's been kind of like part of this <clears throat> it was never never that good except the o odsts is pretty solid reach has its moments i would say in terms of writing those are the two good games the rest of them fucking <laughs> yeah the writing is like an accessory to yeah the levels to 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 the bungee levels 343 tried but oh boy I think that was three for three's problem honestly <laughs> yeah that they were trying to write it they're trying to they were trying to keep it very serious and it's like arrest that man <laughs> I will not let you leave this planet. <laughs> Man, and then you get and then you get to Halo for Spartan Ops. Yeah. Right? Gets even worse. It gets so bad that they couldn't even you know it's bad when Jen Taylor can't even fucking pull something together. Yes, yeah, it was glad to be working. Yeah. Dr. Halsey is just like, all right, what, what is this? What is this stupid shit we're doing now? <laughs> yeah, impressive, uh, impressive stream. I didn't, I thought this was going <clears> to <throat> be like a two hour, uh, quick one and done. No, hell no. Dude, I can fucking talk about Halo till I pass out time to go after uh three for three because <laughs> we were only talking about campaigns if we start talking multiplayer like really get into multiplayer fuck mm -hmm. <laughs> literally i would literally run the vod until the end this would be a 12 hour stream your list uh individual faction quests in elder scrolls games <laughs> Uh, I didn't play enough Morrowind yet. Can't, can't, uh... Yeah, can't tier those. Yeah. And unfortunately, it sounds like, uh, I'd be missing a lot, so. Yeah, I mean, you can't put 3 for 3's Halos in the, into the same category. I'm sorry. It would, it would three skew it fans. so hard. There's not, there's not enough. Yeah, there's not enough vertical space. <laughs> like, we would need... We would need like another six levels below three four three. Yeah, just to give it enough granularity, because I mean, really, yeah. it is just going to be D and three four three. <clears throat> We're going to have to add in an E tier and a G tier. Private sessions, Halo retrospective win. One day. To... when i can figure out how to do it like yeah. my temptation is to do all the bungee games but holy fuck i don't want to do that video yeah i mean look at it... how many level thumbnails are on screen right now yeah like if skyrim is literally killing me right now working on that it's cool because oh. because then i have to talk about the communities and each Halo game has its own dedicated community, and they're all worth discussing. And it's 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 so much. It's so fucking much. Oh. So. Maybe one day I'll do a Halo. If, if I did one, it would probably start with Halo 2. Because I have the most to say about that. OD ODST definitely needs... It needs a good analysis video, though. I hate to put that on you, Patrician, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's tragic that I, I can say with some a fair degree of certainty we'll never get something like a proper sequel to that.
or, or even a spiritual successor because it's such it flew so under the radar at the time and even now it's like the unsung hero very few people are aware of just how good it is yeah don't just listen to the soundtrack give it a shot sometime because <clears throat> you have to like see because it's like it's a game that you have to have played all the other games in the series even 343 is fucking halos i'll say that too it, it retroactively makes you appreciate odst more <laughs> and you just you have to really understand what those games are about what their sandboxes are like what their campaigns are like like everything you need to know all of that in order to fully appreciate how fucking good odst is act man's video is terrible what specifically is act man's video <laughs> I would even make the argument that you need to at least be aware of you you've at least played a little bit of destiny in order to appreciate odst <laughs> yeah it's just like a flowing continuity yeah <clears throat> did you play like call of duty growing up my first one was four yeah that was mine i don't know how much how much of it did you play i really didn't play that much Enough, I played enough to, enough to want to make videos about it, but <laughs> I played the shit out of four. Um, I played a decent amount of two. Uh, wasn't a big fan of two at all. I actually kind of hated it. Uh, I'm one of the v only people I've ever met who actually liked Modern Warfare three. And then Black Ops one is basically where I ended. I liked I liked Black Ops one. But Black Ops 1 is funny because it. it's like a game that people like, but a lot of people dropped off with. Yeah. <laughs> which is very like strange. A... Yeah. Well, so what was the follow-up to Black Ops? Um, Modern Warfare 3. Was it? Yeah. It, it, it went Call of Duty 4, uh, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 is the peak of the series. I've heard that. I I've seen I I consider that a valid a valid uh stance. Halo I didn't Infin really Halo Infinite is actually good because the drop wall is an ability. <clears throat> is that Act Man's position? <laughs> Cuz uh the fucking drop wall is not even the best ability in Halo Infinite. Wow, yeah, MW3 came out after Black Ops 1. Interesting. Yeah, so you probably dropped off with MW3, which would make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, because the thing is, is like, when you get into Call of Duty, you have to get into the whole Treyarch, Infinity Ward thing, and almost everybody ends up picking a side. I was more of a fan of Infinity Ward, surprisingly. I don't know, because I like to see... I liked the trashy aspect of Call of Duty. I knew COD 4 and Modern Warfare were trash, but I enjoyed it for that. Black yeah, Ops felt like it was trying it was trying too hard to make it good or trying to save it, honestly, save it from itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like no, it, it's like going to make going to McDonald's and then taking off the double quarter pound with cheese. Because they want they want to save you from from a, from the heart attack. It's like no, fuck that. Give me a triple quarter pounder with cheese. Like I, I know it's bad, but I want it. MW two was fun because it was chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> especially at its launch where it was fucking that is it, it was fucking hacked for like two weeks, and you would get into the lobbies that would never end. Oh man, that game was such an unbalanced just nightmare. <laughs> but it's level. It's love. It's map sucked. So yeah, moral of the stream, go play ODST and Flood Firefight. Yeah. Like no joke, go do it. <laughs> That's your homework. You will be tested on the wave order of Flood Firefight. Up to set five. <laughs> All right, cool. This was a fun stream. Yeah. We're going to wrap things up here.
Last chance for chat to ask which levels are which, otherwise you gotta watch the VOD. I'm gonna have to make timestamps for this video too. Or hopefully somebody's been taking notes. But I doubt I'm that lucky, so. Yeah, this ended up just being like a random idea I had that turned out pretty well. I, you got to you got to get the Halo nerd in here to to do it right. Yeah, that's that's kind of what helped was um, <laughs> having a mixture of experience with the games and perspectives on things. Where did you place questionable ethics from Half Life One? You know, <laughs> Honor Rail is like an underrated level. People hate on it the same way they hate on the library, and I just don't think that that's earned. How is Outer Worlds coming? It's going to be behind Fallout 76. I'm trying to think what other t sort of tier things we could actually do. It would have to be something Elder Scrolls. It's a dungeon. Not too enthused about doing more. I think this was a fun one-off thing to do. <laughs> um, E3 is canceled, so... Halo maps tier. Uh, if I do a Halo, especially a Halo 2 video, I'd fucking expect to see that. I'm actually doing a fall... <laughs> In my Fallout 76 video, I'm doing a tier list for the for the public events. <laughs> you know, tier lists, There is there is a simplicity to them. That yeah, really makes, and... yeah, it makes for good, concise arguments. Well, what you need with a tier list, the problem with tier lists is you can't have like five things. Like people are like, uh, can yeah. you tier list these games? And it's like, no, there's not enough yeah. items. What helped to this video, this stream was that there were like 55 levels. Yeah, yeah. Through. And there were highs and lows and debates. <laughs> disagreements and stuff we the funny thing is like we never really disagreed beyond like a two-tier like spread yeah. it was always like if i said an a and you said a b they, it made it very easy i think one time i said like a b and you said bungee or something like that it landed in yeah. a that was one level <laughs> i think that was skyline was it skyline or was it tip of the spear i think no it was tip of the spear yeah And it was a reach level. Go figure. <laughs> Are weekly streams going to be a thing? No, probably not. Nah. I'm trying to stream more often, but I do need to uh, work on videos. I'm not going to be one of those people that... You're not going to become Joseph streamer. Anderson? Yeah, I'm not going to be one of the myriad <laughs> of long-form people to uh, get stream build. But it's just so easy. No, we didn't have to do any writing. Quest lines. Yeah, we talked about doing that. Um... Private Sessions needs more experience with Morrowind. Yeah. After I'm done with Morrowind, maybe. I don't know. I could do well, it would that even Would that even be a very interesting discussion, though? I feel like... Yeah, I feel like the, the die has been cast on that one. We know the companions suck. We know the college one yeah. sucks. And, so, and the problem, too, is like... Um, Skyrim's... Like, in terms of quality and stuff, Skyrim and Oblivion's guilds are almost the same why do you hate act man so much he's one of those weirdos on twitter that i see always being wrong about stuff or like taking really weird positions or like making really stupid arguments like if you insult like if you insult like his perspective on quality is literally if it makes more money or not but then he'll act like that's not how he looks at games. So, why don't, but he, why it don't is how can... he looks at YouTubers. <clears throat> Somebody's asking, why don't we play Morrowind multiplayer as a stream? As a stream? I thought they, yeah. they said as a vid. Um, We've been playing Test 3 MP. There's reasons why I don't want to do that yet, but...
So we're gonna get out of here. And yeah, my voice is shot. <laughs> See you later, chat. Goodbye.